welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2023 Closers Olympics, baby. Listen, this is about to be epic. Listen, I hope, listen, one thing I've learned, all right, about watching the last event is that I thought I was a good closer. And I found out that it's a lot of things that I still need to learn, right? So you definitely want to make sure that you're taking notes. You definitely want to make sure that you're watching every single closer picking up on these gyms. It is about to go crazy. Officially. Listen, let's go ahead and get to the judges. I don't want to waste a whole bunch of time because I want to listen to some closers, close some deals immediately. And I know you do too. I know you do too. Shout out to my guy, RJ Bates in the building. I'm just saying. Listen, let's go ahead and get straight to our judges. Our judges, where y'all at? Where y'all at? I need y'all in the building right now. I need to, I need, listen, we got Keith in the building. We got Elijah in the building. We got Liam in the building. I'm just saying, listen, let's talk about it, man. What what are people getting ready to experience? And I want you guys to introduce yourselves for the people who may not know the, the light that they're getting ready to experience in the next couple of hours. Let's talk about it. So, so Liam, why don't you kick it off? For people who may not know who you are, so why don't you go ahead and kick it off what we're doing and who you are? Well, my name is Liam Benson. And for you guys who don't know me, I'm a certified closer. I've made a couple hundred thousand cold calls in my career, mainly on the retail side of real estate. Then I made the transition over. I'm here repping iSpeedToLead.com. We are backing all the leads for all these closers, making sure everybody's getting contracts locked up left, right, and center. And if you guys like this, we do this all the time. You guys are going to see we're live on our YouTube channel as well. And we've got a bunch, a bunch of videos of most of the people who are going to be in the space are already on there closing deals with us. It's a fantastic time. Love it, love it, love it. Elijah, what's going on, man? Yeah, so <laughs> it's your guy, Elijah I. Rubin, you know, uh, one of the co-creators of the Closer Olympics here. Um, I've been doing real estate for over 19 years. I started when I was 21 in 04. So I'm 39 going on 72 here. All right, <laughs> after doing 800 plus deals, you know, I am a certified closer. One of my biggest, strongest skill sets in my life. It's closing, and we want to put on for the closer community. We want to highlight the art of closers. That's, that's my fiance. She knows we're always closing around here. So I look forward to it. Your boy was the number two closer in the first Closer Olympics, according to what the voters said and the judges said. But we're ready to go back here, put on. This is going to be exciting. I'm, I'm excited for everybody. I love it. I love it. Keith, what's going on, man? What's going on, man? Uh, Keith Dever, Real Estate Diddy. Also one of the co-creators of the Closer Olympics. Hey, my guy Elijah, man, he's still one of my favorite closers, man. I just want to let him know that, man. Shout out to my guy Lim as well. Well, man, I've been in real estate seven years and closed over 500 deals. You know, of course, I'm a certified closer. You know, that's what I do. That's what I love. And uh, I think that we all here for the same reason today. It's the sport of closing. You know, I know we got like basketball, you got football, but, you know, real estate, we got our own sport. So I'm looking forward to see who's going to take this today. You know what I mean? None of these people is to be played with. So I'm excited. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, the battle, man. The battle is on. Listen, real, real quick, Elijah. Yes, sir. What are you most excited about today? Well, I'm most excited about because remember, this is these are the qualifiers. And these qualifiers, these are people that we personally... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, did we get a... I think he got too excited. He got too, he got too hot over there, man. He's cooking. Yeah, he too what are you looking forward to mostly, uh, Diddy? You know, while we wait for uh, uh, Elijah. I'm going to kind of pick up where he left off at. You know, these are the, you know, last year and, um, you know, I mean, not last year, but the 2021, the 2020 Closure Olympics, we didn't get the opportunity to do like qualifiers like we're doing now. And uh, this is giving, you know, everyone a shot to want to be a part of it. Everybody say that they got the skill set. And uh, I want to let y'all know, like, this doesn't, you know, this, you got to get through this qualifying round just to be able to even get to the open run on day one of the actual closers Olympics. So, you know, you got to knock a few bowling pins down for you to be able to get the strike. So I hope they ready mm. to go. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to see new talent. I'm excited to see who is that person that we didn't even know. Who is the next Monif Mr. Latte story? That's what we're looking for. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or Mrs. Latte, you know, today. So, yeah, yeah. I want to see talent. That's that's it. I also want to see talent. 
Love it. So, Liam, what are you most excited about uh, before we get into the rules and break down all of the particulars of how we're going to be judging this thing? But, Liam, what are you most excited about? I'm excited to see somebody who people don't know. I'm excited to see somebody who is going to come and absolutely break through the space. Somebody who can come and make a complete name for themselves and is able to show that, you know, Maybe the people doing the work are going to outperform the gurus. That's what I want to see. Wow. Oh, wow. that talk, Liam? <laughs> Yo, before we go any further, uh, Elijah, can you do me a favor and break down how are you guys going to be scoring this thing? What are the key things that people need to be paying attention to when these closers are closing deals? Can we break that down? Absolutely. So we want to give you guys a little sample and taste what the real Closer Olympics official event is going to be like so we are judging this the same way the official judges during the official close olympics will be judging this so each round each person can only score up to 40 points so there's 40 points and the criteria i don't know if we're able to show the cry the um the point system but if we can't know where i'm going to break it down for you guys so you're going to get up to five points for building rapport are you building too much rapport or are you not building enough rapport are you just talking with them or are you just jumping around or are you just getting in conversation with being the best friends. Because remember, you only got 30 minutes. That's it. You only got 30 minutes. So you score between one to five points. Each one of us will based on the rapport they're building. Negotiations. All right. Are you negotiating the best offer? Or are you just going off the offer, that, the MAO that we put on screen? Are you really negotiating? Are you going back and forth? Um, creative option. This is going to be a big one right now. One to five points. And a lot of people ask me, Elijah, what if I do a novation? Yes, novation, subject twos, lease options, seller finance. Those are all going to be accounted for. Bam, bam, thank you, team, for the points. So for creative options, you can score up to five points. Then handling objections. This is going to be a, a, a big one here, too. Um, how do you handle objections? Are you steamrolling them? Are you sidestepping them? Are you addressing them directly? Are you controlling the situation? Or are they controlling you? So we're really going to be looking at handling objections. The best closers ask the best questions that highlight identifying the pain. So are you asking about the pain? Are you just taking the first answer? Are you digging? Are you asking, are you poking the pain, being deliberate about those pain and pulling that out? Or are you just kind of subtly talking about it? Then verbal agreement, you know, did you get them to say yes? Are they saying, yeah, let me think about it. Or yes, I'll sell it. I'll sell it. Let's do the deal. Send me the contract. If you get a verbal, you will get points. However, I think RJ proved it. I think Muneef's pulled it, proved it. All right. You, if you get a signed contract, you are, you're closer going to get five points. And the only way you can get the net ROI points is if you get a contract. We don't know what the ROI is going to be if you got a verbal. But if you have the net ROI, it's, if two people get contracts, whoever has the highest net ROI is going to be the person who you know edges out that one round. So those are how the point criteria break down. You can only get up to 40 points. It's going to be exciting. Make sure you guys are rate, rate, tracking your points down. What do you guys pick? Drop it in the comments there so other people can see how you guys are rating the closers yourself. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. So the beautiful thing about this is that all of these points, right, all of these points are critically important for any. This is for the listeners. I'm speaking directly to the listeners. All of these points are critically important to closing deals, okay? So you want to be looking at all of these points, right? Looking at how these people are building these points and how you can take those things and apply them to what you're trying to do to close deals. Because listen, I learned a ton. I don't know about y'all, but I learned a ton from the last Closest Olympics because I thought I was handling objections the right way and I found out that, you know what, it's some things that I can sharpen up on. OK, there's some things that I can sharpen up on. So without further ado, without further ado, do we have the wheel of names? I'm ready to get to this wheel of names. I'm ready to get to it. I'm excited. I'm trying to see. I want to see. It first. <laughs> oh, kick it off. Let's, so let, let's, you know, before before you do the wheel of names, let's watch the video from that shit real quickly. Just so they get a chance to just get a little sample, just a little sample for those who haven't seen Close Olympics, who haven't got their replays. They're able to just get a little sample of what they're going to be in store for. Uh, let, let's, if, if our team could queue up the video, let's see what that looks like. Let's do it. 
When I close, doors open, every key I forge golden, I'm key speaker, tour spokesman, and today I'm your opponent, I do real estate in the real estates, commas in every deal I make, ain't scared of no reflex objection, I get the yeses, my ties, yes man, oh man, all time high, check the numbers, they won't lie, last year we did a million, this year the mills multiply, we kings of this, you know the vibes, more light to live, more homes to buy, more escrows, more bank rolls, more urgency, closing time. Close it, pick up the phone, close it, big cash bro, close it, million dollar deal, close it, it's all on you, close it, what you gonna do, close it, I want Oop. All right, I well, that. I was feeling that. Within the vibe, within the vibe, it's closing, it's closing. <laughs> close out that video. Close, close. You know what I mean? But here's the deal. Listen, before we even, before we get the video back up, listen, I want everybody to understand something real quick. We got a special offer. We do got a special offer. Um, and, and, and here's the deal. I, I want you to, I want you to really, when, when, you, when you're thinking about this offer, look at the biggest offer, right? Because, listen, if you get the bundle, Right now, listen. This this is this is this is not regular. I just want everybody to understand. Listen, usually this thing is six ninety seven. Usually this bundle is six ninety seven, and we have a special offer right now as we speak. Okay, now what does this include? Right, you get both years of replays of the closest Olympics. Okay, so you get that. Right, the next thing that you get is you get a discount on the tickets for the upcoming closer Olympics finale. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. You get a uh, closest Olympics mini course as well. OK, now here's the deal. You're going to get this not for six ninety seven, not for six ninety seven. We was able to talk with Elijah and the whole team and we was able to get this at an extreme discount. And you want to pick up your tickets right now. I promise you want to pick up these tickets right now because this thing is going to be crazy. Two ninety seven. Listen, <laughs> two ninety seven is all it's going to cost you. Right. This is the all it's going to cost you to be able to get access to all of those things all at the same time. OK, so if you haven't already, go ahead, jump on the website and get your bundle today. OK, now here's the deal. If you only want to get the tickets for the closest Olympics, that's just ninety seven. It's just only ninety seven dollars. That's it. Right. So make sure you're taking advantage of those tickets or if you were like me. You're going to be getting a bundle, right? I need all of the things because when you watch the things that you're going to learn today, all of those things are going to be carried over from the previous event. Okay. The previous event was insane. Listen, you do not want to miss that. So go ahead, hop over, get your tickets while we get the video queued up, while we get the wheel of names queued up and listen, you're going to be in for a treat. All right. So I just want to put that out there. Elijah, I hope I ain't getting in trouble for announcing the, the 297. You know, what? you know, the early bird special, you know what? Let's just let's, let's bless the people. The idea is the more people are able to see the techniques, see the opportunities, is the better they're going to be able to win. And like I said, we want, people, we want to make it affordable for them to close big deals, you know? And I just think the more you see it, when you see it, you could be it. So I have no problem with that. No problem with it. So I like it. I love it. I love it. Massive so, discount. Massive discount. Half off, y'all. Guys, half off. And like so you, the longer you wait, you're gonna see what the real numbers are. Like tickets, we were selling 297 just for the tickets. You're getting last year's tickets. I mean, again, this year's tickets, both bundles. I mean, you're getting both replays and a mini course. Make sure you guys get it locked in. And you see, we already got RJ and Max in the comments going back and forth. Let's see, <laughs> let's see who's gonna be going first, second, third, fourth. Let's go. Go ahead, Ooh, Byron. Go ahead. Let's go. We got Colleen. Is it gonna be Colleen? Is it gonna be Seamus? Who's it gonna be? Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, is it my guy, my guy James? James gonna be the first. James gonna be the first one. James, where you at, James Marshall? Listen, you know James is like a newcomer. You know what I mean? I haven't gotten the chance to see James in action, so this is gonna be exciting for me. This is going to be exciting. So I'm I'm excited and ready to hear James go ahead and start getting queued up. Um, so Elijah, yes, sir. What can they expect in this particular round? Right, where are the leads? Let's talk about the leads. Let's 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 cue these people up on exactly what this is going to look like for my guy James. So, so last year we had people setting in their leads. 
We had people from all around the country sending leads in. You know, bless their hearts. They're doing the best they can. But we had some, you know, my, they, my man Keith didn't get the best set of leads. I I mean, I, I got some shit. I got some okay leads, you know what I'm saying? We can't be complaining, uh, we can't be complaining about it. But this year, we went and went and got, you know, a, a unique, valuable relationship with I Speak to Lead. Gene, shout out to Gene and Liam here. And we, we solved the lead issue. All right. Because we want to make sure these are people who are these are all PPC leads first. These are hot leads. And Liam and the team, they have VAs calling the leads the day before, letting them know we're going to be calling you today. So they can be better pickup times, more motivated sellers, people ready to talk. So there's no more excuses. There's no more asterisk, king closers. All right. Whoever wins it this year is taking it all the way with legit, with legit leads. Legit closing is all on you. So I know that's going to be key. I know there's a little bio for us to introduce James. Um, and do we have the bio so that we can make sure we give James his proper due? You know, while we're waiting Keep on that, so, you know, it's going to come down to who can settle in, who can calm the nerves, mm -hmm. you know, who's able to still remain themselves, even though that people is watching, even though they feel like it's competition, you know, amongst each other, but it's going to come down to who can, you know, who can close? You know? Every single person inside of this qualifier went through a rigorous application process. We listened to multiple of their calls. We had them do a live audition in front of us. So these people have been stress tested and the, the ball is in the air. Any one of them can catch it. What I think it's going to come down to today is who's going to manage the stress, who's going to be able to commit to being their best selves, who's not going to let, you know, something that's going wrong impact them in such a negative way, and they're going to be able to go through and get a deal closed. That's what I think. I think that it's it's anybody's game today. Listen, man, I'm super excited. I, I can't wait to hear from James. I want to hear from this guy, you know, because at the end of the day, I know, even though he's new, right, I know that even though he's new, that he was stress tested, right, and I know that he's, you know, he's in the, in the top ranks, right? So, James, listen, this guy, he's from Dallas, OK, he's from Dallas, Texas. Right. He's been in real estate for at least five years. OK, uh, uh, he's he's closed five deals. I mean, um, you know, which is, you know, that's that's pretty dope. Right. And, you know, if, as far as he's concerned, he's one of the best closers. Right. And uh, this thing is moving really, really quickly. <laughs> but James, there you go. I'm looking at my guy, James. How's everybody doing? <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel right now, James? I feel great. I feel you from my home. Great. State, bro. And, uh, I'm just really excited about this opportunity, and uh, hopefully, uh, I can, um, you know, just shed some light on some folks, uh, my style, and uh, you know, I've only been doing it two years, Byron. So I wanted to put that out there. <laughs> correct. Uh, correct. I'm still a newbie, so you know, uh, hopefully, uh, there's some newbies out there. Uh, I can inspire. So let's let's get on the phone. And help five you. deals. So that's pretty dope. Yes, sir. So so and, and, and real quickly, uh, James, any any quick little shout outs before you put your skill sets for the world to see? Man, I'm shouting out you guys because I have taken styles from I think everybody that's been on this closest Olympic st stage. I think I told you guys yesterday uh, I've been a fan and I've been. Uh, tuned in the last couple of years to all the events and uh, I'm just ready to show what I got and uh, I know it's been a lot of growth for you guys in this event and uh, the growth that I have experienced uh, since uh, being in the game uh, has really uh, you know blossomed through this event you know seeing closers call live so I'm just ready to show what I got. Uh, nice nice yeah. all right Anything else? Anything else? I mean, Byron, anything else, sir? I'm just excited, bro. You know, this this gets my blood moving. You understand what I'm saying? So listen, James, I'm ready to see you turn up, man. And uh, I'm rooting for you, even though I'm just meeting you. Uh, but listen, closing five deals is, is no no easy feat, man. A lot of people get stuck in the mud and don't even get that far. So yes, sir, not to him, you know what I mean? So uh, let's get to it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. And plus, he's from my own state, man. Come on, man. Ooh, representing, representing, yeah, man. Texas in the building. All right. Let me know when to dial. So, uh, uh, production team, do we have the shot clock ready? Is the shot clock ready? Oh, 
I want to see if James going to turn into King James. <laughs> All right. All right. So your your clock won't start until you, you start talking with the first person. Then it's on. Okay. All right. Hey, good afternoon. I was looking to speak to Ty. Yes, sir. Hey, Ty, this is James. I was just giving you a call there about the property on Sloan Street. Yes, sir. How are you today? Man, I'm doing great. How about you? Oh, well, not too bad. Just about to get off work and it's about beer 30. All right. About beer 30. About beer 30. Hey, I like to hear that, man. I like to hear that. Yeah, Ty, I just wanted to give you a call about that property today, man. Uh, see if I can get you qualified for our portfolio. Just make sure you're a good fit for us and uh, make sure it's a good fit, uh, that we're a good fit for you as well. Uh, and then I can see about getting an offer approved for you. Does that sound good? Yeah, I've already got an offer out right now. So you got an offer? I don't know if it's worth maybe seeing where this first offer goes before continuing, continuing on still. That way we don't waste each other's time, right? Or... Yeah, no, I appreciate you, Ty. I appreciate you, Ty. What are you, uh, what, um, what's keeping you from going with that offer that you have already? Uh, just waiting for paperwork earlier right now. We talked late last night until about, uh, about nine or so. Oh, well, good, man. Well, look, I'll tell you what. I am a guy that has my paperwork ready. So why don't you and I talk? And as long as you, you know, and the other company haven't signed anything yet, um, you know, yeah, ethics. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. What did uh what 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 asking price were you looking for that property? I was asking one forty but just with everything else around the neighborhood, but uh kind of settled at one thirty. Gotcha. Gotcha. So if I can get you an offer approved for one thirty today, you'll be looking to move forward. I would. Yeah, cash offer, you pay closing costs and What's a good email? What's a good email for you, Ty? Uh, ty underscore two zero zero seven at hotmail dot com. Okay. Let's get to know a little bit more about this property, Ty. So, what overall condition would you say it's in? Well, actually, Ty. Actually, Ty. I'm so sorry to cut you off, man. Before I get started, before I get too deep into it, are you the sole owner of the property, or is there anybody else on title with you? Okay, great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, that won't be a problem. So tell me what's going on with the property, Ty. Nothing, just uh, really kind of looking to offload it and get more into uh, have more cash heavy on the sidelines for uh, kind of this market that coming in and looking and getting into uh, more of a quadplex, uh, kind of in a closer town next to me. Oh, okay. Is this your primary residence? It is not. No, it's a rental. I've got renters and everything in there. So. You got rentals, renters in there. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I'm pulling up some details about the property, Ty, so I'm just going to uh, keep going. So you said the yeah. overall condition, would you say it's in good condition? You know, how have the tenants been treating the property? Really good. Um, so the only issue that I had was uh, the toilet backed up, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, but that was, they've been in there for about three years now, so I never really ran a snake or cleaned it out. Okay. And uh, all the pipes look, so the the guy ran the rotor rooter and a camera down in there, and uh, pipes look good, there's no roots or anything, it was just a build up of, of grease, you know, a bunch of college kids pouring grease down the damn traps, so. Gotcha. Uh, you know, but it was nice that they ran the camera down there just because it is a cast. It's cast iron to uh, to PVC, and okay. it's just right there at that little lip connection that uh, that it built up. Um, but overall, you know, there is a big tree next to it, and there isn't any rips coming uh, coming into the to the piping or to the drainage system. So okay, uh, that was really good to know. So what about the, what about some of these bigger, so, I mean, are you, are, I mean, is the rest of the plumbing okay? Or is that just kind of the only, yeah, okay. It, 
that was the only issue we've had in, in three years that, that they've been there. Okay. But, uh, like I said, you know, running the camera through there, it is kind of a peace of mind that, uh, hey, you know, nothing's really wrong, cracked, For sure. damaged, you know, so. For sure. What about uh, uh, some of the bigger ticket items, like the age of the roof, the foundation, HVAC, things like that? Uh, so the, the roof was probably, I think, I think it said five years old whenever I bought it. So it would be seven years old now. Okay. Um, it's got aluminum siding around, so um, it doesn't rust or deteriorate, really. Gotcha. Like as far as foundation, um, you know, there's no crack on the foundation. It was level whenever I bought it. Um, you know, no, no issues there. And then as far as the uh, HVAC, it had central heat, but uh, whenever I turned the gas on, there was a gas leak, so I ended up cutting it. It was back in the, I don't know, 50s or 60s, I think. This damn thing is that old. And uh, ended up taking it out and putting many splits in just because they're way more energy efficient. And so the only thing that the gas runs off of is the uh, hot water heater. Okay. Is this oh, is this a 3-1? 2-1. It's a 2-1. Okay. Yeah, uh, Ty, I'm going to be honest, man. I'm just taking a look at some of the details about the property. I think 130 is going to be a little bit too uh, too close to retail for us. Um, okay. now I'm, now I'll tell you what, we look at two things when we're, you know, considering our offer, we look at what the houses are selling for as is and what the houses are selling for on the market, you know, fixed up with an agent. Um, now as is, you know, I can definitely get an offer approved for you, but like I said, I don't want to waste your time if you got an offer closer to what you're asking for. Um, uh, you know, I mean, are you, are, are would you even consider, Anything under a hundred? Because that's kind of what I'm seeing with some of these as is no. houses. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, look. Being in a college town and, and right next, right, I gotcha. Only two blocks from the college. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. I see it. Yeah, man. It sounds like you got a. Uh, it sounds like you got a good, um, uh, a good deal with the other folks. I hope you know they're able to take good care of you. But I actually got another call coming in real quick, Ty. Uh, if, some, if, right. if anything changes, I'll give you a call back, man. I appreciate it. Uh, He decided to keep it moving. I don't yeah. Him. yeah. I think, you, gotta, you gotta give and go. Yeah, and that's part of the strategy too. So what you I think he asked some really key questions and then he didn't stay stuck. I think especially to your first time on this, you feel like you have to be loved to that one seller. If that's not the right seller, move on. Move on. There's more leads for you to call through. Yeah, don't get attached to someone get attached to you. you gotta keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I like how he delegated that off. That was a smart move, I think. That guy Hey, good afternoon. I was looking to speak to Ricky. Yes, you got him by the balls. <laughs> I got you by the balls, Ricky. Well, let me loosen yes, let me loosen my grip a little bit, man. How you doing today? Oh, what's going on there? Yeah, Ricky, I was just giving you a call today about that house you had entered on the website on US ninety. Uh huh. Yes, sir. I was giving you a call. Uh, I believe you had uh, entered it on our website saying you were looking to sell. Were you still looking to sell that property, Ricky? I am. Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. What price are you looking to get for it? I'm asking 175 for it. Asking 175. Okay, well, I just want to ask a couple of questions, Ricky. Make sure I'm a good fit for you uh, and make sure that the property is a good fit for us. And uh, then after all that, I can get an offer approved for you. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, before we get too deep into it, are you the sole owner of the home or is there uh, someone else on title with you? Uh, well, me and my wife. Okay, you and your wife. Okay, gotcha. So, I, I do a little more than okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, let me ask. Let me ask you this. I don't want to. I want to make sure I'm giving your wife her respect. Is she? Uh, is she around? Uh, uh, to um, uh, to listen in on this conversation? She's not. She's at the house. I'm not down the road. Just parked on my car. Okay, not a problem, Ricky. Uh, and let me ask you this: How often? Uh, what, what's your wife's name? Sherry, how long, uh, how often do you and Sherry get a chance to talk about selling? I mean, we just talked about this morning. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. And did y'all say if y'all were able to get something for 175, then you'd be uh, looking to go ahead and, and get the process started and get moving and close it? Yeah, I've already got that. Uh, what it is, I'm, I got a 
24 hour mobile repair business. Okay. And I'm wanting to move it up to Tipton, Georgia. And that's why I'm wanting to go to Tipton. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. I'm sitting here trying to find this property. It is uh, 4669 U.S. Highway 90? East U.S. Highway 90. Yeah. East U.S. Highway 90. Okay, just trying to pull up a little details about the property here. Uh, so, Ricky, how's the, what's the overall condition? What would you say the uh, condition of that property is down there? that address again, Ricky? I'm still having a little bit of trouble finding it, man. It's 4669 East U.S. Highway 90, Lake mm -hmm. City, So as as you guys make calls, we get the addresses. Try to mute your phones uh, when you can, so we don't give out the addresses out there live. I, I understand. I understand. You're still new. Still new to things, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so, some of these properties you, you see. Oh, Max, reminded reminded of the shot clocks on him. The shot clocks. He's halfway through this round. Hey, Elijah. Yes, sir. I hear U.S. anything. I'm gone. Oh yeah, yeah. US sixty what? All right, let me get you back. You probably stream. Yeah, yeah, once once it's either in the middle of nowhere, commercial, or some bizarre thing every time. And this one specifically was commercial. Yeah. So so, so I think oh, it's still dialing, it's still dialing. So I, I but I do like I I'm I'm feeling his rapport style building. He said, uh, it, got, it got me gripped in the balls. Like, hey, let me go ahead and loosen that grip a little bit. Definitely something I was said. I, I definitely like that. I definitely you know, like one that. thing that I think he's doing well is he's he's mirroring and matching the sellers. But what I'd like to see a little bit more of is if you were to inject the motivation or the, the not the motivation, injecting the uh, enthusiasm early on. You know, you want to start off above the seller and then meet them. You don't want to start off below them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. I, I do like how he's mirroring. And I, 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 because of the time constraints, let's see how he starts create increasing urgency. Because he has to, he has to score, he has to get his points up. He has points up. And you know how, you know how it goes, Keith. Ricky was like, "You got him by the ball. You got me by the balls, or something." What? <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered. That. Yeah. That, that was, Who answers that was... the phone like that? <laughs> I thought about uh, Money Mike for a minute. <laughs> he had Damon. <laughs> I'm triple dialing. All right, good, good, good. Get you set up.
Man, this is so fun. Oh, I'll do this. Listen, I'll do fantastic. This. I'll do this for hours. You don't even know. Like that people. Are... Yeah, no, like I said, I'll do this stuff for hours. So at, at this point, you know, this one you gotta kick in your pre-call affirmations to keep yourself, you gotta keep yourself up right now, you know, to anybody that's watching, you know. Absolutely. Pre-call affirmations, you know, and and tell yourself who you are, what you do. I got my vision board right behind there. Sometimes I'll turn around and take a look at that. Oh, yeah, that's me right there. That's what I'm that's what I'm doing it for. Get right back in it and just remember all the times you got yeses. You turn those to yeses. I think those are the key parts and just feeling comfortable and being able to know that, hey, yes, you got the shot clock, but treat it like it's just another day in the park. And it's not over yet. It's not you over. You know, one thing that I, I always do whenever I'm on a long dialing session is you're not making the connections you want to. You start to get down. You start to feel like you're not going to do what you want to do that day. But what I do is I just put myself in the mindset of thinking that the person who I'm about to connect with they're like the coolest person ever. And I've been wanting to talk to them for years. You know, there's some celebrity that I just, you know, think is the coolest and that I'm super excited to talk to him. Cause that's, yeah, that keeps me really excited to mm -hmm. hop onto the next aisle and make sure I'm not <clears throat> starting their conversation on low energy. I remember on the first closer Olympics, I seen one of the brilliant closers. They actually hit a buzzer beater. So it's not over yet. <laughs> not by the name of Eliza Rubin. Hey. You know, he hit a buzzer beater at one point in time. Three seconds left. Got to say yes. So just know it's not over. Stay cool, calm, collected. No puppy calls. Like from over. You know, so I mean, like, it, it just it's about it, you know because what we think about we bring about. So if you start stressing it, you start thinking about all the all things not working, how it's not fair, and just like, you know, just understand you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. Uh, but like I said, he's gonna he's got to hustle up. And he's gonna hustle up. But he got plenty of time and. And, and you guys are watching this. Think about yourself. Like, what would you do in a situation? What would you got? I <laughs> appreciate Chef Curry with the clothes, boy. Um, I see you. I see you. At this Chef moment, I would definitely make sure I'm doing my pre-call affirmations. Settle down. Just relax. You know what I mean? This this ain't the time to start stressing. Nah, you, the clock already going at this point. So just got to relax. I've been in this position, you know. <laughs> you haven't. You yeah. haven't. You know? I just relax, man. Just relax. You got it. You got some good ones. And, and yeah, and don't think about the last call because I've been in a situation where you're like, man, I should stay on the last one. And now you're in this new call and you're letting those past thoughts play in your current present call. So you want to just, you have to have like Kobe Bryant, short term memory loss here. I like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Say, say positive. Say positive. It's okay. You got Your this. You got this. Okay, you know, just taking the time. Ah, <laughs> oh, shuck is see the family, Jordan, and I think what's really good is that you know this is what's going to be like every single one of us who making these phone calls. You're going to have stretches where you're not going to talk to anybody, like Liam said. Hey, I was looking to speak to Will. Hey, Will, this is James, man. I was just giving you a call about that house on Waring Court. Okay, awesome, awesome. And so the five two seven is the is the whole thing with all three of those? All three of those, all seventeen acres. All seventeen acres. Okay, awesome, man. Awesome. I just want to give you a call and see if I can get that qualified for our portfolio and see if it's a good fit for us, see if uh, you know, we're even a good fit for you, and uh, then I can see about getting an offer approved for you. Does that sound good? Yep, sounds good. Uh, just to give you a heads up, um, I am taking offers from, it feels like everybody. Uh -huh. um, I'm taking offers for 30 days, and if I don't get an offer that I like within 30 days, I'm just going to put it in my rest. Um, so, um, I've taken a couple so far, but, you know, nothing. What makes you want to go to closing, Will? Um, I got money tied up in it. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much, but you know, just the uh, I want the best possible offer. Yeah, I completely get that, Will. I completely get that. I, uh, you know, 
like I said, you know, one of the questions, you know, we asked to help qualify folks for the uh, for our portfolio is to get an idea about price. Um, we got a lot of folks that submitted forms to the website. Uh, so I'm pretty certain we're going to buy our next property today. Um, and I just don't want to waste your time if we're not even in the same ballpark uh, with you, you know, looking to sell and uh, wanting to take the highest offer. I know there's got to be a price or a range you got in mind, right? Um, so as far as did, did you run comps before? Uh, have you run comps yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to take a look at it here while we're on the phone. All right. So the last prop, so uh, I mentioned MLS earlier. I'm not a realtor. My wife is. So whatever I build, she sells. Mm -hmm. uh, this property, I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not going to build on. This. I'm a small builder, and that property was too much. For, it was too much for me. Okay. So that's that's why it's going on the market. I still um, still have money tied up in it. Though. So uh, what you what what were you thinking about listing it for? So the only only comp I could find that was close was a property. I think my wife said it's about a mile or two away. Um, it sold for six million dollars within the last year, but it was twice the size of mine. Um, it also had better road frontage, so probably half of half of that, maybe a million and a half, if I can get it. You're looking for one point five million. Um, that would make me take that would make me take it off the market. Mm -hmm. but, May not be the best offer. It may not be the best offer right yet. So I'm still pretty open. That's just what I'd like to have. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's even got you looking to sell? Well, like I said, I'm a, I'm a builder. And mm -hmm. uh, usually I do, I'm a small builder. So I'm in the, I'm in the four to six homes in your neighborhood at best. Gotcha. Uh, 17 acres, if you break it up in a quarter of an acre parcel or even a third of an acre parcel, that's too much for me to sell. Gotcha. I'll take a look at this, Will, and give you a call back, man. I don't want to waste your time on the phone. I just want to see if this is something that even makes sense for us, okay? Perfect. Thank All you. right, man. Take care. Yeah, the, the numbers were all over the place. Um, Zillow's That's giving it like 180. Oh. He had a, a canceled listing in 575. Yeah, so yeah, and, and, and we all get crazy sellers. We all get crazy sellers talking crazy, reckless, and I think he handled that right. And he, he asked a couple questions, talked about it, and pivoted out of it. Mike. Yeah, it's a tough one with a super educated seller, with a um somebody that's a unique size lot with a bunch of different properties on it. You know, that's when you gotta take your time on. But you know, the one thing that I don't like when sellers come at me with is have you run comps yet? I don't even know if you still want to sell, man. Let's have a conversation first. You know. I would, you know, the way you want to kind of overcome that objection is ask them, you know, I see you had a listed, you know, a few years ago, uh, you know, what was your comps? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, what, what was some of the feedback that you got from the property? You know, I see that you had it listed. Um, I see also that it didn't sell. I mean, what's your thoughts about it? But at the end of the day, you don't really have enough time to really dig in. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the right, thing. right. Yeah. That, that, that. That's to make the competition a little challenging, right? Because you can't do exactly what you do when you have three hours to burn, you know. But at the same time, I like to ask them when 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 somebody hits me with that, I was like, "Well, tell me, you, I mean, you got some good offers, right?" <laughs> and then they they have forced to acknowledge that they got BS offers and it didn't work out to them. So, yeah, you, know, you you guys got this. You know, you got plenty of time, plenty of time, James. I see Max over there, uh, one of the top three clean, uh, closers in, in the country last year, giving some good game out. Uh, uh, he's like, giving out some good game, you know, giving out some good game. And you can just see closers appreciate other closers. You know, yeah. and I, it's just so valuable to learn and be around other closers, learn from other closers, see what they see, watch what they're watching, hear what Liam is sharing, see, what, see how Keith, perspective, everybody's POV is so much different. It's, it's really good. I love this. I love it. Yeah. You know, my guy, you know, at this point, you know, just keep, you know, you got to finish strong. You know what I mean? You know. Yeah. When you get into the other five minutes, 
I, I get I'll convert into a, a high red cell uh, buyer myself. <laughs> you just got to go and get a little bit more aggressive with it. Yeah, no you your message. You get your RJ Bates on right now. Just go on RJ Bates on Ron Artest style. Just going to just get wild for you right now. <laughs> ski mask, yeah, ski mask, and gloves. <laughs> I think this last call, man, he's just got to go for points. He's got to get into some type of good pitch here. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, he's serious or curious. I mean, off the record, I get right to him sometimes. He got it. He got it. Plenty of time. Um, so the time of the time, man. Oh. Four and a half. Please leave your message. One and a half, half, one and a half time, one and a half minutes. Like I said. Hey, I was looking to speak to Mike. Yeah, hey, who is this? Hey, Mike, this is James, man. I was just giving you a call about that property there on Elm Tree Street. I believe you would enter it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe. Are you, are you call me back? I was just trying to see if I could get you an offer for that property on Elm Street today. Were you, were you looking to sell? Yeah. Okay, gotcha, man. Well, I just wanted to ask a couple questions, get it qualified for our portfolio, see if I can get an offer approved for you. Does that sound good? Yeah, let me call, you, uh, call me back in a couple hours. Call you back in a couple hours. I can give you an offer here in about four minutes if you got time, Mike. Yeah, I don't have time right now. Okay, not a problem, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Man, that guy's crazy. He just filled that out All within right. the last 15 minutes. Just right. talked to one of our VAs. So when I get a seller on the phone like that, too, especially if I go through this little dry sprout like that, I haven't talked to somebody in – call after call i would i would definitely hit him with uh you know uh, hey real quickly we're, we're just deciding my bunny partner was about to pull the trigger on another property we saw your property came up just tell mm -hmm. me uh, you want the cash we want for you or do you, are you okay with the, us giving it to your neighbor and then that usually makes them perk up no 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 we i want the cash for me and then that like force them to kind of play ball um cool. yeah keep pushing you got this man three minutes <laughs> Yeah, put that pressure on, give them a little bit of a takeaway, show them you don't need the deal. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. It's the same thing with women. The less you uh, the less you want them, the more they want you. Hey, tell them, Liam. Tell them how you got your wifey over there. Tell me how you got wifey over there. It's just not the air. It's just not the air. <laughs> you got game two. <laughs> right, all right. And I think... Uh, yeah, that, and that's not a hard part. You can't go back to the other cells because the, the leads get thrown in the mix. So you, you're on to the next one. You know, uh, the way in your traditional, you can just pick up the phone, call your past seller. You can follow with that person. It's on to the next one. I think I have 15 leads. I think I've called 10. <laughs> okay. Just got to get through them. Just got to get through them. You got it. I like James' attitude still right now. Yeah. You know, I'm a big fan of that, you know. He ain't letting it get him down because this is real life situations that people experience throughout every single day. You got to you got to reset your mindset after every call whether you get a no, whether you get a no answer, whether you get a yes. Got to reset. Everybody is not the same. If you go into every call the same, then uh you're probably going to get the same answer, you know. So, you got to reset your mind. Hello? Hello? Forwarded to an automated voice message. Your call has been forwarded to an... Hmm. 
They're there. They denied the call. Ashley's got the perfect mindset right there. One right. call ends that has no bearing on the next one. Yep. You got a ring back tone here. Like it's 2003. That's if the time. That's it. All right. All right. Well, like I said, if you put the time in, you put your you put your uh, best foot forward. You put the best foot forward. And I think, like I said, you know, you this is your first time doing it. You know, putting yourself in the position. What do you like Man, I think everybody, everybody out there watching right now. I mean, so, just put your put your hands together. I want to be able to hear this all across the nation that, yeah. you know, for somebody to step up in front of hundreds of people live and do that for the first time, that takes some guts, man. Most people, they're going to fall before that pressure. Yeah, man. You know, I, I really wanted to see him, um, you know, uh, get, get, you know, get, get some more action in there, man. You know, but sometimes it'd be like that. Sometimes it, it's like that. Right. Sometimes. Uh, circumstances don't allow us to be able to sh showcase the, the best of the best skills. But guess what, though? He still kept his composure, right? So shout outs to him. Um, he still was able to, to, to keep his head in the game despite things not necessarily going his way. We don't know what the judges are going to say. We don't know, right? Because, listen, it was still an opportunity there for him to be able to rack up some points. OK, so I definitely want to uh, spend a, send a special salute to James, man, uh, for putting his best foot forward. Listen, all of the calls, in my humble opinion, I mean, he handled those things with grace. But listen, I don't know anything. We got to find out what the judges are going to say about this. Right. Because the judges are going to ultimately make the decision as to how his fate is going to be. Sometimes it's death by clock. <laughs> and We just witnessed death by clock. <laughs> unfortunately you know what i mean but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter his head was in the game listen he's a new entrepreneur just getting into the game starting to climb, trying to close deals so i'm excited listen i hope i hope listen are you excited like i'm excited to see what these scores are going to look like because i'm definitely excited listen we got we got my guy keith you know what i mean he's been doing this for for a long time elijah the same liam um so listen we got the judges scoring right now as we speak so if you can right now if you can right now go ahead and put what you thought the score should be i want to know what your comments are so if you if you can if you can go ahead and put down how well you thought james did i want to hear it um i'm pretty sure james is going to want to hear it as well right um so let's listen to what you guys think right um listen to some of you guys' takeaways what do you thought he did great what do you thought he he could have done a little bit better on right um uh, because listen i've seen closers in worse situations and still pull out a w i've seen this I've seen this. Right. So listen, it's always room to grow. Right. I'm not going to sit here and act like everything was all good. Listen, it's always opportunity. Um, um, you know, if, if if you're the right closer at the right time. So I just want to put that out there. But uh, yeah, let's get to the judges. Judges are currently scoring right now as we speak. And I hope you are judging as well. At, you know, why you sitting at the house watching this thing? Because listen, we, this is a learning opportunity. I hope you're writing notes, right? I hope you're doing all of those things. But before we even get to the judges, I want I want to mention something real quick because this is very important. This is very important. Listen, we got a bundle that's available on the website right now. I literally just got the official approval from Elijah. He told me that we're giving this thing to you half off. Listen, let me let me explain what you get on this deal. So you're going to get access to some discounted tickets, right? You're going to get the Closer Olympics mini course. Listen, the Closer Olympics mini course. Anybody that's looking to make any kind of real estate deals take place. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to go as far as to say, if you're looking to learn sales in any genre, any field, 
You definitely want to take heed to this mini course, this closest Olympics mini course, as well as getting the discounted tickets. And guess what else? This, this actually gets better. You're going to get the previous two years replays. The previous two years replays. So you definitely want to make sure that you're taking advantage of that. Okay. Um, and it's only $297. Half off. Okay. So this is half off. So $297, you can get the Closers Olympics bundle. Okay. So make sure that you're going over to the Closers Olympics site to go ahead and pick that up. Okay. And worst case, you know, if, if you want to just pick up the tickets only, right, for the final event, um, it's only $97. OK, so it's only ninety seven dollars. You know, if you anything like me, you're going to go ahead and get that bundle, though. I ain't going to lie to you. I need all of the replays. I need all of the replays because I've literally went back and watched those replays multiple times, multiple times, because it, it was that much knowledge, learning opportunities in there. So um, are my judges ready? Where are my judges at? I need to know where my judges are at. Are my judges ready? The judges are still scoring. The judges are still scoring. So we're going to give them some time. Definitely be writing down what you think happened. I want to go and look at some of these comments. I want to look at some of these comments. So Justin said, good work, right? Justin said, good work. <laughs> uh, Fernando said it was it was a 50 for him. Damn. Okay. Fernando is, uh, you know, a little rough on that. Uh, RJ Bates uh, for the past two years, the closed Olympics included. Okay, so, all right. Uh, the highlight reel, yeah, most definitely. So, I want to read some comments. I want to see some comments. What do you guys think? How do you guys think James did? I want to see it, okay? So, let's see what, what we got here. Um, okay, so some people think that he could have been a little bit more enthusiastic, okay? Um you know, the enthusiasm uh, 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 Bilal felt like, you know, it could have been a little bit better, you know, which is which is cool. That's a fair that's a fair assessment. Um, but I'm hearing a lot of positivity. I'm seeing mostly positivity. Shout out to James. Right. For doing a great job. Anybody had anything that you feel like James could have done better? That's what I want to know, because, listen, this is a learning opportunity. I know we want to be cool by y'all. Right. We want to be cool by y'all. We want to all, you know, say the nice, positive things. But listen, we need what what's Steve Trang at? We need some of that Steve Trang energy. Well, that's that. We want to learn today. You know what I mean? So let's see. We got uh, maybe he could have uh, had some more enthusiasm. So we're seeing a lot of people talking about enthusiasm. OK. And I think that's I think that's critical. I think enthusiasm is definitely something that you want to make sure that you have on these calls. Um, and I'm hoping James is hearing that as well um, from the people in the comments. So um, let's see, let's let's see what we got here. All right. So we got Liam. We got Liam. We're pulling up Liam's uh, score first. Okay. So Liam. Do we have Liam ready to go right now? Let's go ahead and get Liam's reaction to what took place. Let's get his score, right? Because this is this is this is critical because the judges make the decisions here. Okay. Yeah, we got our opinions. Yeah, we think about all of this enthusiasm, but that ain't I don't even know if uh, uh enthusiasm is on the scoreboard, right? So we, we're looking for rapport, we're looking for negotiations, right? Creative options, handling objections, identifying pain. OK, verbal agreements, contract signed. That's the things that we're looking for. OK, and projection of the net ROI. Those are the critical pieces. OK, so that is what is going to determine who is going to be the person looking to move forward in the next rounds coming up. So real quick, do we have Liam ready to go? Is Liam ready to go? I'm ready to go, baby. What's up? Talk about it. So before we even get into the scores, Liam, what were your thoughts on the call? Overall, I think he could have done better. I think that based on the calls that we listened to him and how we saw him perform in the audition, there was um, I was left wanting a little bit more out of them. You know, when I'm on the calls, there's two things that I'm looking at more than anything else. It's going to be your cadence and your tonality. Your cadence, ladies and gentlemen, that's your speed how fast you're talking, your tonality, or sorry, your pitch, rather, your pitch. That's going to be your highs and your lows. Where are you at? And now you can have any combination of those to create this very dynamic word flow. When you're looking at the most, most interesting people to listen to, you guys listen to Matthew McConaughey. 
he has such a dynamic range within his speaking style that he's very, very enticing to listen to. And, you know, there's multiple studies from Ivy League schools that have done research based upon what is important when you're speaking. Now, the most important is actually body language. Second is going to be your tonality, your delivery. And the least important is what you're actually saying. You can say nothing important and say it the right way and get where you want much faster than you can say the right thing the wrong way. So when I'm looking at this, I think that if I were on these calls, I'm going to start off at a high degree of energy. I want to start off motivated. I want to start off excited. I'm going to be smiling all my chest puffed out. So that way I'm taking a look like this and it's going to come through because my body language will carry. So I think the tonality was where this was lacking to begin with. Um, can we bring my scores back up that, that screenshot cool. there so I can, I can cool. break those down? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get these scores up and moving. Let's go. Yeah, man. That, that was some good good pointers, though, man, that you pointed out uh, while we wait on the scorecard to pop up. Um, because I guess that's going to show up in this scorecard. I, I'm, I'm really interested to see exactly how you broke this thing down um, for sure. Because, you know, we did hear that in the... Um, in the, in the chat, other people noticed that the, the enthusiasm wasn't really there like that. Was that a thing for you or did that factor um, any part in your scoring? You know? Yeah, the way it did. It did. The way that I would define enthusiasm is delivery. How are you saying what you're saying? How's it coming out? Um, now, I don't know where that scorecard is, but I'll just break it down from my end. And the criteria that we're looking at here is first is rapport. Out of five possible points, I gave it a two. And the reason was is because he had some interesting back and forth dynamics. What he could have done better is when somebody says something, you want to smoothly chain off of that to move to your next question. You don't want to go, all right, and then jump into your next question. That just creates a more dynamic conversation where you're feeding off of each other. It's more conversational, not like you're giving them a survey. And that's where I think he could have earned more points in there. Next is negotiations. Out of five points, I only gave him a one. Um, and the reason for that is he only really got to talking about price one time. And when he did, um, you generally want to try to get them to you want to get them to confirm why they're at the price. You want them to try to, you want to put them on a stool and then start taking their legs out with a sledgehammer. And all that he really did in that situation was say something along the lines of, um, this is pretty close to market value and went from there. So there just wasn't a whole lot to base it off of. And he didn't, he didn't try and make that seller negotiate against himself. Next up the, for the creative option, um, none of those came into play. So that's zero out of five. For handling objections, um, I give that a two out of five. Uh, there weren't too many tough objections. The only time I really got to see one come into play was when the guy was uh, saying, hey, I got to go right now. Um, and I think that I would have put some pedal to the metal there and trying to make that work at any cost instead of instead of kind of letting that one fizzle off. And then the last one, and this is where I think that he should have earned a lot more points, was in the identifying pain. Um, this is the motivation. I give him a one out of five on that. And the reason I gave that a one is – you want to be looking for little opportunities to ask, to ask these between the lines questions. You know, somebody says my house is in disrepair. I was in disrepair. Do the tenants do that. You want to start making these inferences and then allow them to start segueing into that. And then you want to start pushing your, your, your boot on their neck at that point. And don't let up. And there just wasn't really a point where we were diving into diving into that motivation at a really deep level. Um, and then the other three are just the verbal agreement, signed contract, and net ROI, which um, there was no verbal, no signed contract, and the net ROI is based off of that signed contract. So out of, out of 40 possible points, uh, I scored it a six. Wow. Six. Man, that's rough. So you definitely recognize some missed opportunities from your purview, Liam. I did, yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm interested to see what Elijah thought about this and, and Keith, um, listen, six is rough. Six is rough, right? <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. Elijah, it's on you. What were your thoughts, man? What were your thoughts on this call? Yeah, no, like I said, uh, being the first one, there's a lot of jitters, being the first time even call, so I get it. I sense a little nervous energy a little bit, you know, and then, um, however, I think I think he started off really strong, but I think as he's going through the calls, I think especially when the call started slowing down and he had to call through some people, I felt mm -hmm. he lost some of that energy. And I feel like, I mean, how you do anything is usually how you do everything, but let's just get right to the point. I think he, his strongest area was his, um, his rapport. He built some good rapport with some of um, multiple callers. I think he did pretty good with those. Uh, he had a slight negotiation on the first call. He gave him zero for the creative options. 
Um, I did think he handled some of the objections pretty well on a couple of these. Hey, I already have offers. All right, well, uh, did they get your contract? Well, I'm really good at getting contracts right now. I got mine ready, handy, ready to go. Um, is your wife ready? Is your wife there? Um, so I think he handled some of the objections pretty decent. He identified some of the pain um, of, uh, for, uh, for some of these. I felt like he could have did a better job at that. Um, and I just know how hard it is out here. So I didn't want to get my Steve Trang on. So I gave him a little extra on identifying the pain. But the rest of them he just didn't clock out. So he got a 10 for me. Wow. So definitely some missed opportunities I'm, I'm seeing. So overall, Elijah, I saw that, um, you know, on your score, um, you didn't feel like the negotiation was there. Um, what are some other opportunities you felt like he missed where he maybe could have got in and, and got some good stuff in there? Especially the first call. You know, I really feel like he could uh, went for the seller financial and creative options. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's an opportunity for there. I think uh, he could have poked the pain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and, and I think by poking the pain allows you to know their sophistication and allows you to know, is this a real cure seller or a very serious seller? I feel like those are a couple of missed opportunities he had there. Uh, in terms of his cadence, uh, I know that in the chat, a lot of people talked about his enthusiasm. They didn't like that piece. Did that matter to you any? Yeah. And, and, and when I'm on the call, like I smile and I'm dial, I'm talking with them. I'm connected with them. I, Pete, this is a, this is a relationship business, make relationships, not offers. And you, you kind of felt the enthusiasm a little low and people are going to feel that on cost of phone. And I feel like, uh, especially as he was going through it, it, it that's that start, start winning down that that's the area for the future he could definitely improve on. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Elijah, on that. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see. Listen, listen, it is what it is. Listen, he had a 10 from Elijah. I mean, it is what it is. And a six from Liam. Keith, I mean, where we at, man? What, what's your thoughts? I'm going to say this, man. You know, I'm just going to keep it real brief. The clock beat him up. The clock beat him up. The clock took his energy away. Uh, the reason why I say that is he started out very enthusiastic. His rapport was on point. Yeah. He started out with the first person. But when he got down to 15 minutes and started getting to 12 and 10, you could feel his energy going away, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think that caused him to not really overcome more objections, uh, dig more deeper into pain because he knew in the back of his mind he got to go ahead and get out of there so that way that, you know, he can find the car that he was looking to get. And unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to really, you know, take it far. You know, I feel like he uh, he could have been more creative. I feel like he could have overcame a little bit more objections. Um, I think he had good starts to the calls, but I think that when it got down to the nitty gritty, he didn't really fight for it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So I gave him a, you know, report, I gave him a three because he did start off the calls pretty good. Negotiations, I gave him a two. He didn't really, he didn't throw too many blows when he got hit. You know what I mean? He didn't really, you know, do what I wanted him to do. Uh, creative option, I didn't give him anything. I don't, I don't think he was too creative. Uh, handling objections, I gave him a one. I didn't think he really tried to press that point, you know, to try to overcome some of those objections. Um, identifying pain, I gave him a two. You know, I feel like it was times that he he tried to dig in a little bit, but I do think he could have did a little bit more. Uh, you know, verbal agreement, I gave him a one because he did get a price out of, you know, uh, you know, a few of the sellers, even though they wasn't the prices that he needed to get to. So I showed him a little bit of love right there. But as far as signed contract, return on investment, I mean, we all know it wasn't there. But, uh, you know, what I like about James, he did try to finish to the end. You know, he was trying to fight. And I think that if that clock wasn't ticking, I think he would have tried to do a few of these things different. So uh, I don't want to judge him too hard, but uh, definitely big shout out to James for sure. Yeah, shout out to James, man. I, you know, listen, I think he, um, with what he was working with, Keith, I think he did, you know, a phenomenal job based on um, what he had to work with. Um, but, you know, obviously, obviously, James, right, according to the scorecard, there was some missed opportunities. Okay? For sure. I got to be real. What do you think? What do you think was some of the things that you did great? Okay, so we'll start there. If you could give me one of the things you felt like you did great, and then one of the things you felt like you missed the opportunity on, that'd be awesome. Yeah, man. One thing uh, that I'm really good at uh, that, you know, can be a tip for anybody watching is, you know, like like Liam said, is the tonality. I, I really try to match tonality. Uh, that, that one of the last sellers I spoke with, he sounded like he was rolling out of the bed. And so I kind of sounded like I was rolling out of the bed, too. So. Um, you know, it just comes with those things. And then, you know, kind of joking back and forth with that first seller with that, you know, weird little intro that he had. 
Um, I, I definitely think I did good with that. Um, you know, what I didn't do good, I definitely could have done a creative option with that first seller. And uh, had I known that that was going to be the best seller, uh, I definitely probably would have stayed on the phone there. Uh, you know, he was a little closer to retail and that was just kind of my strategy. I just wanted to keep it moving and get somebody that had a good fair market value for uh, that we could make a cash offer for. But uh, I'm just really happy. Uh, all smiles. And, uh, you know, we'll just see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. I appreciate the feedback from everybody. Absolutely. So it sounds like, you know, one thing I did like about your strategy um, um, I don't know how well it worked in your favor. It didn't, right? And I'd love to get your reaction to that. But you were moving through the calls pretty quickly when you saw that or when you felt that there was not an opportunity there. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not even going to try to act like I'm somebody that pitches creative options every day and stuff like that. It's something that I bring up to my sellers. And then those leads, I work and collaborate with other people that know a lot better than me. And so that's also, uh, you know, why I kind of moved off that first call, which really could have been a good call, um, you know, if I had just kind of dialed, you know, into it a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, man, listen, man, I just want to say congratulations to you. Um, you know, I really, really appreciated the call. Um, I, I, it was entertaining. And I felt like I learned some stuff, uh, despite there were a couple of uh, missed opportunities there. But listen, man, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning, man. You're closing deals in real life. Um, you're already in this game. And you stepped up to one of the biggest stages for the closers in the real estate space. And I just want to salute you for that, man, and kind of keep going, man. Um, listen, I love it. I love Appreciate it. You, I love it man. Appreciate it, all, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Listen, that was awesome. I Listen, I... I just lo I just love this sport. This is just a dope sport, man. And I and I and I really really appreciate his attitude, right? He still he still, you know, got smiles leaving, right? And that's what it's about. Listen, every every deal is not gonna every call is not gonna turn into a deal, right? And every bad situation, every call is not a missed opportunity because we still have the opportunity to follow up. OK, we still have the opportunity to follow up. And so that's what it's about. It's about sticking in the game and not giving up. So I just want to give him a heavy, heavy salute. Uh, if you want to apply, OK, if you want to apply, text closer to four eight zero four six two seven one three three. The number is on the screen right now. If you want to apply for the next closer Olympics, definitely, definitely, definitely text closer. That's it. You don't have to add nothing extra to it. All caps. Okay. All caps. No extra. Just closer to 480-462-7133. And this is the fun part. Listen, we got Seamus. We got Colleen. We got my guy Scotty. And we finna hit the wheel. Y'all ready to go? Let's get it. Let's get it. And next up is Colleen, Colleen, Colleen. Welcome to the zone. You know what I mean? Listen, Colleen is low-key one of my most, she one of my favorites. Colleen is definitely one of my most favorite people on the planet. Um, and I am definitely rooting for her success. Um, and listen, you know, I personally have had interaction with Colleen, okay? Colleen is from Philly, right? She's been wholesaling for the last two years, right? She's closed over 70 deals to date. Listen, you're not dealing with a rookie here. I just want y'all to fully understand this, okay? So listen, um, she's, she's, uh, she says that I am the best closer because of my special gift. I have, um, uh, she, listen, on the phone call, she's, she's a killer, OK, um, so I'm I'm very, very interested to see how she handles objections, how she runs through this score. Oh, my God, we got Colleen on the screen. We got Colleen on the screen. What is going on? How you feeling right now, Colleen? That's what I want to know. I'm feeling amazing. I'm feeling really excited. And listen, y'all, y'all better grab that bundle and catch the replay. Uh, the replay is what helped me get to this point. Ooh. Um, I watched that more more than three or four times just to prep myself. So 
yeah, grab it while you got the chance. But I'm excited. I'm ready. Apparently, you're the wholesaler that other wholesalers call when they can't get the deal. That's right. When they can't get the seller signed, I'm the one to get the job done. You know, I am extremely proud of your progression, Colleen. And I'm extremely excited to see how you handle these calls today. And uh, I'm going to be to the side rooting for you. I'm just letting you know that off the top. Thank you. Thank you so much, Byron. Listen, judges, what's going on? We got Liam, got Elijah, we got Keith back in the building. And we're getting ready to start this clock, man. Any any words y'all want to say prior to us hitting this clock on Colleen? Yes. Let loose. Let it go. Let it fly. Let's see what you got. Let's get it, Colleen. You got this. And you got the hat swag. You know what time it is already, so there ain't nothing to say. Uh, let's go, Colleen. Let's see you, girl. Let's do it. All right. I got my first lead pulled up, and I'm going to give him a call right now. I've been doing some research on the leads behind the scenes. Let's give him a call. Oh, the, they just said they're going to call me right back. Yeah. All right, it's on okay. to the next. So just remember, guys, the clock doesn't start until she talks to our first person. So we want to make sure we're not burning the, the clock time until you at least start to talk to somebody. So you have some time. Okay, I'm going to turn the uh, volume down, too, so I don't get yes, distracted. Yes, don't, don't hear us. Don't listen put up, up, don't put up one finger if you could still hear me. Put up one finger. You. We do hear you. All right, perfect, perfect. All right. Like I said, this is going to be... Um, and, and so what's really, I, I don't know, for those who don't know, Colleen, we did a uh, we did a role-playing session, me and Keith did on a live, and she went crazy. Oh, yeah. she, went, <laughs> she went crazy. Yeah. He, people were like, whoa, this lady's uh, coming with that heat. And then I'm like, yo, Mitt, you know, she's in, she's part of Mitt, the Mitt family, you know, nine to five wholesaling. Yeah. And um, he's like, yeah, she's a beast in our community. So, and, and I think this is the benefits, right, of, being in the close Olympics, somebody you may never heard of two years ago, she wasn't doing any of this. Now she's crushing it in, in the official close Olympics. No, if, if, if the close Olympics hat was on FanDuel, you you a lot of money on Colleen. <laughs> People <laughs> putting money on this honor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I put a poll out. I put a poll out saying, who do you guys think would win? Please leave your message. Looking at the results. Right now, the big favorite is Mr. Seamus Goss with 48 votes, 84% of them. Next, Colleen did come in second with 10% of the votes. And then Scott and James, two and one vote. But Seamus, people think that he's going to come in today. You know, one thing I learned about the close of the Olympics, I don't care how many votes you get. Right, <laughs> right, no right. The votes, only vote that matters that seller of voting on you to buy this property and saying yes or not. Good afternoon. This is Sal. Hey, Sal. This is Colleen. I'm just giving you a call back about your property there on Francis Street. You had filled out a uh, form on our site. Is now a good time to talk? Yes, yes. I have, I have time. So, um, which I bar, I bar you, <laughs> sorry, I can't speak. I bar you, are you with? Well, my company's name is Montez Renovations. Um, we actually contacted you because I, I was really interested in this property. Um, is this one still available? I just want to make sure before we hop into everything. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's, it's still available. Uh, I'm actually in the process of uh, remodeling the property. So I just finished phase one, which is painting the interior. Uh, and then phase two is going to be the uh, flooring. So that's uh, that's the step I'm on right now. Um, so, yes, I did fill out the form to kind of 
kind of evaluate and see which route I want to take if I want to put it on the open market or if I want to sell it to an iBuyer. So. Oh, got it, got it. And it seems like you've already put a lot of work into it. Do you know about how long it would take you to complete that? Um, in about, uh, just depending on the weather, uh, about two weeks, give or take. Oh. Uh, because obviously I'm also going to paint the exterior, the storage. I'm going to convert the den into a third bedroom. So that's obviously going to add value to it. Uh, and then once I convert the den into a bedroom, then I'm still going to have the living room, the breakfast, dining, the kitchen, the garage, and the other two bedrooms and the bathroom. So I think that's going to fit perfect. Wow. The third bedroom, yeah, the third bedroom is actually going to be uh, like 11 feet uh, with five inches and 10, nine. So it's going to be a, a, an okay room size. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would have you even thinking about selling to a company like ours? I mean, it does seem like a really great property that you could put on market and get that full retail value. Right. So I know um, it, it could take about, you know, 30 days, 60 days, right? But with the high bars, I know that they can close within about like seven days. So yeah. obviously if it's closed to uh, market value, then, uh, then I, I'll, I'll proceed. Um, got it. Got yeah. it. So I, I have to ask you, it, it does seem like a really great property. I love the street that it's on. It looks really nice and quiet. Um, what even has you thinking about selling it? Oh, so I can um, I purchase more properties. Uh, I'm also, I'm a, I'm a real estate investor as well. Uh, but I guess, yeah, I, even, even some iBuyers, it would be great for them to lease it out. Especially right. with the third bedroom, yeah, especially with the third bedroom, the cap rate would be okay. Yeah, I, I do see that. I do think it would be a great investment property. So I, I guess you already, being an investor, you probably already know when we come in with a cash offer, it is a quick close. We're looking at, um, you know, 14 to 30 days, but typically we get the job done in about 14 days. Uh, no realtor fees, no closing costs, of course. Um, how, how long have you been investing? Oh, I've been investing since, uh, geez, like 2000, uh, right before 2010. Oh, very so, nice. Yeah. I've, uh, I've flipped a couple of lots, a couple of condos, have a couple of uh, real estate cash flowing properties as well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm also a licensed broker. So, again, just to recap, right. uh, the reason why I filled up the forum with um, hedge fund buyers is uh, to see how far off they are from uh, hope, uh, market value. And if it's not too, I know, I know more than likely, they're, gonna, they're not gonna offer full blown appraisal value, right? But I'm thinking, okay, you know, if they're really close to it, then I can just sell it to them. Right. Because they're focused on, I know some some I buyers are focused on uh, rentals, right? So uh, they, they buy close to market value. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and and how much did you say? How much more you would have to put in it for it to be rent ready and be up to like the twenty twenty three standards? Sure, sure. Um, so okay, just to I guess to give you more details because I didn't finish giving you the all, I didn't finish giving you all the phases. So, okay, so phase two is the flooring, and then. Um, Phase three is the kitchen uh, granite countertops with the backsplash, also the sink, the faucet. Wow. Um, yeah, and then I'm also going to convert that dishwasher space um, back to its original state because right now they, they boarded up that area to add another uh, cabinet board. So I'm going to convert it back to where the dishwasher uh, was and then put a dishwasher there. Uh, and then uh, that's also uh, phase three includes the uh, bathroom, which I'm going to put a new vanity, going to put some, uh, uh, right now it has Hollywood lights, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, and I'm going to put modern uh, lighting there right above the mirror, and then I'm also going to uh, put flooring in there too, right? So that's actually um, part of the other phase, but yes, flooring and then the exteriors, paint, and then also uh, the storage at the back, I'm also going to paint it the same colors as the exterior of the house. So 
Oh, that sounds wonderful. And do you do a lot of that work yourself or do you contract that out? No, I I contract it out. I don't do it myself. Oh, okay. It sounded like I was going to say, Sal, wow, you are a jack of all trades. Um, but as I've been talking to you, Scott, uh, excuse me, Sal, I've been sending this over information over to my funding department. They'll have an offer for me in just a second here. Um, if we were able to make an offer that you liked, would you be able to close in about 30 days? Right. So are y'all the end buyers? Are y'all... Uh, investors and wholesalers and uh, what, what, I, specifically, not, what are y'all? Yeah, no, I, I know you probably get a lot of calls like this. Um, I'm actually a real estate investor. I do have a portfolio myself and I work with other investors here at my company. We kind of go in on these investments together. Um, sometimes I get a little greedy and I'll, I'll take it on myself and kind of leave them hanging. But um, on this one, I'm thinking it might be a joint effort between me and my partners. Um, but I got to ask you this, Sal, you're, what you're looking for, it seems like you're looking for uh, completing the property and trying to get that top dollar. Is that right? Right, exactly. Exactly. Now, because we do uh, have... Like I, mentioned to you, like I mentioned to you right before that, uh, if, if we can close, you know, within about, uh, let's say, two weeks, I have title companies that can close in two weeks because I know some investors are like, oh, no, you know, they're... They claim to be investors, but you know, deep down inside, they're just wholesalers. And they say, "Oh no, cattle companies are taking 45 days." Oh and then yeah. In the meantime, they're out there trying to wholesale the property. So just to be very transparent with you, uh, on the contract that I'm going to do whenever we, whenever I sell it, I'm going to put on there that uh, the contract is not a, not assignable. So they're just very transparent because I've had that before. Whenever I sold, uh, you know, the condos and, and some land. You know, and they say, oh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an end buyer. And then whenever um, we get it under contract, right? Yeah. They try to be sneaky and just blast it, you know, in, uh, in, in oh. other, in other uh, websites. Like, oh, no. I, 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 that happens so, that several times. They're like, oh, my God, you know, how come? Very how come annoying. End buyers and other, they kind of go around. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've be, dealt yeah, with that. Just very transparent and clear. So, yeah. I hear you. I've actually dealt with that too, and I can't stand that. That's why I want to send you over our credibility package so you can see all the title companies we work with, uh, seller reviews, uh, just so you have more information on my company. Um, we, we don't do anything unless we're planning to close this deal out. And you will find that when you check on me uh, with those title companies. Sal, what is your email? Because I want to get that over to you. Sure, it is uh, S. Martinez, Sal Martinez. All one word, right? Sal Martinez. Sailors, waste your time. That That's not what I'm here to do. Um, but I'll just be honest with you, Sal. We got two different options here. They just gave me back what that offer is going to be. Um, I'm not too happy with the cash offer. So I got a little good news, a little bad news. But the great news is the good news is so darn good. I don't even think you'll think about the bad news. So the cash offer, and I'm serious, Sal, I'm, I'm, I'm not too happy with my funding department, but the cash offer is coming in around 90. I, I think it's worth way more than that. Um, the good news, well, should I say the great news is we can actually offer you this program. Not everybody qualifies for it. Instead of closing in 14 days, we would need about 30 to 60 days. And we would come in, we would finish all the renovations, any repairs, any upgrades. We would use our own funds to do so. And after that time, we would be able to give you 150 cash, still the same benefits of that cash offer. Now, does that seem like something that will work better for you than that just that 90 cash? Yeah, actually, I received higher offers than that. Okay. Much better. Much what, better. what were they yeah, saying? It's a, it's a platform. Whenever I pulled up the uh, edge fund buyers, I thought it was directly with that high buyer, but another investor a couple of days ago, he said, oh, just you know, keep in mind that you know a lot of investors are going to reach out to you uh, because what hedge fund, hedge fund buyers they do is they, they they broadcast also the other property. So I did receive an offer directly from 
hedge fund and I have it in my email, but then I wasn't aware that they were going to blast it to uh, or broadcast it to other investors. That yeah, sounds yeah, like so, a wholesaler uh, sale. Put it in a nutshell, yeah, I've received uh, much higher offers than that. Okay. Uh, and, and is there any reason yeah. you didn't just go with those offers? I'm sorry? Was there any reason you didn't go with the higher offer? Yeah, because it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, much lower than I anticipated. Because after the uh, repair value, now that I'm adding the third bedroom, it's about in the 180 range, and um, I have the comps to back that up. And I even asked another investor, like, "What do you think?" You know, he was yeah. pretty reasonable. He was like, "No, you're absolutely right. I do see comps here uh, that I reflect. You know, one sold for a, a bit over 200, one sold for in the high 190s, but your property is a little bit smaller." So yeah, I do agree about about in the 180 range. I'm like, okay, just just kind of get your point of view. He's like, yeah, that's fine. He said, um, he said I'm an investor myself. I'm very honest. So, uh, I know top dollar. He told me like this top dollar. You know, you can probably get about in the 180 range. And I told him, I know I'm, I'm a broker and I'm, I, I did the comps, but I just wanted to see your perspective, right? And right. he was like, yeah, uh, I'm an investor. I want to. I would lease it out, not to flip it. Uh, I can offer you. Uh, 155, man. He said, I know if, if, if you want, you know, uh, fast cash, I, I can yeah. give you 155 once you're done with it, cash. But uh, yeah, if you want to get top dollar, then yeah, you can put it up in the open market. So going back to what I initially mentioned, that I wanted to see, you know, if, they, if, if someone comes close to the um, uh, ARB, I was thinking if someone were to offer me, you know, in the 170, you know, 170 range, um, then yeah, I'll sell it. So, yeah, yeah. Sal, let me let me put you on hold. Can you give me just one second? Because I do see those comps you you are talking about. Just give me one uh -huh. second, okay? I just yeah, want to yeah, ask okay, them. Okay. Okay. I'm driving. So, okay. Yeah, on okay. On one second. Right I'll be time. right yeah. back. Now, this is an interesting situation right here. I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat coming in and talking about. You, you um, might get me fired. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry? You might get me fired. Um, but I told Bye. them, yeah, I, I, if now listen, I don't, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on the phone if we're not, you know, agreeing to something today. Um, we can do the 170. We can't go past that because we're paying the closing costs and we're coming in and we're finishing all that work for you. So, even at the 170, it's going to be really tight for us, Sal. Um, but it, if you're willing to go with the 170, I could get this agreement over to you right now. We could get the ball rolling and we could get the process started. So uh, 170 and then, um, so that's that's after I complete the repairs or? No, no, no. We come in. So our asset appreciation program, it's totally hands off. We actually come in there, we finish that that renovation up, we put those stainless steel appliances in, we put it up to 2023 standards, um, and you okay. would be paid out in about 30 to 60 days. How does that sound? 30 to 60? Uh, yeah, it doesn't go uh, past 60. 60. We, we so honestly yeah, might be. 60 is a little bit too far out. But, uh, I can do I can do thirty days. That's that's cool. Thirty days, one seventy. Yeah. Can you meet me uh, in the? Can you meet me at forty days? Because we want to do the rehab right. We don't want to rush through it. Forty days. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but y'all y'all are not gonna be like after after like a week or two weeks. Oh, you know what? Uh, we can't oh. buy for one seventy. We're gonna have oh, to God, no. a bit more. Because no. I know some, uh, you know, some investors they, they do that. Right? It's a tactic. We're like, okay, well, you know what? It's it's uh, it's going to need more, and you know. Right. Yeah, Sal. So we and I feel terrible. You've dealt with some like, you know, I, I don't want to talk badly about them, but some bullshit wholesalers. You know, I feel terrible oh, yeah. about that. You were, you were cut, I'm sorry, you were cutting off. I think because there was a plane. Oh, I, I was saying I feel terrible that you have dealt um, with some, you know, BS wholesalers. I feel really bad about that. But no, we we anything we get involved with, we're doing it to close. Um, and the title company references will tell you that as well. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, go ahead and send me send me that um, that contract. That way I can review it and, 
and uh, then then we can go ahead and get this closed. Oh yeah, uh, so I'm I'm actually typing that up right as we talk because I want to I want to stay on the line with you because I want to make sure if you have any questions, you have it right in front of you. Um, so tell me, tell me while I'm doing this, what got you into real estate? What got me into real estate? Yeah. What got you into interested oh, oh, in investing? Uh, my investment property. So obviously I love real estate, right? But, um, I guess it give you more precise details when I put some of my properties for rent, um, you know, I got, I got a ton of leads and I, I started giving them, I guess my personal you know, experience and they took it as advice, right? So then they're like, oh, you know, we, we love you. Can you, can you represent us? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a real fan. Um, and that happened for like the next three months. You know, people started referring me out. Like, you know what? It's, it's good for me to get my license. So that's how I got my license. But I, I started off as a real estate investor, uh, negotiating deals, you know, on my behalf. Yeah, on my behalf. Uh, and everything went good, you know. Um, I'm not going to say that. And I know some people, they, they exaggerate and they say everything that they touch turns into gold. I'm not going to say that. I mean, because nothing mm -hmm. is perfect. But right. when I first started, you know, all the transactions went really smooth. You know, uh, I was in my, I was like 20. Uh, the first one I did, I was 19. Uh, and then I was uh, 20, 22 on my other one, then 23. And they all went very smooth, very, very smooth. So I'm like, you know what, this, this, is, this is good. This is really good. Uh, yeah. And they just, it just snowballed from there, snowballed. So I um, started getting my name out there and, you know, I started uh, brokering deals and with the commission, I just poured it back into my business. Uh, bought some uh, some land, then bought some houses, and then I got realtors that work for me too, right? Yeah. Uh, so every time they broker a deal, every time they close a deal, I get also, you know, a cut from that. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much it just it's a it's a domino effect, it snowball. So you know, I, I you know obviously I thank God that everything went smooth because you know anything could have happened, right? Like right. Uh, I know people that they get into real they, and man, it just you know, nothing goes their way. You know, they're out, they're out there showing properties, or they're looking at properties, and then they get in a wreck, right? Uh, and then all of a sudden, just clients don't call them back. Um, they get deadbeat clients where they just you know try to they're unreasonable. So it's like pretty bad. But yeah, thank God that everything went smooth. But yeah, that's how I got into real estate. Oh, very um, nice. Yeah. How about yourself? How, how, how did you get into real estate? Um, actually, you know, I always wanted to be in real estate. Um, and, you know, when I was younger, I was supposed to take the, the agent test and I actually overslept, which is, which is really embarrassing. Um, but the past five years, I, I just kept at it, kept at it. I started with vacant lots that I bought from sheriff sales. Um, and then, you know, I, I flipped those. So I, the first one I bought for $3,600, I was able to sell that um for fifteen thousand, and then i just kept repeating the process and then eventually i started to buy houses um now i've been buying you know for my personal portfolio not involved with my investor friends um i've been buying duplexes and multifamilies now um, and i actually teach i actually teach a lot of real estate education to uh new new investors so they can avoid some of those headaches um oh right, yeah. right. so how, some of those pitfalls for sure yeah yeah and how did you come across this property uh so i bought it from uh hello hey i think you hit mute are you do still there sal oh my goodness let me call him right back I got that verbal though. Oh man! I got that verbal man. though. Man, all the eggs in the basket, and then the click. Ouch! See, but I, on that, I don't get the sense that he hung up on her because he was he was being right. back He's and forth. Talking. You know, He's yeah, talking. there is conversational, but he was forward. driving. Damn it! Oh, man. His phone he, didn't die. Hold on, let me. His get phone might have died. Oh. He might be in a bad reception area. Call me. No. Hey, I thought I lost you there. Can you hear me, Sal? You might have me on mute because I see. Hello? Hey, Sal, I think you. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? We, we, yes, we lost signal. I don't know what happened, but um, 
Yeah, even a couple of minutes before you were breaking up. So maybe it's either my service or it's your service. So, but anyways, I'm glad that we're we're speaking again. But yeah, yeah. it's uh, directly from a seller. It's not from a bank. It's not a short sell. Uh, it's just directly from a, a, a seller that just wanted to sell the property. Okay, got it. Um, I've, have you ever been to some of the uh, sheriff sales or tackles? I have. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, once you're there, it's a, in my opinion, right? You, you really have to just search for good deals and the good deals that become bidding words and then it's no longer a good deal. Right. <laughs> and then also, you have that redemption period over here in Texas. Uh, are you in? Where are you at? You're in Texas. I'm actually from Philadelphia and I live in New Jersey, but I buy okay. all, all around the place. Okay. So over here in Texas, we have a uh, redemption period whenever you buy uh, properties that are at an auction for, for tax default, right? So there's a two, two year redemption period for a homestead and then six months for a non homestead. Um, but then, I mean, I, I can fly by that. I mean, that time, let's say six months, if it was at someone's investment property, six months go by quick. But yeah. it's the, um, it's the bidding. It's just all of a sudden, it's no longer a good deal. Right. Uh, but yeah, I've gone to them. How about yourself? Do you go there often? I do. I try to go to one every month. Um, I have another one coming up. I just got a really great three bedroom for $2,800 in perfect condition. Um, really, really excited about that. It really needed a clean out though. Uh, not embarrassed to admit there was definitely, um, man, it was piled up to the ceiling, but I got a lot of that stuff out of there. Um, so next is just, you know, a deep cleaning and then uh, getting it rented out, putting in some new appliances and uh, getting that one rented out. But yeah, nice. that's, that's it. That's it. I'm pretty excited about so, that. So how do you do your due diligence? Like, do you have, uh, I know some title companies, they offer packages where, like, they can do title searches for, like, let's say, 100 houses for uh, 500 bucks or something like that. Uh, but obviously, you have to do your due diligence, right, before you uh, buy them because you don't want to buy uh, properties with other liens. You know, no. if you do, it's like, you can You're just kill the deal. Oh yeah, so some of these tax sales, it's really interesting, um, but some of the tax uh, sale properties, they'll actually come to you free and clear. Uh, so I love that. But there's other ones called upset sales where you have to do your own research because there definitely can be water liens on there, um, a whole number of things. So before the before the auction, I had to look up a lot of these properties, call the city. I also have a software that will bring up any liens or mortgages that a property may have. Um, so I'm fully aware. Oh, and you do have to really go out and see the properties beforehand because I, you know, I was ready to bid on a few, and I went out there, and they were actually vacant lots. Uh, Sal, do me a favor. I just sent that over to you. It should be in your folder from Hello Sign. Give me one second. Let me, yeah. let me check my phone. No problem. Here. All right. Hello, sign. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's from me. And and okay. it's just a basic agreement, but it states in there that we have 40 days to get you paid out, Sal, or this agreement is void. It also says we're going to come in there, um, bring that property value up. But yeah, everything else that I told you about the uh, benefits of selling through us still remain. You're going to walk away what we agreed upon today. Um, no closing costs to you. We're going to take care of everything. Um, if you have any okay. questions, just let me know. You would just click to sign at the bottom, and I'll get that right over to my title company so they can they can start doing their thing, and you and I could get to that closing table. Yeah, so I'll review right now, and if I see anything that, that pops pops up that I see that needs to be a uh, change, I can always email you. I'm actually, I'm driving right now, but give me about, right now it's 448, give me about an hour or so, um, uh, two hours, because yeah, just there's traffic, so give me about two hours, okay. and then I can go ahead and uh, I can text you or give you a call and let you know for sure. Okay, how about I give you a call back, and, and a, okay. you said about an yeah. hour? Drive yeah, safely? About, yeah, like in, like in about an hour and a half, because there's traffic here. There's a, it's, a, it's Houston. I don't know if you've ever been in Houston. It's like, it's literally like everything is 30 minutes it's, away. 
and, 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 and the, corner, the, corner, the corner store is 30 minutes away, everything. So It's <laughs> definitely on my uh, travel bucket list. Are you stuck in like bumper to bumper right now? No, not right now, but uh, I see ahead like a bunch of brake lights. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably going to get congested. It's right around that time. Okay, yeah, Sal, so, uh, just just drive carefully. And, and, and I'm sorry, what was your name again? Colleen? Yes, Colleen. Okay. It was Thank very so nice much, talking with you. I look forward to yeah, closing look, with you, Sal. I'll look, give you a call forward, back. Yeah, I look forward to doing a, a, a business transaction with you at, uh, with this one and also maybe another one because you seem very easy to work with for sure. Thank you so much, Sal. I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Take Tony. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, sale. I still got more time though, right? I love that nine seven right there. I've still got more time. She, she, yeah. everybody, everybody was in the background saying, hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up. She is on the call with him for 27 minutes. And then the first thing she says is I have more time. Yep. You got to respect that. You got to respect that. That's a killer mindset. Run through the finish line, run through the finish line vibes. I love it. Let's see what happens. What are you saying? What are you saying, Keith? Let's see how I finish out. You know, I don't, I don't count nobody out ever since I seen Elijah hit the buzzer beater, man. You know, <laughs> you know the vibes. You yeah, know the vibes. man. So I can't, you know, how that go. I'm just actually going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle is going in for her. You know, I, I love seeing it. Guys, we are almost up to 200 people watching this live stream right now. Don't even show this on your story. Just make a post, drop a link. Let's get it. I mean, we can break yeah. 200 easy. Absolutely. Share. Let people know we're going live, putting on for the culture, right? Please leave your message for. Yeah, I just like seeing. I like the tenacity and, you know, squeezing, squeezing the juice, squeezing the juice out of the opportunity. All right. You know, you, you don't, you don't get to choose the cards you're dealt. You, you just get to choose how you play your hand. So <clears throat> now she gets to call in two minutes. Golly. <laughs> two minute closer, Colleen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I see a lot of, I see a lot of closers in the comments. I see a lot of closers coming out. I love this. Going up for each other. A big shout out to all the ladies in the building supporting. Yes. You know, got to give them a shout out. You know, if I if I had to choose between building a sales team of all women or all men, I would go all, all women all every women. time. No, they, 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 they just have that intuitive sense to understand emotions and actually shut up and listen so much better than most guys. Man, we, we got a lot of ego going on. A lot of ego, extra testosterone on the boss people around the call. Like, oh. You know, women got the ability to make you say yes when you want to say no. <laughs> they got that nurturing, that nurturing vibe. On the dispo side, though, on the dispo side, though, that I want to, I want a hard closure on my dispo team. I need a man for the dispo. Yeah, get somebody who can just, yeah. you know, tell it like it is, hard close. That's that's because it's B to B sales, business to business. The acquisitions is B to C. It's just different skill set. I think my time's up. I don't see my clock no more. We'll put the clock up for her. Shout out to Mitt and the family. Salute. Shout out to Mitt. Call has been forwarded to it. How much time does she have? 30 seconds. Under 30 seconds. Oh, I ain't bagging that in 30 seconds. I ain't yet doing it. <laughs> UV, the all-star of all-stars. Uh, <laughs> Sign now, click. <laughs> Time's up. Yeah, I'm just so mad he didn't sign. I'm just so mad he didn't sign. He said, give me an hour. Whew. Congratulations, Colleen. That was uh, that was fun to listen to. That was real fun Congrats. to listen to. Congrats. Wow. All I can say is, wow, fellas. You know, um, what do y'all think, man? Real, real quick, man. Just what were your thoughts on that, man? Jeez, that, 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 that was a good call. That was a good call. I would have got about it there. I'm going to be honest. I would have got about it there. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yo, that was, you know, I, 
Was my, that- my bad. I, I interrupted you. Go ahead, Byron. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is I saw a really fantastic comment that I thought was a pretty interesting way is that they said this is boxing. It's not a street match. She got a guy on the phone. There's no guarantee she's going to get somebody on the phone. She made it through that first 60 seconds. And once you're through there, she was going for points. She was going for points. Now, the thing that I think that remains to be seen is whether or not it was a deal. And the verdict from our comper, David Olds of Easy REI Closings, he said 215 ARV was based on him finishing the rehab and it looking good. 180 is probably closer, and if that's what he thinks, he knows he doesn't do a good job. There's no money to be made at 170. She would lose money most likely. Mm. I feel like she maximized as much as she could. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. On that call, for sure. I agree on that. Yeah. Yeah, So so what you're saying um, overall is that that you don't think the deal would have monetized at the end. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think at the end... What's all said and done, I don't think the deal is going to monetize. And listen, guys, if you're at your home and and you're hanging out and you're closing deals by yourself, cool, lock it up. Hey, see what happens? I get it. This is close Olympics. You got to get the numbers. This is not, these are the best closers in the, not the country, the world. These are the best. Man, this is amazing. So, you know, listen, the judges are going to be scoring right now. Here's the deal. This is what I can say. This is what I can say. We literally just watched high level closing and negotiation. Regardless of whether or not the, um, you know, whether she's going to, you know, it's going to monetize or not. The fact that she stayed in the fight, I'll be honest with you. I was doubtful. Me personally, I was extremely doubtful. But at the end of the day, the fact that she was able to see beyond the doubt, see beyond the fact that this guy was getting ready to uh, uh, fix this property up, looking for full retail. Right. And to be able to take the conversation to those links, I think was personally amazing. I really believe that was amazing. So. Listen, I want to know what you guys think, though. I want to know what you guys think. I know that you guys were very, very um, active in the chat. But I want to know. I want to know what do you guys think? Were there some missed opportunities? Was this, in your opinion, not an opportunity, right? Something that that should have been passed. I want to know what you think. So if you don't mind, go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, I see that Jeff said he's very proud of Colleen. Right. I am proud of Colleen. That was an amazing call, by the way. Just want to put that out there. Um, but I want to know, do you feel like it was some missed opportunities? Do you feel like it was it was it was a great call? What do you guys think? What I want to get some feedback. OK. Awesome. So it looks like overall the overall rapport, it looks like, you know, a lot of people are excited about the rapport. Um, the judges are currently scoring right now. OK. So it looks like we got a couple of judges that's that, that are ready to go, ready to go. Looks like Keith is ready to go. Um, but I want to keep looking at these comments. Let me see what we got here. Let me see what we got here. She's stuck. Okay. She's stuck. Okay. Yeah, that's a fact. She's stuck in there, man. And um, I'm, I'm truly excited about that. But I want to get to the judges. Let's get to the judges. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time because ultimately the judges are going to determine the fate of whether or not this was a great call or not. Oh, it looks like we got Liam up first. Okay. What's up, baby? What's going on, Liam? What What's is going your, on? Your thoughts? What are your thoughts? So my thoughts are that she did a really fantastic on having a conversation and yes. really actually talking to the guy. So one thing that I, I really liked is that early on when he said, who are you calling with? Some people, they just, there's like a little hiccup there. And it's small, but sometimes I do that. And immediately the seller is kind of like, uh, what, why, why are you talking to me? You don't even know who you're calling from. She had no hiccup. Like that was, that was not even an issue for her. That whatever wall he put up right there, she freight trained through that. There was no issues on it whatsoever. Um, but the thing I think she probably could have done a little bit better was when he was ending off a sentence and she wanted to lead into her next question. What I would have done is have a bit of a smoother transition. You know, when, if somebody's ending off a call or ending off and ending off one of their sentences, I don't just want to be like, great, great. And then how about this here? What I want to do is I want to touch on the last part of their call to show that I acknowledge what they're saying. Actually, 
and have a better transitional phrase. Like, you know, it's really thoughtful that you'd say that about your mom. And, you know, that made me think about whatever my next question is and dive into that. So I just have a smoother transition. And that adds up over the call when you do that a whole lot. So I think that would be a skill for her to, uh, her to um, um, work on. Guys, are we going to pull my, uh, my score up or am I going to walk through it again? What's, what's the plan? Yeah, let's get the, let's get the scores up. Let's get the scores up. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to these scores. And if not, what we could do, we could go, just go ahead and start running through them because I want to I want to I want to know exactly what your thought process was on the scorecard itself. So if we can get the scores up, that'd be great. But if not, let's just go ahead and run through it. Let's ask if we're doing the scores one sec because I want the production managers to not be to not be upset with me. Okay, I'm going to assume I'm going to just go for this. So first and foremost, we have rapport. And out of five, I gave her a four. She's a fantastic conversationalist. What she can do better is not have so much phone voice. You want to be natural in talking to people. And I know just from talking to her that she talks a little bit differently to us in, in regular conversation than she does on the phone. And the way that I would put it is a little bit of a customer service voice. And remember, guys, we're not in customer service or in sales. So that's one thing I would change. But that's why she got a four, and that's why she missed the one extra point. Next, negotiations. Out of five, she got three. Because she put a lot of good strategies into play, but she didn't utilize silence a whole lot. So, for example, when she gave out that 90 number, she had this whole, you know, one to two minute long train where she was like 90 and then gave her second price. You want that first price to settle and actually anchor. That's how it's going to do its job is by setting it out. You want them to have an emotional impact to that and then bring it up because that's when they're going to get excited. So using some more silence and having him justify his price better, that's where she could have got those extra two points. Next, for the creative option out of five, I give her a one. Uh, and the reason is because now, while it seems like she was going for innovation, that's that's a speculation. It wasn't very transparent in the pitch. Um, usually, if you're going to be doing an ovation, you're going to be you're going to be pitching it as some sort of alternative option, not just cash is going to be a longer close, but you know you're going to be a bit more transparent of like we're going to bring it to our network of people, we're going to do something else, and usually there's going to be a better level of transparency because for an ovation, your general exit is on the MLS, and for somebody as sophisticated as this guy, if you're not transparent up front, that's going to ruin the relationship down the line. Next, for handling objections, um, out of five, I gave her a three. Um, she didn't get flustered by anything that she that he said, but I don't think she stood her ground or kind of tried to back him down off of uh, off of some things. And that's where I think on handling objections, you know, it's not about just dancing around it, but sometimes you've got to you know push back too. Next, for identifying pain, out of five, I gave her a one. And the reason for that is because with this guy being an investor, there's not a whole lot of pain there. So we just didn't get to see it come into play a whole lot. And what I would have done is I would have tried to figure out what pain was going on with the actual renovation of the property, what kind of headaches he's running into, you know, why he's looking to sell now, why isn't he finishing the rental first, you know, these different sorts of things, which weren't, do you know, dove into very much. But I think that she would have got a much higher score had she had been not with an investor and with, um, with um, somebody who's in a bit more of pain. I think she would have been able to identify that better. Then finally, verbal agreement out of five, I gave her a two because I think it was really bold of her for, to go for it. You know, everybody's telling her thought that she should have got off the phone. I would have got off the phone with him. Um, and so I'm going to give her, you know, a point for trying it, a point for sticking in. But then where she's missing the other points is because by all accounts, it doesn't seem like this is a deal. So that's where it's gotten. And of course, signed contract, net ROI, ROI, those are zeros. Wow. Um, well, you know, listen. That was that was the real deal. Uh, Elijah, what are your thoughts on this, man? What are your thoughts? I mean, yeah, I think Colleen, like I said, we did the role playing session. So I know her body of work. I think uh, everybody got a chance to see she is a phenomenal closer, <laughs> real deal. But want to be able to kind of get to uh, the numbers here. Don't. Yeah. So basically um, on the report, I think she did a very good job with the report building. She connected with them. She liked them. She felt the. I felt a genuine vibe negotiations gave her a two. Um, like I said, I don't think she really drive. I liked how she started with the 90, but she didn't kind of really lock in with um, uh, that number. I felt she could drove the numbers, went back, got his number, went back and forth a little bit further versus just kind of giving above our MAO. Um, creative option. I think the creative option, I, I gave her one point for that because she did go for, it looks to be the novation. But like I said, I don't think that number she was doing was really going to make sense for the innovation. Maybe a seller finance or a JV might be a better play. Um, I just really felt like, um, and then like what Liam said, I don't feel like it's fully disclosed what the exit strategy is going to be when it's all said and done. Um, 
identifying the pain, I mean, handling objection. I felt like um, he, I gave her two points because she talked about some of the other offers and why he didn't go with some of the offers. So I gave her two points, but I feel that it could have been stronger. She could have, you know, uh, kind of maneuvered around those objections and, and which leads me to po uh, poking the pain, identifying the pain. Uh, she, I gave her two, uh, gave her two points for identifying the pain. Um, I feel she could have did a better job. Like what happens if this doesn't sell? Why don't you just finish it yourself? You're right there to finish it. Why not just finish and take the time? I feel like she could have dived in a little bit more on the pain. Cause listen, at the end of the day, no pain, no gain. Um, I gave her also another two for the verbal agreement. He did say yes. Uh, she got real close to getting a contract in place. But um, once again, I don't think the numbers really, I don't think the math is mathing. <laughs> right. And at the end of the day, like I said, it's cool for the strategy. But at the end of the day, our, our judges, we're real closers. We really do this. And those numbers didn't feel like it was going to work. Um, but I still think she did a phenomenal job as far as being a closer. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Keith, what's going on, Keith? What are we, what are we thinking, man? I think it's pretty simple, man. You know, I mean, first and foremost, you know, me personally, I would have got out of there. If this wasn't a closer Olympics, I probably would have spent my time. So I'm going to get uh, straight to the scores. So report, I gave her a three. You know, I know uh, Liam and Elijah, you know, they gave her fours. But to me, it wasn't really that much rapport the bill because he really was more in investor mode kind of you know what i mean but i did still want to give her credit for uh you know still building some type of report negotiations i gave her a three um she went back and forth with the guy on many different things many different numbers are thrown out there uh i like how she was putting them on hold getting stuff approved so i got to give her credit for that for sure um as far as creative option i gave her a three even though i don't like the numbers all the way uh that was on the deal but she did still pitch that she did, she did still get to that point where he even started talking about, you know, uh, signing the contract. So I definitely want to give her credit on that. Handling objections, she did an awesome job to me. I did give her a three on that uh, because he did kept talking about our buyers. She overcame him talking about the our buying situation, and she actually put herself in the running. And like I said before, though, he was looking to sign a contract. Um, identifying pain, I gave her a two because it wasn't really a lot of pain there, though. You know, he wasn't in a situation where he had to sell because he already was renovating the property. Uh, what we got next verbal. Uh, I gave her a two, even though I didn't like the numbers, she did still get a verbal. So I definitely want to give her credit for that. And of course, sign contract, uh, net ROI. Uh, we didn't get the opportunity to see those things, but I uh, definitely want to give her credit though. The most impressive thing real quick was overcoming the objections because he kept saying about the eye buying and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Byron. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. Listen, 16. All right, let's get to the overall points real quick so we can keep this party moving. Listen, you know, everybody knows, like I said before, you know, I'm, 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 I'm definitely a fan of Colleen at the end of the day. Uh, but I don't make the decisions. The judges make the decisions, okay? And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I feel like it was an overall fair assessment. Colleen, your thoughts? You're on mute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I definitely didn't like the number. I didn't like the number at all, but my fear was I wasn't going to get anybody else on the phone. So mm -hmm. I wanted to showcase a little bit of my skills. Um, I agree with the judges and, and the feedback. I love all the feedback. And again, I, I really didn't like that number, but um, I just wanted to stick in there because a lot of times when people say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that call or I wouldn't do that call. I'm the person that can get that, that deal uh, closed. But again, didn't love the numbers, um, but yeah, I did what I did. Well, listen, Colleen, shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Listen, it was amazing. But um, I, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm interested to see. Are you gonna call this guy back and see uh, how that all plays out? You know. But um, yeah, let's keep the party going, man. We got a couple more closers. Couple more closers getting ready to step up. Um, definitely took a lot of notes from what Colleen was able to do. But let's go ahead and get keep this party rolling, um, because we got we got us we got two more closers ready to go. We got two more closers ready to go. So I'm excited to see how this is gonna go with my guy Seamus or Scotty. Who shall it be? Let's get this party going. It's a 50 50 dice roll on this one right here, and it looks like this gonna be my guy Scotty Scotty B. Scotty B, what's going on, man? 
My guy, Scotty. Scotty, how you feeling right now? I'm good. What's going on, Byron? How you doing? Listen, man, I'm excited to see your skills, man. I'm excited to see your skills, man. All right. Let's, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Listen, Scott, you want to give the people a little bit of information about where you're from, okay, and how long you've been in the business? I am from Southern California. I'm sitting here in my office in uh, suburbs of Los Angeles, a city called Agora Hills. I've been in the business for, this is my third year now. And um, yeah, my, my older brother is a fix and flipper that uh, kind of showed me the ropes. He's also a wholesaler. So, uh, you know, I saw the type of money he was making while I was working a nine to five and it was inspiring. Uh, so, you know, I, I asked him how I could get into the business and he said, hey, you can find me private money or you can find me my next deal. Um, and I definitely didn't know how to find private money, but I've, uh, you know, spent my entire career on the phone. So I figured, let's give it that's a shot, cool. try to find you a deal. And I did. And that started right. my journey. And now here we are. Well, let's get to it, man. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time. Listen, it looks like 43 points is what you got to beat. Colleen got 40. Three points. Shout out to her. So listen, we're not going to waste a lot of time. Let's go ahead and get straight to the calls. Are you ready? I'm ready. So I Let's should uh, turn my volume down, right? Okay. Yes. Yep. Turn us down. Turn you up. Yes, yes sir. Volume's off, but you guys can hear me still, right? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. Okay. Right, word. Ooh, so real quickly, uh, when, when we did a live with RJ, the king closer of last year, he was saying this gentleman right here. Scotty gave him a run for his money. That came from our game. I feel like he's ready to go, man. He kind of relaxing, man. Like, yeah, that's way, way. Like, you know, let me just see. Like, just give me the ball. Let me just do what I do. Frames on, on, man. You got the frames on. You got the, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got the bat in the back. You know, I've 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 had the um I've had the unique experience of actually seeing Scotty in his office and um dude's legit. I've seen him close deals live. Yeah. Oh, he got the water bottle. Oh, he got the water, you see. He got Maybe the water. Got in, until he gets that first call. Uh-oh. We got to get him on mute. Oh, man. You're, you're muted. You got to unmute. Can't hear you. Ah. Uh, Who has his phone number? Let's text him. Text him. Uh, Liam, text him. Text him. Oh, actually, no, I'll text him. Damn. He, the best calls right now is he's killing it right now. You can tell he didn't touch his chin. <laughs> <laughs> the closest chin you already know. So, all right, so, yeah. I'll mute your phone. <laughs> the computer, he has the computer. Sorry, I was muted. My bad. You guys there good? There you go. Okay. All right, hey, sorry good. about that. My, I couldn't really hear you. You can hear me, Maxine. You good? Yes. All right, cool. So yeah, I saw that. Uh, I saw that you registered on our site, Cash Offer Options, about this six unit that you have over. I, I like I said, I have a, a rental property in Hazleton. I've had it for a couple of years, so I'm always looking to add to my portfolio. Uh, talk to me, man. Uh, how many units are occupied? All six. All six. How long have you had the property for? Uh, seven years, six years, seven years, something like that. Okay. And uh, are you, uh, what kind of condition is it in? Any of the units need work? Um, one, I, I renovated all the units except one that's had tenants in it the whole time. That one is, is just outdated. Yeah, and it's, it could use some paint and some floors in the future, but okay. all, the, all the units are in really good shape. What, uh, what had you, what, what made you buy this? Are you, are you a local guy or where do you live? I live in New York. Any, any specific reason why you're selling? I mean, it seems like a cash cow, no? Yeah, but I'm doing a large, I'm doing a larger uh, multifam right now in Kentucky, and I need to free up some money. Got it. Okay. Do you have a mortgage on the property? I do. Okay. Yeah, I see. Actually, uh, you record, you refied last year, 2022. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I see a pretty. From what I can tell, sometimes the system lies to me, but I can see a pretty low interest rate too, right? Yes, it's like in the in the fives. Or maybe the fours. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very low interest rate. How? What? What kind of? Uh, what kind of cash flow are you seeing from this property? Like, how much? How much are you getting per unit? Uh, total rent is forty two hundred, I believe, on this. 
And what's your payment every month? So PITI is uh, PITI is two thousand thirty-two. Okay. Any any of the units any of the units have any like glaring issues that need to be addressed? No. No. Okay. Um, what what are you looking to get for it, man? I mean, in multifamily, you know, like I do, it, it all comes down to the cap rate and cash flow. So what, you know, what are you thinking? Three sixty nine. Any, uh, how did you, <laughs> that's a very specific number. Were you talking to an agent or something or what, what, how did you come up with that number? Uh, that's, that's the, I mean, the six units are quite rare in the Northeast PA market. Okay. And, you know, fully renovated, even, even at, at that price, it comes out to about a 10 cap. Okay. So 369, it's fully occupied, fully occupied, getting 4,200 per month. Is that what you said? That's right. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure you follow, you know, or, or have heard of the 1% rule. I, that's the first indicator I see, and it definitely meets that. Uh, what I what I do see that, you know, like your, your mortgage, the 5% interest rate, you know, as well as I know, interest rates are through the roof. And if I get an investment loan, like a DSCR loan of some sort, my interest rate's going to be probably 8 to 11%. Um, so is this loan balance of 230 accurate? Yes. And this new multifamily property that you're getting, are you raising money for it, like a syndicate, or are you coming in with cash, or how are you funding that deal? I'm coming in with cash on it. Okay. How much do you need? Uh, about half a mil. Half a mil. Okay. So even even getting 369, 230, I mean, you know, you're still you're still gonna have to raise some money, or you have some additional funds. I'm assuming. The reason why reason why I ask is because I am interested. But if I go get my own loan at 369, uh, you know, my my interest rate is going to be higher so that my payment is going to be higher and eat into that cash flow. What so of the 4200 on the six units, I mean, that is let me just just take an average 4200 divided by six units. That's 700 a piece on average. Is that market rents or is, are they under rented or what? They're under rented. You could go up another three, four hundred on that place per unit. No, total. Total. So 4,500. Yeah. Okay. I'm just doing a quick mortgage calculator. If I pay 369, my lender makes me come in with 25% down on these deals. So 369 times 0.75. I'm looking at like a 276 loan at 8% on the, on the high, on the low end. My principal and interest is going to be right around 2,500 bucks a month. And then I have to add taxes and insurance. So, I mean, I'm going to be really close. You know, I want to make at least one, two, I mean, at least $200 a door, you know, net cash flow to make it worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so here's my question. I, one of the ways that I could do it is if we can potentially leave your mortgage in place, this is a 30 year loan, right? That's right. Okay. And I mean, you're an investor like myself, so I'm sure you're familiar with subject to the existing mortgage. Uh, I mean, I realized what you were getting at, but you know, we, we could, we, we could, I, I get it. Okay. Are you, you open? If you want to do, I'm open to subject two on it. Yes. Okay, cool. The big thing though, is if I get my own loan at 369, I'm only going to have to come in with 25% down which is a little under a hundred K. And even on these types of deals, I, I really don't like to come in with that, that much just cause I'm not like a mega millionaire, you know, I wish I was, but you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be able to spread my capital across different deals. You know what I mean? So what, you know, on the 139 that you're expecting to put in your pocket, so to speak, uh, on this deal, what is the absolute bare minimum I can talk you into taking down? And then maybe you can hold a second position deed of trust for the additional, because it seems like there's still going to be some room to pay you on a, a second position and still cash flow. So what's the absolute minimum you can make work in your pocket of that 139? 90. 90. Yeah. So, and okay, so here, let me pull up mortgage calculator again. You got kids right there or what? Yep. I got two little ones at home waiting for me to come home. Yeah, so I, I got two right here 
in the car with. <laughs> Sound, it sounds a lot like my daughter. I have a three and a half year old. That she, she sounds uh, she sounds young. Yeah, I got a I got a six year old daughter and a two year old son. Okay, so you're trying to build up the bankroll for your kids, man. Create some generational wealth, just like I am. That's the plan. What's this new multifamily that you got your eyes on? How many units? Forty. That's sick. Do you have a, a a partner for it, or is it just you? No, just me. I've already um I already purchased it. I uh when I purchased it on a short term bridge, I am getting out of it right now. It's a like a longer term loan. Got it. So your lender is not going to care that this one stays open, though, right? No. Okay. Um. All right. 90 is that the best i can talk you into with regards to a down payment can you do any better than that uh no probably not yeah because you know on 139 it doesn't really make sense to put a you know a second lean position for like 40k or 50k you know what i mean like we could but let me ask you this if i just come in with 90k and cash you out and take over the loan are we in business no no you need the whole 139 or can, can we, you know, what, what are you, <laughs> are you willing to negotiate a little bit there or what? I mean, 90K doesn't, it doesn't get it done. What gets it done so that we don't have to mess around with a second position loan? I mean, I'm, I'm down to look at that too. We can, but I'm just wondering if we could just be done. I write you a check. We keep the loan open. What's going to get it done. And how long, uh, how long do you want this uh, subject to sell the kind of forever? Well, I mean, you have a you, you have a beautiful thirty year note. Why would we yeah, Why would we do true. anything? I mean, it's an investment loan, so it's not going to go against your uh, DTI. So you know, unless you have a lender breathing down your neck trying to get this cashed out, I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? I don't. I don't okay. So I mean, I let it ride, baby. You know, it's we got thirty years. You just recorded it last year. Why not? You know, who knows if we're ever going to see five percent interest rates again? That's a good point. Um... So here, before you answer that, if we did a second position note for fifty thousand, like, you know, if I just paid off fifty thousand over. 10 years, that's like a 416 bucks a month. I'm just trying to keep, I'm trying to uh, make it cash flow. That's, that's why I, I go right to that. I want to make sure that I can put at least 200 bucks a door in my pocket. You know what I mean? Could you make that work? Can you ask your daughter for me if she can make that work? So I'll give I'll give it some thought. What what uh what would you say? Yes, I could do that. You know, because I get great salesman. I gotta tell you, my property manager. Her name is Rebecca. She's out of Hazelton. Uh, you're in New York. So how could I have her do like a quick walkthrough? I mean, are do your tenants know that you're selling? No, tenants don't need to know anything. <laughs> well, I want to get in, so how are you know what I mean? Like right. I can't buy it sight unseen. Um, yeah, obviously, no. My my property manager would, would set okay. it up as well. Okay. Um, are any of the tenants? Uh, I don't know. Like, are they all cool and like paying and res you know responsive and whatnot? A hundred percent. A hundred percent current. Okay. Delinquencies. All right. I well, just had I just had one turnover and tenant on the for the third floor moved in uh, actually yesterday. Oh really? Besides that, besides that, everybody's on term. How much was that turn to turn that unit? It was uh, it wasn't much. We did uh, I mean, they were building there for a while. I replaced like the shower. Okay. And some some flooring, some paint. Maxime, if I do a subject two and I put ninety k in your pocket, which is definitely more than I want to, but it's not out of the question. For the additional forty nine thousand, what is the longest? time period you can give me to pay that back where you would say yes i would do that you know because i years. three years yeah forty nine thousand divided by 36 months is 1361 a month and how much is your piti 2032 
1361 plus 2032 is 3393 per month and you're saying it's getting 4200 right now so 4200 yes. minus 3393 4200 minus 3393 is $807 uh, net cash flow divided by 6 units that's $134.50 a door and how many of these tenants are month to month where i could raise the rent I don't remember what's up, man. I have to get back to you on that. Okay. Um, you know, 800. I own, I own, I own like 80, like 130 units out there. So I don't, you know, I'm not up to date on where everybody's leases are. Dude, can we do more business after this one or what? I have, I mean, I have a four, I have, I have a total of 14 units right now. I'm trying to sell. So what made you pick this one first and foremost? This is your least favorite or what? No, I've owned this one the longest, but uh, this one has a lot of equity in it. Got Probably it. That. So it's just an equity play, trying to capture as much as you can for this 40 yeah. unit. Yeah. How did you pick this area? Because I just kind of stumbled on my Hazleton yeah. property, and it's been one of my highest performers. Where do you live? Cali? I'm in Southern California, actually. Yeah, so I live, I live in New York in a parking spot. Where I live in my condo is 150000 you know. You can buy us back in the day when I started investing in Northeast PA, you could buy eight units at that price. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, how long have you had these units for? Uh, years. Okay. I've been, I've been heavy. I've been heavy in that market for a long time. So before, we, before most people caught on, if we, if we do a deal here, uh, you open to talking about another one or what? I'm looking at like right now, unload 14 units. Do you want to talk about those right now, or should we do the deal on this one first? Uh, let's talk about those, but maybe not not right now. How about give me a call tomorrow morning? You don't have a few minutes to go over like uh, yeah, you got your hands full, man. I don't want to keep you too too waiting, but I, I really am interested. Are you you don't have access to your email right now, or what? Email I have access to yeah. Would it? I'm about to walk out with the kids. So okay. I'll All right. My email okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me here. You know what? I think I have it. Give me one second. Um, you know what? I don't. Hey, by the way, by the way, do you have uh, do your, do you pay utilities or do your tenants? Uh, all you so that one, all utilities except water, but water, water, and then the municipality is like 180 bucks. So you only pay water? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. I, uh, I really do. I really am interested. So why don't I get your uh, Why don't I get your email and then we can talk tomorrow when you're in front of your computer. Okay. Yeah, what is so my email? And then what time tomorrow can I put you in my calendar where you're going to have like an undivided 30 to 60 minutes to talk to me and see if we can get this thing done? Um, probably like 4 p.m. my time. Okay. And Max, last question. You, you serious about doing this type of deal? Um, I am. Okay. And and you're willing to work with me with the 90K down and the, the 49K repayment over 36 months? You can make that yes. work? You can make that work. Okay. All right. Uh, when do you want to close? I mean, ASAP. Okay. Always. You need the money. All right. Hey, Max, do me a favor. My name is Scott. I'm the owner of the company. Please, when we hang up, I know you have your hands full. Save my name and number. I want you to remember me when I call you. I don't want to have to start all over because I know you're getting bombarded with calls. All right? Yeah. Don't. All right. So I'll talk to you tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern. Why did you start in this market? Why did I? Yeah. Same reason. Same reason, man. Like I wanted to provide, uh, you know, freedom, financial freedom for myself and spend all the time in the world with my kids and not have to answer to the man. If you want to hear like a crazy deal, I did hear. I got, I bought a six unit for twenty five grand. Wow, how did yeah. that happen? Uh, I was a, it was a sheriff sale, like a peak of coal, but it was there. I scooped it up, two hundred grand in rehab, and it for just appraised for like seven hundred fifty thousand. Shit, do you that still have it? Absolutely. 
Damn. Did did you re did you uh did you refi it and pull your money out? Yeah, I, re, I, re, I refied it last year, but under like uh, I don't know four eight five or so. It was it was. Wow. It was well, I just I just want you to know that you know a cash deal. If I had to come in with cash, I'm nowhere near three seventy. You know that. That's probably a retail number. But if we can work out something creative here, where I take over your low interest, you you let me come in with as little down as possible. You let the additional equity ride for a few years so that I can still cash flow. I think we're gonna make a deal, man. All right. Okay. I'll um we'll get in touch tomorrow and I'll tell you about the rest of the portfolio. As well. One o'clock my time, four o'clock Eastern tomorrow. My name is Scott. Remember me, save my name and number. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. I got you. Thank all right, all right. Later, man. Okay, move on. That was a good call. That was a good call. I mean, he, he was, uh, that was, that was, what did he call it? He called it the gobbler. Yeah, RJ called it the point gobbler right there. The point gobbler round right there. That was a, a point gobbler call. You know, that's, that man was definitely on point. You know, he was, you know, you know, he talking that talk. You know, somebody in the comments did something real. A lot of people can't even talk to investors that way. The lingo, no, no. You know what I mean? Like, he talking to people type of talk. Hi, Donna. Yes. Hi, Donna. Good evening. My name is Scott. How are you? Fine. It's about the property in Lebanon. You registered on our website recently looking to get a cash offer. Is that correct? No. What is your website? Cashofferoptions.com. On Village Circle, you're not looking for a cash offer? No, and I did not register on that website. I am so sorry. I better let my webmaster know, and I will never bother you again. Okay? I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Smart I'm just man. going down the list. Yeah. Smart man. You know, that's just how it happens sometimes. You know, you get the phone calls. They forget that they signed up. You know, they're at night sleeping, you know, and they, they fill out forms. And they forget who they fill out forms with. Or sometimes a family member fills out the form for them. And they don't even know it sometimes. So sometimes the husband backdoor the wife or the wife backdoor the husband. <laughs> I give myself a six unit. Mm. That's right. You know, Scott's about to pick up a couple of houses on 90K alone. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice. Yeah. I need no. 90K. I, I, I'll say, I mean, that, that that creative option with the seller finance on the second, subject to with the creative option on the second, those are things that, the, those are real deals that are happening right now because the cash numbers aren't making a lot of sense these days. But if you could work it into the cash flow and the down payment in terms, we do a lot of that right now. So. All right. He's singing now. He's singing. He, 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 he feeling good now. You know what I'm saying? He got his. All right, see Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave giving out some gems over here. You're saying so. You know what I like, Elijah? Talk to me. He said he said that I got I'm getting myself a six unit. It ain't even just about showing out for the competition. Right, you trying to pick a wealth. Yeah, I'm like, like I'm I'm this. You know what I mean? You clearly. And anybody with the beard, you know, with the beard, the closer beard. You see how he's picking huh? the closer beard? That's yeah. how you know you're close. Liam, we gotta get your beard, bro. We gotta get you your beard game up. Bro, I, I fucking can't, man. I'm struggling. I'm trying. Time. Yo. Yeah, here. Take Can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'm not supposed to hear them. Your call has been forwarded to us. All right. Ten minutes. Got Wasting time, time here. Come on. Yeah, RJ and I, we are we're like flip flopped. He's got a lot on the lot on the chin, not a lot on top. <laughs> oh, RJ, man, what's up? <laughs> Shots fired, RJ. Shots fired. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I see. I I, I know that. Um, you know, it's really cool though. Nine minutes left. All right. Yep. Yeah. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. All right. Next. Let's see. I think what's quality is that he, he felt like um he had a very Luca Donich feel. He had a little very Luca vibe, you know, where um he went at his own pace. You know, he went at his own pace. You know, and and when when the seller can't rush you off the phone, they can't move you. You got your own pace, no matter what they double team you or not. That makes you a valuable closer. Moving at your own pace, um, yeah, I think that's strong. <laughs> All right, Jade. <laughs> hey, you get the beer transplants. All right. Hello, hey, Scott. Close. Scott. <laughs> Scott. Nope. No, we see the top. Of Yo, we're, we're gonna give away. We're gonna give away one free closer. The person you called has a voice. 
We're going to give away one free close Olympic replay for anyone who's seen um, RJ without a hat on. Uh, I want to see one picture without RJ. I have never seen RJ without a hat. That's what he said. He's like, nobody's seen me without a hat. I'm like, oh, snap. I want to sleep with it on. <laughs> sleep with it on. Yo, Hello, Cassie John. knows. Hey, John. Good evening. This is Scott. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. About the property on Edmar in Pine Bluff. You were on our website recently. How's it going, man? Oh, yeah. Good. Thanks, man. I think you're the first like person I've talked to. Nice, man. Did you uh, register on multiple sites or what? No, I, I don't know what it is. I got plenty of uh, text messages from people from Calif like uh, from a California number. Yeah. Like Chula Vista. And then I think I've spoken to a couple people from the Philippines and then – Oh, man. A couple other people. I don't know what it is, but you're like the first person from the U.S. I've spoken to about it. They keep telling me they're going to look at it and give me an offer and get back to me within 24 hours. Okay. The last two weeks. So two weeks? I got to talk yeah, to no, my no, webmaster. I yeah, just no joke. It's been like that long. I just got this lead today. So yeah, it's no. two weeks. My goodness. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, you got me now. I got you. I apologize for keeping you waiting, man. I definitely am interested. It's in uh, it's in uh, on Edmar Drive in Pine Bluff, right? Yeah, I actually have a whole portfolio. Um, I only filled out one with the Edmar one just to, to like get you in that area, I guess. But I do have a whole portfolio. I have about twenty three single family. So you're an investor like myself. Yes. What has you looking to dish them off? Uh, I'm going to a partnership dissolution. So I was actually just physically out there yesterday. I had a group of investors out there with me that were touring all of the properties. Oh wow. Um, is this the first one we should? Is this the first one we should be talking about, or what? Um, well, I mean, I have 23 single, six multi-families out there, and then a commercial building. So I don't know. If you're just looking for single families, but I do have a whole portfolio of uh, about 49 units out there. Are you Homestays Investments LLC? Homestays, what is it? I don't know. That's what I'm seeing on title. Homestays Investments LLC. Is that you? Yeah. So I hold it in. Yeah. The whole portfolio is held in three separate LLCs. But yeah, that is one of my companies. Okay. Uh, so it sounds like you have a partner that's going to need to sign off if you and I come to terms, right? Or is this one owned well, by... Go ahead. It's a silent partner. So all the LLCs are going with. Are you like the managing member where you have the right to sign off on a like a purchase agreement and the deed, so to speak? Or do you have to converse with your team? Nope, it's just me. Okay. So is this a uh, tenant occupied? It is, yeah. The lady at 1701, Edmar, pays $1,200 a month right now. Oh, nice. Did you uh, just get this in 2021, April, uh, May of 2021? On uh, June of 2022, I only had it for seven months. So wait, last Got, June. So gotcha. Yeah, I see that there was a transfer on death deed. So maybe that was like an interfamiliar a deal. Um, and then Brown Property Holdings. Are you Brown Property Holdings or are you Homestays? I'm Homestays. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, and so 1200 bucks a month. Um, let me just go ahead and take a look at this real quick. What are you, uh, what are you trying to get? I mean, I'm an investor too, you know, so I'm looking for a deal, but of course I know you're looking for a deal. So it's kind of one of those things where we both need to be happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, it's probably, I mean, I don't know what, how many you're looking to buy, but if you are looking to buy more, it probably would be better, especially if you're an investor to, to look at the whole portfolio on a per door basis because uh, the ARV for that Edmar house is probably around like the, I'd say like the 90 to 125 range, but the whole portfolio I'm selling at like 50 a door. Got it. So it would average out at a much better rate for an investor if you were looking to take over like a footprint in that area. You can't one off them though for 50 a door? Like I can't pick and choose type deal? I can't. And the reason I can't, I mean, I can't for 50 a door. And the reason is that the banks basically, I'm in a portfolio loan. Gotcha. The bank is going to make me pay 1.2 times. Right. And we bought that house for more than 50. So a lot of the houses, like what some of the houses are going to appraise at 130. Um, and some will appraise at 60. But it's just a better, there's still meat on the bones for all the houses, basically. It's is, just a matter of is your loan a 30 year or 20? No, it's a, 
It actually uh, it's amortized over twenty five, but it's comes due in twenty twenty six. Oh shit! So that's when, right when the interest rates started going up. Gotcha. So there's no option for like a creative type deal where we sub to it, like take it subject to the existing mortgage. Uh, yeah, you could. That's how a lot of these, uh, you know, I've been talking to a lot of investors. I've been out, out in Pond Bluff the last two weeks straight because people have been flying in to see them. Um, and yeah, but it's going to, I'm going to have to, I only have three years though, right? Before I have to refi is what I'm hearing. Right, exactly. I mean, but that's what I've been offering to these guys too. And that's what they're interested in doing is doing the same thing is taking it sub too. Mm. Okay. Um, how, uh, what, uh, if we, if I buy the portfolio sub two at 50 a door, is there any equity you're trying to cash out or is it just like a zero down sub two type deal? You're just trying to get out of the, the, get out of these is what is, is the that what tricky I'm... part is, is that, so we're selling the whole portfolio for 2.35. Okay. And the tricky part is, is that my partner's buyout is 650. So what I'm looking for is basically I have to have 650 down. There's about 1.35 left on the mortgages. Mm. That's at about 4.25%. So that brings us to 2 million. And then on the back end, I'm seller financing basically whatever at whatever Got interest it. rate amortized over however many years, you know. How much would that be that you're carrying back? Um, just roughly. Sounds like well, if it's five million, million. We sell, we're selling for two point three five. Then I'd be carrying roughly three hundred thousand on the back end, which is negotiable, also. But you need six fifty down. Exactly. That's the that's the sticky situation for Got a it. handful of people. Yeah, the six fifty down is going to be tough. I'm I'm going to have to bring in you know I'm going to have to bring in some investors because I personally don't have the six fifty down that I could uh, allocate to this deal. I'm trying to. You know, I'm trying to spread my my uh, funds across a multitude of deals. You know what I mean? We just started talking, but I get, a, as you can imagine, I get a, a ton of leads every single month. So, um, you know, normally I'm looking for like a, you know, a, a really good cash offer in, you know, a distressed situation where I can get the house for pennies on the dollar, force a bunch of equity and then, you know, make a bunch of money on the back end and then rinse and repeat on my next deal. On a deal like this, this would be a good buy and hold, it seems. Um, you know, especially if these are getting 1200 bucks a door and I'm, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting them for 50, 50,000 each. I mean, that's, that's some pretty decent cash flow. Are you bummed that you have to sell them or what? Yeah. Um, I'm not, I mean, not all of them are getting 1200. That's our highest renting house right now, but, um, they're getting anywhere between like 400 something all the way up to 1200, depending on the house, the area, the unit for the multifamily. Um, but because I bought them, so recently i am kind of bummed that i have to sell but the guys that came out yesterday are kind of like entertaining a uh, partnership where they buy out my partner for the 650 and just kind of retain me and then i don't have a seller carry on the back end john which, uh, let me just ask you i'm sorry to cut you off i'm just uh i actually have another appointment in a couple minutes that i get want to get to but i just wanted to ask you this it just came to me how bad are your partners wanting to dissolve because if the answer is really bad maybe they'll take less than 650 well, they are not, so they're, it's hard to say, but they're not, uh, it's not a fire sale. They're basically like, look, don't, don't do this. They just want their money back from what they invested, which is basically they invested the down payment and some cash to renovate it. Got it. So if it's, a, if it's an all cash, like if you buy the whole thing out, I could probably just get you down to the 2 million and forget the 300,000 because that would just basically make me break even. The mortgages would be gone and my partner would be paid off and I'd be able to continue to move forward. Right. So that would be a way to shave off 300,000 right there is if you came in and you're like, look, I'll give you 2 million cash. Damn. Oh man, that right there was some powerful calls. Oh man, that was a lot of education in that. Listen, that was a lot of education. So the judges are currently scoring. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think. So RJ Bates said that that was a point <laughs> gangbuster, basically, right? So here's the deal. That right there is the reason why you watch the Closers Olympics. This is that call is, is, is the primary reason why you watch because you got a chance to see some high level creative finance deals taking place. Okay. So, are the judges done? Are the judges done? Because I want to speed this thing up as fast as possible. Yes. Yo, yo. What's going on, Liam? What What's am going I going on, baby? What are you, you know, let's get straight to it. 
Okay, rapport. I gave a four out of five. He had that first guy laughing. He talked to the investor, talked. There's, there's, there's credible rapport and there's relatable rapport. He was super credible. Four out of five. Negotiations, five out of five. I don't think I could do it much better when you're working with this complex of numbers. He's running numbers on the fly. That's, that's, that's hard to do. He did that well. Creative option, I give it a five out of five because he's got that first guy on a very likely creative deal. I think he's going to get that one closed. Just needs time to take a look at it. Beautiful, handling beautiful. objections, I would do a three out of five because these aren't very motivational driven things where you're handling these tougher objections. This is a much more straightforward thing. So I think in a different opportunity, we could have seen more. So three out of five on that for identifying pain again, three out of five um, on the second one is where he got those points, figuring out what's going on with that deal, why he's trying to ditch the partners, what's going on with that. You know, he's trying to take, you know, pennies on a dollar. What's up with that um, for the verbal agreement on that first one is where he had that price locked in. And so I gave that one a two out of five. Um, because, you know, there could have been more, it could have been a lot more solid. You know, I think there's still going to be some negotiating on the back end, but he did get to him to, to, to softly agree to a price. So that's what I got. And of course, signed a net ORI, zero. Total score. What was your total score on that? That comes out to 22. Listen, you just heard from the experts. 22 points. That was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Listen, we got Keith up next. Keith is up next. Let's go ahead and get Keith up here um, so we can get the score for my guy. Oh, Elijah. Hey, we're Elijah. here. Hey, it's all right, Keith, Elijah. Hey, you know, we're all family, we're all family we're around family. here. We're all family. Let's get to it, man. What are your thoughts on this, man? What's the score? Phenomenal. Like I said, I mean, I love closers. I love the creative structure. And guys like this are built for recessions. They He's going to clean up. He's going to eat up during a recession. But let's get right to the points. Um, on building rapport, I think he did a phenomenal job with the building rapport. I gave him a three. Um, wanted to add values. Talk to me, man. What one percent rule? Talk about the kids. I like that. Um, on that first call, negotiations. I gave him a four. Uh, what made you buy this? What do you? Uh, I mean, what do you think you, you you're gonna do with this? What's what's the absolute minimum you could do out of that one hundred and thirty nine thousand? Asked him multiple times. Got it down to ninety thousand. And then um, I really like the um, creative options. I gave him a four. He, he went to subject two. He went to a seller finance note on the second. Um, he got creative on the portfolio options. And it's, a, it's really, really strong. Really strong what he did on the creative options. Um, handling objections. As William said, I gave him a two. These weren't extremely... Um, motivated as a per se. I mean, they were motivated, but they didn't have a lot of different objections they're throwing at him. They were kind of work with some of the numbers he had. Um, how did you get that? Um, when he, he did push back on some of the realtor numbers uh, that they were getting. So how do you get that number from the realtor um, on identifying pain? I gave him a two. Once again, uh, what made, what makes you want to sell this property? It looks like it's a cash cow. Um, how did you get, how did you, uh, how much do you need for your multifamily? So he did poke the pain. I gave that a two. And the verbal agreement, um, he, he got the, he got him to say yes on the creative option. It looks like he might be getting both of those out of the way it's sounding, and he might picking up another six unit. I gave him a three for the verbal agreement. Um, so I think he definitely phenomenal job, phenomenal job. It looks like the the numbers look good. Uh, um, how he operated, I think he, I just think he did a really solid solid job on this one for sure. Wow, thank you so much for that, man. We're well into the twenties. Both judges have scored well into the twenties. We have Keith up next. He's gonna let us know exactly what his thoughts were on this particular call. Um, I, I can't wait to see the experts are speaking. The experts are speaking. So we've all we, we're in the twenties. We're in the twenties on literally um, both of these. So my my point my point was sorry was my point was eighteen. My point was eighteen. Oh, your so, point was eighteen. Oh, round it up. Round it up. Round it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, cool deal. Let's go ahead and get Keith up hey, next. I thought he went crazy. You know what I mean? I thought he went crazy. So um, first and foremost, real quick, and I'm going to fly through it. He started talking a different type of lingo a lot of people can't talk from, first and foremost. And uh, I, I, I think that, you know, he was definitely educating everybody that's listening right now, you know, the way he was negotiating the deal. So uh, to me, Bill Report, I gave him a five on that. I feel like that he did everything he was supposed to do with that. You know, he compared his daughters. I feel like he stopped at the right times. He built rapport at the right times, and he moved on at the right times. He didn't stay too long. He didn't stay too quick. So I feel like he was in and out, got out of there. He did what he could. He maximized everything that he could. Negotiations. I gave him another five. I'm sorry, though. He was talking different. Like, the way he was negotiating the second lien on that multifamily deal, 
Like, a lot of people wouldn't even would have thought that far and wouldn't be able to do that, though. So I definitely wanted to just, you know, give him his flowers on that part. Uh, creative option, again, I thought he, I thought he did I thought he did well. You know what I mean? I, th- I gave him a five on that because he was very extremely creative. I mean, I feel like he's still – he's going to he's gonna get that deal signed. If he had more time, I feel like he will definitely get that deal. So I don't have no doubt in my mind. He even brought in his property manager. He even, even said he had enough instinct to say, hey, listen, I can't buy this thing outside on the scene. I got to have somebody walk it. He mirrored that investor the way that he should have did it, and that guy didn't have no doubt if he really bought multifamily properties. Um, next thing we got is uh, handling objections. I think he did very well because um, you got to think about it. Like Even on that first call that he had, I feel like that it wasn't an easy call because at first he had, you know, he was at the 360 sum. He brought the mortgage calculator. You know, he start he start overcoming objections when it came to the number at the 90. He had to get creative with that. Like it was a lot going on into that. You know what I mean? Uh, identifying the pain. Um, I gave him a four on that. You know, I feel like he did a good job at that, though. You know, the pain, whatever pain that was there, you know, he was asking, you know, what made you want to sell? You know, he was, you know, because you got to think about it like this. A multifamily investor pain is going to be different than a single family person. Fact. So these are real investors that's going on. You know what I mean? So I feel like yeah. the pain that was there, he was trying to take it off their hands. Um, verbal agreement. Um, I gave him a four because I do feel like he's going to lock up that six unit. Signed contract. I gave him a zero. Net ROI, I gave him a zero. So I feel like this guy maximized to the, to the best of his ability of what he could have done. I can't think of something he couldn't have done other than wow. the term. Listen, highest score yet. Highest score yet at 27. So let's just a real, real quick recap. So we got a total of 67 points. Total of 67 points. Listen, Scott, I want to know what your thoughts were on this particular deal. Was it anything that you feel like you could have done better, right? And how do you feel about your performance today? Obviously, the highest score so far in this competition so today, what's your thoughts? I need 90K. <laughs> I need 90K for my new six unit. So anybody wants to be my private lender on that deal, hit me up. Hit I, me know up. R- I know RJ wants me to go for the close and get the contract signed, but I actually am legitimately interested in that deal. I didn't want to push the guy and piss him off. He already, you know, I can hear his daughter in the background. So I'm going to be calling him tomorrow, one o'clock my time. I'm going to try to lock that up and I need 90K. Um, so that's, that's what I think. Um, you know, the second guy, uh, I don't know how good that deal is. I got to get, you know, you know, I mean, it might be a good deal. I don't know. I got, I guess I'll talk to him and, and, uh, look at the portfolio. It's kind of out of my wheelhouse. If you want the truth. Plus I don't have any rentals there. I was not lying. I really do have a rental that performs very well in Hazleton. So I'm legitimately interested in that six unit. Um, and I think you should lock it up, man. I definitely think you should lock it up, man. Listen, I just want to say, man, thank you, thank you, thank you for that masterful performance. But we got to keep the ball rolling. We got to keep the okay. ball rolling. Hey, man, thank you for that. Listen, the next competitor that we have coming up is going to be my guy, Seamus. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten a chance to, 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 to talk to this guy, right? Um, I know who this guy is. So I'm excited. Can we get my guy Seamus on the screen? Let's get this thing. Let's get this party rolling, man. Listen, I want to see some more closing. That was a massive conversation that we was able to get just witness just now. The highest points on the board so far. So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's Let's go. We're going to have Seamus up in just a second. But before, I want to show you guys what we're all about. You see, everybody's been connecting with these high quality leads. And where are they coming from? Well, I'm about to show you guys. Take a look at this. We have this beautifully built platform right here called iSpeedLead.com where any one of you guys right now can hop on and buy leads in your market at any time. We're generating these all day, every day, hundreds of them a day in all 50 states. So take a look right here. You can come on. See right here in Independence, Kansas. This guy's moving close to family. He's open to discussing creative financing. It's owner occupied. He's owned the property. He's up to date on his mortgage. You get to see everything about it before you buy it. Ooh. This is in all 50 states. Now, if we sell you a lead that for some reason is either misrepresented, so they said they filled something out that maybe they said we're not on the MLS and they're on the MLS, or they said, um, you know, I'm not a wholesaler, but it's a wholesaler who submitted it. Or if they're already under contract with a wholesaler, by the time you call them, we have a refund policy in place. We want to 
we want to try to guarantee as best as we possibly can in this industry that you are going to get deals because you get to see what you're buying beforehand. And then afterwards, if it's not as represented, get your money back. But this platform has been changing the game. We have about 15,000 people on board right now. So you guys should be on board as well. So to join, just go to ispeedtolead.com. And Gene is going to be putting a coupon code in the description for all you guys to be getting a crazy good discount um, for the next couple hours. But that's all I got to say. Let's keep it rolling, baby. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, man. Let's get straight to it, man. Let's get straight to it. Listen, we got my guy Seamus coming up. Uh, where's my judges? Let's get to it. Listen, I'm excited. Um, let's get this party started. Oh, Seamus, put on, put on, sir. <laughs> my guy got the red cap to the back. How you feeling, Seamus? I'm feeling blessed, brother. I'm feeling blessed, excited, you know, nerve wracking and I'm going last, but it's all good. I get to see what I'm going up against. Uh -huh. and, you know, uh -huh. Congratulations to everybody. Everybody competing here. It's just a lot to do this. Let's go. Many go time, sir. All right, let's go. It's gonna be a good. Let me know if y'all can hear me. Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. We hear you just fine, man. You sound great. Make sure you mute us, though. And make sure you mute us so we don't mess your your, your swag up, man. And see, and that's another thing too. When you're listening oh, to these calls, to when you listen to these calls, remember your time doesn't start until until he actually talks to his first person. So you got time. Man, uh, remember, guys, Shame has got eighty six percent of the votes. For people who said who they thought was going to win, a lot of a lot of team shame is out here. A lot of team shame show love. You know, he's definitely a go giver in this community. You know, but it, it, when somebody ball out like that, you know, Keith. You know, you've been there. You see somebody ball out. Your call has been forwarded you see, to an. Make sure you sit up a little straighter. Make sure you tighten up your 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 shirt a little more. Yeah. You're like, oh, you know. No, nah, no, nah, absolutely for sure. I'm looking forward to this though. I want to see how you rock out. And I like I see Scotty over there uh, raising some capital for his deal <laughs> while closing deals. You gotta respect Your that. Your call has been forwarded Scotty. to an automated voice messaging system. It's Kyle. Kyle, hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, Cal. This is our Seamus with Magneto Homes. I was giving you a call because it looks like you submitted a property online on Riverview that you were potentially looking to sell. Are you still looking to sell that? Yeah, it's for sale. It's for sale? Okay. Is it currently listed? Yeah, it is. It is listed? Okay. What uh, what, you, what is it listed for? Uh, 340. 340. Okay. How long has it been listed? Uh, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. What kind of traction are you getting on it? Uh, we're having people come and look. Uh, you... We've had a couple offers. Uh, one we declined, and then actually there's been three offers. Okay. And then the other two were contingent upon the sale of their houses, which fell through. Got you. Got you. Got you. The the pending offer that you had, what uh the offer that you got, what did you get uh for that offer? Uh, it was. Uh, full price with three percent realtor fee, and then ninety five hundred in closing. So basically, it was like a three twenty offer. Around three twenty, and it looks like it looks like this property. Uh, you just purchased it about two years ago, correct? Uh, yep. All right. What well, uh, what's the reason you're looking to sell it? Um, we're not gonna use that one as a rental. Oh, so it's a rental. No. No, we lived in it. It's just we have other rentals. We're just not going to use that one as the rental. We're just going to sell that one. Gotcha. Uh, what's the reason you're not going to use that one uh, for a rental? Um, I don't really need to rent out a five bedroom. I, I'd make just as much money renting out a three bedroom, one bath. Yeah, that's going to be a two bedroom, one bath. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, so you're definitely looking getting uh, looking at getting close to retail for this property, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. Question. Uh, if we were able to get you close to that price, how much time would you give us to, uh, to pay it off? Um, 
Meaning, like what? What do you mean by paying it off? Basically, in, in situations when homeowners have properties that sit on the market and they, they sit on there longer than they want them to, uh, they basically uh, become the bank where we would put a deposit down on oh, the yeah, property. that's not going to work. It's that's, not going to work? If, no, that wouldn't work because of, I would just rent it out at that point. Gotcha. I don't, need, I don't need you guys to rent it out for me and pay me monthly payments. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. I, I definitely want to be transparent. We look for properties more so that need work. Uh, and this looks like the property is in great condition and uh, and you have it listed. So probably on this one, we wouldn't be the buyer for you. Uh, but I'll definitely take your information down. I have it here. And if anything changes in the future, uh, I'll give you a call back. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a blessed day. All right. Thanks. Okay, Keep it moving. I think that was a smart move. Yeah, on to the next one. That guy's house is in too good a condition. He's not motivated enough. He doesn't really know what he wants. It's on the market. The body there. Yep. You know, you gotta cut it. Yeah, you gotta, you know, when they talk about this on the market, entertain them, overcome, try to overcome objections for a couple minutes. Get up out of there. Hello, Michael. Yes. Michael, hey, how you doing today? I'm good. Good. Uh, Michael, this is Seamus with Magneto Homes. I was reaching out Hello? to you with Magneto Homes. What about it? I was reaching out to you because it looks like you submitted a property online that you're potentially looking to sell over there on uh, Crossing. Are you still looking to sell that property? Man, I'm tired of wasting time, child folks. What do you mean wasting time? Away. No, understandable, understandable. So it, it looks like you probably begin a lot of phone calls, correct? Yes, two minutes. <laughs> uh, have you been getting just a lot of low offers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I done did an addition on his house. I done did an addition. I done added three rooms to this house. And a large deck in the back. I'm pretty familiar with that area over there. Uh, what what got you looking to sell a property? Say that again. What got you looking to sell? I got another property. I got three more properties. Oh, you got three more. Are you trying to sell any of the other ones? No. No, you're going to keep those? They down in the country. Where they, where I'm, they running into the country. What, what part of the country? I'm down in uh, Bus County, Flow Village. Georgia. Gotcha. Yeah, we got properties in Thomasville and Macon. Uh, so do you have a few minutes to just talk to see if we could potentially get you an offer? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, can you confirm the bedrooms and bathrooms on the property? Got two and a half. I got, got two. Uh, I got two full baths and a half baths. Okay, two fulls. And it's easy. You want to turn the third one into a full bath? It's easy. Okay. It's right by the lunch room. Two and a half. Okay, perfect. What, what's the, you can make it three easy. Gotcha, gotcha. What's the approximate square footage of the property? I don't know. I really ain't getting square footage. All right. I know I add it on. I add on about a thousand two. Yeah. It looks, I, I like to just confirm everything. It looks like it's around 1,600 square feet, so we're just going to go with that. Uh, no, it ain't that. If, say, if, it, if it's 15, add a thousand to it. Oh, so you're looking at about 2,500? So you added, uh, did you, you, you did the addition? Did you add it? Did you finish the basement or was it additional? There ain't no basement. I added, I added the rooms on to the house. Gotcha, gotcha. Are you into uh, construction? Yes. Oh, okay. What do you What do you do with construction? I own some big houses, remodel bathrooms, do kitchens. Okay, okay. What areas do you work in? And the reason why I asked is because we flip around Atlanta. Around Atlanta. Around Atlanta. What do you specialize in? What do you specialize in? Do you like framing, flooring, electrical? Installation. Installation. Gotcha. So I may have some business for you. I may have some business for you because we have a couple of flips going on in the city of Atlanta down there in uh, Oakland City. And we're going to need to get. Uh, I'm with the area. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always on the west side. 
Yeah, we just sold a property over there in Oakland City, and we really didn't want to sell the property because they built a couple of brand new homes, half a million dollar homes that we know with Tyler Perry Studio and everything that's coming right there, that there's going to definitely be uh, a lot of opportunity. So we definitely didn't want to sell that one, uh, but we did it. When you Now, when you added this addition, did you update the, the kitchens and the bathrooms? I did a little something. Okay. What did you do to the, what did you do to the kitchens? I just did the backsplash. Backsplash, okay. Backsplash. I ain't got no marble countertops, but it's an easy piece of job. Yeah, for sure. We just put uh, countertops in the property right around the corner from uh, that Oakland property. All right. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. We do purchase properties cash. In most cases, the properties that we purchase are properties that have to be fixed up. But we do have other options that we can help homeowners that are looking to get rid of their property. So it's just not a cash offer. We present, you know, several options. Uh, every property doesn't qualify for an offer. So that's why I kind of got to ask you these questions. I know it's nerve wracking because I probably get 20 phone calls a day and I'm not even selling my house. So I completely understand. Now, the thing about when we present an offer, uh, we purchase the property as is. You don't have to do nothing to it. You don't have to fix nothing. You don't even have to flush the toilets. And you'd be surprised what <laughs> some tenants will leave us uh, in the toilet. So it's a cash as is offer. Uh, let me ask you a question. It seems like, you know, you're in the construction, you, you know what you're doing. What price were you looking to get for this property? I've been for a while. I was looking at least get three, three, fifty. Three, three fifty. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, uh, oh, yeah. if you, if you don't mind me asking, where'd you come up with that number? I told you I didn't ask it in addition. They already offered me. Uh, they already offered me two two twenty five and you, fifty, and the addition ain't even dying on paper. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, uh, you came up with the fifteen. Now, when you did the addition, it had been permitted. Oh, it was it's, permitted, but it ain't dying down. It ain't showing up when you put the address in. Yeah, because what I'm looking at is uh, I'm looking at around fifteen hundred square feet, and that's basically where we're getting numbers from. Uh, that addition definitely uh, makes a difference. I don't know how much of a difference it makes. Uh, so let me ask you a question. So anything north of that two hundred thousand mark, you're not looking to you're not looking to entertain, correct? No. No, not at all. Okay, all right. Actually, I put money into the addition. Okay, okay. Now let me let me ask you a question. If we were able to get you close to that number. How much time could you give us to uh, pay you off for the property? Explain yourself. So basically, in some situations where the homeowner wants more than we can pay and our cash offer is, is definitely way off from what they want, we actually can take over payments on a property with a down payment and then make monthly payments on that property. Does that sound like something you would entertain? No, I ain't entertain that. No? Okay. okay. All right. I got another goal to Gotcha, now, gotcha. Sending me somebody money. I could have been put a house on my other property. Gotcha, gotcha. What that two twenty five offer? Why didn't you take that? I didn't take it. Now, why so, should I take it? You said why should you take it? I'm not in the market to sell, really. Oh, so you de so you're not you're not really even looking it's to like sell. I'm like, oh, let's sell the house. Your wife said that. I said no. Oh. I'm not in that type of market. Gotcha. I'm not even in that type of situation. Okay. So this this is a problem. So so if you don't sell it, it really doesn't make a difference. It don't matter. Gotcha. I gotcha. From a grandkids. Okay. Understandable. Uh, I'll be just completely transparent with you. You know, I uh, I can't get nowhere near that number. I don't I don't I don't want to waste your time. I know you've been getting low ball offers. Uh, uh, so I definitely. I uh, I, I definitely uh, I wish you the best of luck. And if if anything changes, you have my number. You can reach out to me. I will. Thank you. All right. You have a blessed day. All right. 350. ARV, bro. ARV was 220. Right, we got. We got. His walls are gold. Yeah, I think it's super important too. You know, and when you're closer here. Job. Identify the pain, find out. I mean, he came off not motivated. Yeah, yeah. He did that first two, three minutes. Is that the suspect, not a prospect? 
You know, are they serious? Are they just curious? You got to kind of feel that because, man, these, th- these are time vampires. They'll suck all your time away. And, and as they suck up your time, you still got bills to pay at the end of the month. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those type of people that. Hello, can I speak to John? Speaking. John, hey, how you doing? This is Seamus with Magneto Homes. How you doing today? Good. Magneto Homes? Yes, sir. Yes, so just like the movie, Marvel. You like Marvel? I don't watch too much TV, but okay. anyway, I, I, yeah, Marvel's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I like the superheroes. I grew up on them. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the purpose of me calling today, it looks like you submitted a property online that you were looking to sell on 104th uh, East. Are you still looking to sell that property? Uh, I'm interested to see what kind of offer. Okay, okay, okay. So do you have a few minutes to talk? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, you know, the properties we do put into our portfolio, we're going to do one or two things. We're going to renovate them and sell it, or we're going to fix them and rent them out. We don't purchase every property. Uh, it just doesn't qualify if, it, you know, if it's not in our criteria. Uh, do you have, a, like, do you have a, a pen handy or a pencil? Yeah. All right, I'm going to give you some information just in case we get disconnected. Mm-hmm. My name is Seamus, S-H-A-M-U-S. Last name is G-O-S-S. Gosh, hold on. Yes, sir. S-H-A-M. U-S. O-U-S. Yeah. Huh? G-O-S. U-S. Just U-S. M-U-S. Seamus Goss. Just like the wrestler, but I'm older. I have my name first, so, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, last name is G-O-S-S. The name of the company is Magneto Home Solutions. Okay. And our phone number is 866-868-3523. That's our toll-free number. Could you read it back? Say again, 866-868-3523. And that's our toll-free number. Can you read it back just so I can make sure you got it? I just read it back to you as you were saying. Okay. All right. I'll do it again. 866-868-3523, right? You got it. Yes, sir. And our website. Can you repeat that back to me to make sure you heard it right? (laughs) You got it. 866-868-3523. You got it. You got it. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, And our website is Magneto Homes. What's the best Uh, email for you? Best what? Email for you. I'm not going to give that out unless I, you know, hear something I want to hear, you know, with this conversation. Okay. All right. Perfect. So what I what I like to do is I just like to uh, ask you a couple of questions. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, let, let's start out with uh, what got you looking to sell a property. What say again? What got you looking to sell? Well, I'm in the business. I, I buy, sell, rent. Really? You know, I, I have a few properties. Uh, I got one I'm interested in selling. With, is is that the one we're talking about, or do you have yeah. others? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So uh, is it currently rented? Yeah. Yeah. It, okay. It's in good condition, too. And it's a long term tenant. She's been there over eight years. Eight years. OK. Uh, what is she paying in rent? Eight hundred a month. Eight hundred a month. OK. Uh-huh. Eight hundred a month. Uh, how many bedrooms and bathrooms does the property have? Three bedrooms, one and a half bath. Three, one and a half bath. Okay. Okay. Uh, Can you tell me a little bit about the condition as far as like the bathrooms and the kitchens? It's in good condition. It does need a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, maintenance work, not much, but uh, other than that, it's it's in pretty good condition. What what type of maintenance work are we talking about? Well, in the one room in the the master bedroom, at one time the roof leaked and uh, it was, (laughs) it was repaired. It's got a brand new roof. You know, it doesn't okay. leak anymore, but there's a small hole in the ceiling where it used to leak in a stain. So it needs to be spackled and painted, the ceiling. Other than that, gotcha. it, it's pretty good. Okay, like the painted. Uh, and that's pretty much the only thing that needs to be done to it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. And then maybe the, the switch in the bathroom, the uh, the box is kind of hanging out of the wall. It's got to be, you know. Uh, Are we talking about the outlet? Not the outlet, the switch itself that you turn off and on. Got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it just needs a couple clips on it, and you push it back in the wall, and it'll hold it in place. I just never got around to doing it. Got you. Either one of those things. That's it. I mean, the minor, very minor. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, mm-hmm. What were you looking to get for the property? I'm asking ninety-three. It's worth over that. Ninety-three. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, how did you come up with uh, with that number? Because uh, I, I pay attention to what the going rates are in the neighborhood. Gotcha. And it's, it's actually going, it, it's appraised it more than that. But that's that's what I'm looking to get. Did you, did you do an appraisal on it? I go by uh, what I find on the internet. I do my own research and I see what houses are going for in the neighborhood. Got you. When you when you did your when you did your research, what did you come up with? Uh, it was over ninety five thousand. It was like about one hundred and ten. Got you. Okay. And how soon are you looking to sell? Uh, I don't know. Within thirty days, if uh, you're interested. Got you. Uh, question: Is there anybody else that would have to be part of the decision making process to sell this property, or is it just you? No, I own it. Okay. All right. There's no significant other that might be mad and send me. Nah, okay. Uh, All right. I'm single. Okay, all right. Because I know if I do anything and my wife doesn't hear it, oh man, I'm 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 in the doghouse for the night. Nah, I'm I'm the sole proprietor with my business, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, okay, give me one second. I just want to pull up. Uh, so let me ask you a question. If we were able to get close to that number, is this something that you're willing to get done today? Address. Uh, well, I would consider it, but I'd have to hear the number first address okay all right uh all right i'll tell you i'll tell you what we what we'll do to get that number we run a cma that's a comparable market analysis and that basically is just going to give us information on what the property is currently selling for in that uh -huh. area and that's kind of uh -huh. how we gauge it right now it's you know it's kind of crazy in the market right now we got four or five properties that we took like fifty thousand dollar hits on so we're, we're uh -huh. being really really you know careful on, uh -huh. on what we purchase. Uh, uh -huh. Let me ask you a question. Would you be able to hold on for one minute? I just want to run. I, I sent the file back, but I just want to see if they got a number and I'll come back and, and I'll present that offer to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so good. You got the comps set over. We're, we're getting comps on them. We're getting comps on it. The faster you send them to us, the better, but. Once we get these numbers run, maybe we can start trying to work in two-way uh, verbal, get get deeper into negotiations. That's what I want to see. I want to I want to see how he's going to run some price negotiations here. But we got to get prices out the door first. I wonder what the MAO is on this. All right, that's what we're, we're going to see the MAO. We're going to see kind of where I mean. Paul, are you there? Yeah. Okay. You you have that pen and paper. Can you write this down for me? Okay. VW one seven three. 1434 i'll tell you what that is that's a virtual withdrawal number what that just means is every time we present an offer those funds get allocated and put into account and can only be used for that property for 24 hours now you can say kick rocks it doesn't make you know it doesn't work for me and it's no hard feelings when we could part ways as friends mm. uh, so with that being said the offer that i got approved for the cash offer i got approved for was $69,173, and that's cash, 14-day close. How does that work for you? 69000 that's a little low. 69000 cash? Cash. We cover closing cost. We cover everything. You really don't have to do anything. Okay. All right. And you'll accept that with the tenant, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll let you know how I feel about that. That's a little low right now. I'm not... You know, you're the first offer that came by, and you know that that leaves a lot of money on the table. I mean, like I said, it's going for 110,000 in, in the neighborhood. That's you know about the average, but 69. You know, so it's, it's an offer. It's not the greatest offer. I mean, it's it's like uh, 40,000 below. So let, so let's talk about it. Uh, what uh, what number could we come up to? The 90 is a little bit hard for us because we're going to have to get in there and still do some work. And uh, and Not once we much, but. okay, but we'll still get in there and, and do a little bit of it, maybe paint, carpet, appliances, and stuff like that. But the tenant mm -hmm. is going to be in there for a while. So what's a number we can meet halfway to get this done today? Because I can actually send you the agreement and get this over to a uh, title company. Well, I was asking ninety three. I mean, something in the middle. Okay. If I was willing to go any lower, I mean, absolute lowest that I, I'd have to say. 83 83 yeah that's in the middle 
All right. Oh. Right there. That's a little that's a little tight. Can you do can you do 75? No. Uh -uh. No. No. Nah. I, I, the best I'll do is, is uh, 80. 80 even and that's it. Other than that, I don't even want to be bothered. All right. If 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 we if I can get them to agree to 80 and I send you the agreement, is this something that we could get done right now? Well, listen, right now I got things going. You're talking. I don't know where you at. Uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Do you have offices in Jersey? Yeah, yeah. That's why you can you can actually look at our website. I gave you the information. You can look us up. Well, you'll actually get an email with our company commitment okay. that just tells you a little bit about what we do. And the reason why I asked if this is something that we could get done today is because mm -hmm. we do have funds to purchase one or two properties. And there's mm -hmm. others here. There's like 10 of us here giving offers out. And mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if we could get it done today, those funds are in your account. OK. All right. Uh, Let's do it, John. Let's do it. Hey, this, listen this, to me. This is cash. You know, it, ain't, it ain't all that quick. You know what I mean? I got other things going on. You caught me in the middle of something. What I catch? Uh, what I catch you doing? Businesses. Uh, I'm just giving you. Uh, you know, if you can agree to eighty thousand sight unseen, it's a done deal, and then we're going to have to come up with a date to go to closing. Okay. That's all there is to it. So. So you'd have to come to you'd have to come to an agreement with that, and, and knowing that you're going with the tenant occupied property and they don't want to leave. Okay. Okay. And, and you know, so if I could get them to agree, the best I could do for you, if I can get them to agree on 80 and if I send yeah. you the agreement right now, is this something that we could get done? Yeah, that's definitely something that's doable. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me run back. Let me kick somebody's desk. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Hey, why he, hey, why he, hey, he, yeah. moving, hey, he moving like real life right now. Right, right. And when you put him on hold, you got to go and get that contract ready. Right now. Right yeah. there. They said, oh, the time is clicking on him and on the clock, right? Hey, I'm going to keep it real with you, though. My man's overcame a lot of objections. John, a lot of objections. Yeah. do you yeah. have access to your email? Uh, yeah, but I'm not giving that out. I, I have to come to a physical office and sign contracts with these guys. I'm not doing nothing. You said you got offices in Jersey, right? Georgia, in Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll get you. A, I'll get you a plane ticket down here. It's nice in Georgia. Yeah, I know it's colder right. than it's cooler okay. than Delaware. Well, then everything's going to be have to be electronic signature, and then I would have to I would have to read and review the contract before I sign anything. Okay. All right. Let me get your email. I'm gonna get it over to you right now, and I could give you a call okay. back. When would you like me to give you a call back? Uh, well, I'm going to need time to review the contract, so it depends on how long it takes me to read it and how big uh, or complicated your contract is or how small. Uh, you know, I can't. Uh, it's going to probably take, in my my experience, at least a couple of days just to read the contract. Okay, okay. What about if you can, if I can review the contract with you on the phone? No, no. no. It's got to be in writing. And it's got to be electronic signature or uh, I'm yeah. not interested. Yeah, no, I would send it to you electronically so you could pull it up and me and you on the phone, we can go over it. Yeah, I, I can read it myself. It would be faster. Okay. And I, I don't like I don't like uh, being distracted from what I'm being offered. I need to see it in black and white. Gotcha. Uh, I don't need any additional uh, distractions from that contract. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So we got a deal for 80000 correct? You say so. Cash. Okay. All right. What's the best email for you? It's my name, uh, John, with my middle initial N for Nicholas. Gmail.com. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah. Re uh, spell out my email address to me to make sure you got it right. J O All right, I was paying attention, paying attention. Uh quick question. I'll kind of go over the process with you. Uh mm -hmm. once we send you the agreement and you go over it, if you have any questions, you could you can you could call us and ask us, but it's a real simple process. Yeah, I know. As long as I agree with the contract and everything that I see and there's no uh undisclosed you know surprises uh, and then i'll be happy with it and i'd be more than happy to uh close the deal i, I want to buy some of those other properties you don't want to sell me some of the other ones 
Nah, not right now. Uh, nah. nah. How long have you been into uh, real estate? Uh, about eight, ten years. Eight, ten years. I'm about to pick up another property, so that's what I'm working on now. That's what I was working on when you you called me. Question, question. Are what areas are you looking for properties in? Uh, like Atlantic City, Philadelphia. Philly, okay. Uh, Delaware. So you know, the tri-state area that surrounds me, you know. Got you. So if I were to find properties in that area, you potentially would be interested in purchasing them? Uh, well, that depends. What I look for is a little bit different than what you're looking for. I'm only interested in Section 8 properties. Good I'm money. Not interested. That's why That's why I'm interested in selling this property because there's other uh, better deals for me if I can uh, unload this one. Okay. Well, we're definitely, we can move fast on the cash. So I'm going to send you the agreement shortly within the next few minutes. Mm -hmm. the, the, as soon as you read over it, if you got any questions, you could give us a call back. But once you, uh, once we agree to it and you sign it, we actually send that property over to our closing attorney and you will actually give you that information as well. So you could just vet them and everything. And, uh, well, I, I, I have, uh, I would choose to use, uh, I have to have my attorney review whatever you have. I, I can't just, you know, read it, sign it, and just use your attorney alone. I, I have to have a third party that's, uh, you know. Of course, of course. Uh, I want to also get you some information about the title company that we'll be closing with, just so you could be comfortable. Are you yeah. online? Are you online on Facebook and, and, uh, and just internet? Are you tech savvy? I know enough to get me in trouble. Okay. <laughs> now, when you say that, come on, you sound like somebody. What were you doing to get in trouble on the internet? Mm -hmm. I don't do nothing to get in trouble on the internet. <laughs> I'm just saying, you asked me a question, I answered it. It's just, you know, I'm not real computer savvy. So, gotcha. I, I know enough to get by. Okay. Well, the reason why I was giving you was asking that information just so you can look us up so you could potentially know who you're doing business with. So, mm -hmm. uh, John, I'll get that over to you. Congratulations. Yeah. Listen. Yes. You say you pay all closing costs, right? Because yes, I have sir. my own realtor. Yeah, no, there's no realtor fees. We cover that. So you don't need to include a realtor because if you include a realtor, oh. then they get the percentage. This is cash that right. goes to I you. Yeah, okay. nothing. But I still have to have somebody review my contract. Oh, 1,000%, 1,000%, 1,000%. So I'll get that over to you. I'm going to text you my information, even though I know you wrote it down. I'm going to text mm -hmm. you the information just so you can know who you're doing business with. And if you got any questions, you could just respond to that text. Okay, so um, you're going to mail me. So you're saying they're in agreement to eighty thousand. You're going to mail me the contract. Correct. And and then I'm going to have to take a couple few days to have somebody review it with me. I'm going to read it myself and then take it to my own lawyer. Okay. And and just to make sure everything's on the up and up, and then we'll go from there. Okay, you could you could search us on Google and everything. So. You oh man. Wow, that, that was that was definitely, definitely amazing call. Yes. Definitely an amazing call. Um, you know, what was your score on this? Um, I, I I'm I'm definitely looking forward to the scores, but before we even get to the scores, before we get to the scores, you know what? I want to know what you guys think. Definitely, you know, tell me what you guys thought about the entire, the entire who do you think won this thing who do you think was the absolute best person for you the cards are done the judges are popping up we're going to start with my guy liam liam talk to me what was your scores how did how, what, what are you seeing in this thing man that second call i thought he was going to pull it i thought he was going to get that guy to sign a contract but he that seller played to his personality and didn't want to get it signed without doing his due diligence which was kind of the way he was acting that whole time until he started to get work in the numbers that was what i wanted to see i remember when we last came up and we we're chatting that's what i thought we needed to see and that's what happened so that was fantastic so on my scoring for rapport out of five i gave it a two and the reason for that is because he was talking a lot more than he was asking questions um there's this 80-20 rule. You want to talk 20% and have your sellers talk 20 or 80%. I felt like that was a little bit flip-flop where Seamus was talking 80% and having the sellers talk 20%. He's doing something that I call checklisting. He's got a list of questions and is going from one question to another, to another, to another. And it didn't feel super conversational. And I thought he was losing that second guy um, for, for you know a good portion of that call in the beginning where the guy was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Uh huh. And it, I felt like it wasn't going anywhere. But then the price got brought up and that changed that call around. So the rapport, I got two for negotiations out of five. I gave him a four on that second one going back and forth on price, the virtual withdrawal number, which I think he pulled out a little bit early, but that's a fantastic strategy. I think Eric Klein is the one who coined that. That's the first person I've seen use it. it it's, it's, it's a beautiful strategy. So I gave him a four out of five on that for the creative option out of five. I gave him a two um, because he did bring it up on that first call and it was, it was, it was decent. It wasn't just like a, this sort of like, well, maybe we could do this. So it gives a, a above a one for sure. Next for handling objections um, out of five, I gave a three. I, I didn't hear too many objections. I think we're kind of having this theme today of some more educated, um, um, lower level sellers. I think that, uh, he did well to keep the call going when this is one that I think a lower level person would not have been able to keep on the line that long for identi identifying pain out of five, it was three and he could have earned more points by asking questions that were between the lines. You know, he was asking very straightforward questions like, why are you looking to sell? Or what's got you looking to sell? For me, I like to dive into the, uh, I like to dive into the motivation by doing something that's reading between the lines. And if you guys are watching the comments, Max Jimenez has been on every single one of those opportunities where he says like, he has attendance in there and everything's going so well. It's like, man, I mean, this thing is rented out. It seems like a fantastic cash flow. Why would you even want to sell? Absolutely. That's going to be right. So like that. For verbal agreement, then I gave him a four because it looks like that 80K, as long as there's nothing fishy in that contract, it's going to go through. Then sign contract, net ROI, zero and zero. Wow, man. So we have a total of 18 points from Liam. Man, awesome stuff. You know, at the end of the day, that was good stuff. Elijah, what do you man. think, man? Let's get this scorecard up, man. Sheesh, Sheesh man. That was solid, solid round, man. I love I love just seeing good quality closers go at it, you know. Yeah. And definitely, Seamus is definitely a player for sure. Um, for building report, same thing. Um, you, I, I gave him two points uh, for building report. Uh, he kind of went through the script process versus I think he could have connected a little bit more. He yeah. definitely has the personality to connect, you know, uh, but I understand the competition maybe just want to go through it. So I only gave him two points for um, rapport. Uh, negotiations. Um, I, I gave him two points for negotiations. I feel like he could have got him down to the 75 or um, I feel like he could have pressed him a little bit more. Yeah. On that way back and forth. He was right there. He, he kind of bent, it, uh, he bent the knee a little bit to the 80. Still number still going to make, make work, but I think he could negotiate him. I think he is right. He's probably about three or four no's away. You know, I'm a fan of taking at least seven no's at least. So um, I think he was right there. I gave him a, a one for the creative option. Uh, he did He did mention hey, uh, a couple times, hey, I put a down payment. Um, I can make it to him payments. I, I would have circled back around after he said no and said, all right, well, what if, if we got you 65000 and you carried 15000 on a note? Kind of like how Scotty did in the, in the last round. Um, give him some of his profit on the back and get creative with it. That's what I would, I would try to structure and do. Um, handling objections. Um, I liked how he handled some objections. I gave him a two on handling some of the objections when yeah. he said, uh, I wouldn't take that low of a number. Well, what do you mean? He said, you waste my time. Well, what do you mean? And I, I, I like the uh, marrying. What do you mean by me wasting your time? You married him. You matched him. I saw that he um, could have overcame a couple of objections, especially on that first call. I felt like he could have handled the objection is a little stronger. Um, identifying the pain, I gave him a four. I think he, um, on multiple calls, I think he kind of dug a little deeper. He kind of touched, poked the pain on some of them. Talked about, hey, if we get this done now, um, I think he I think he missed out a little point when Max mentioned in the comments about, well, if the tents are staying good and tents are paying, why are, you, like, why are you so eager to sell this thing? But outside of missing that part, I feel like he did identify the pain and got him to play ball and that's why i think he's given that verbal agreement and then the verbal agreement i gave him a three i think um he got the verbal agreement i think he was close to signing the contract i would have probably pressed him a little bit more and saying hey we got somebody else we're looking at um the question is do you want me to give this cash to you or do you want are you, are you okay with us giving to one of your neighbors you know because we have my it's not me it's my money partner and he's going to pull the trigger so what would you like me to do like that I, I think he would have got on the phone so that's kind of how I got the, to my number. Then, so it was a total of 14 points on my end. I don't know how I became the Steve Trang of this round. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> all good. All good, man. Thank you so much for that. Elijah, my guy, Keith. What's going on, Keith? Man, sheesh. Oh, pressure. Like, I mean, Elijah, I know, man. You got a little, I should I call him Elijah Trang. Hey. You know, 
<laughs> no, man. So uh, let me pull it up, man. I know we got the screen probably going to come up, but I got a screenshot. It. So uh, I thought he did good, man. You know, I thought I thought that he overcame some early adversity. Mm-hmm. You got to remember, this is a competition with a clock. So I feel like that not many people uh, come back off that, you know, that second call, though. And I feel like he got out of there at the perfect time, though. You know what I mean? So um, as far as uh, report, I gave him a three. Um, I feel like he did pretty decent with the report. I did. I think he did enough because you got to have some type of report to be able to get to the point that he got to, especially on that second call. So I definitely want to give him a three on the report. I feel like he did decent. He could have did better. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, here and there, there uh, negotiations. Uh, I give him a four. I'm going to tell you why, though. A lot of people, I understand what people are saying. First and foremost, the ARV was like, what, 145 to 150. We all know that 80,000 by itself is not a bad offer, but don't forget that the guy wanted 95. He hit him at 69. Mm. Hit the 69. See, everybody forgetting he hit him low. A lot of y'all wouldn't have hit him at 69 probably. He hit him at 69, and then the guy came down to like, what, 85, and then he came down to 80. So he did come down. He did hit him low first, right? Absolutely. But I gave him a four because what I would have done is instead of jumping straight to 75, I would have said, just meet me at 70, and then I would have inched my way up to 75. I would have gave him a whole five for that. Um, creative option, I gave him a two. Um, I feel like the first call he had, I feel like he was trying to get creative. Uh, handling objections, I feel like he got a four. I don't care what nobody say because uh, even when the guy thought he was in Jersey, he even the guy even said out of his own mouth that, hey, we don't have to do it electronically. This guy was trying to beat him up everywhere he went. He was throwing haymakers. And I feel like Seamus was whittling his way out and he was getting to the next step. So we can't forget that. Um, where we at next? We got a identifying pain. I gave him a three. You know, I feel like he could have done better on that. You know what I mean? He could have dig in a little bit deeper as far as the pain. And uh, we got verbal agreement. I gave him a four because he got to the point, he got a good price. He didn't get it signed, but the guy, I feel like he is going to give him a fair shot if Seamus sent him in the paperwork, but he's going to have to be on top of him, though. What I would have done was, hey, I understand that, you know, you got to speak to your attorneys. In the meantime, should I put the funds on hold right now um, because I don't want my partners to use on another property. These guys are buying properties every single day. I would, If he would have told me, yes, put the funds on hold, I knew he was going to sign it or at least going to come back. If he said no, then I would have knew he was he was bullshitting basically. Um, mm-hmm. as far as uh, a signed contract, of course that's a zero, and then net ROI was a zero. So you know that's just my perspective, man. I thought he did good overall, and uh, yeah, that's it. Man, this is this is this is a tough competition. Skills everywhere, Elijah. Sheesh. I got to go. So you know what? We're talking. It's too close. It's too close. I mean, once we get the numbers, like I said, we were going to kind of not have a final round. Um, I mean, we were a little behind on time. We want to respect everybody's time to close this time. It's getting late around here. However, we did not anticipate Seamus coming out there, balling out, you know, hitting jumpers out of left and right. So um, I really want to make sure um, we want to make sure we put you guys in a position to win. Uh, Gene, um, Gene, you know, and, and the whole um, I speak the lead family is going to put some premium leads on the table. If you guys want to see a final round, be, I mean, well, first, before you get that, let's get the official numbers. Let's get the official numbers so we know who the final two are going to be. Uh, I, th- I think I think we're close. I think we kind of know. But let's see what the final numbers. So we have, do we have the final numbers, team. So and while we're you know while we're getting the final numbers up, if you guys want to see a final head-to-head round right now between Sheamus and Scott, who I believe are going to be the top two, assuming they are, right? that's that, that's my assumption. Give us a one. If you guys just want to call it now, and whoever has the highest point goes, give us a two in the chat. Otherwise, give us a one if you want us to do another, another one. Two if you don't. Let's see him come rolling in here. Let's run it, people. Let's run it. Let's run it. Yeah. All right. All oh, right. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I see it. All right. So it came close. So 52 points, 67 points. So these are the final two. But so, but what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do, we're not gonna do a whole 30 minutes. All right. We're gonna we're gonna make it a little spicy. We're gonna make it a little spicy for them. All right, they're only gonna get half the time. 
15 minutes. Yeah. I like that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to get busy. For real. Right to it. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know what? We're, we're adding one more twist in too because my camera just went out. Let me switch to my other camera. Hang on, hang on. El gato. Oh, so here's my thoughts, guys. Why don't we have them just choose leads straight off the platform, brand new, fresh generated within the last couple minutes? I'll share my screen. They will each choose one and they will keep choosing until they get somebody who's a solid connection. How about that? And then just do one for one. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that is probably going to be the best way to, the fastest way to make sure to get a hold of somebody. All right. So, but what we do need to do, we need to see who goes first. So if the production team could get the, the spin wheel, Prepared to see who's going to go first, Scotty or Seamus, to see because I, you know, I mean, Keith, you've been in the competition. I like going. I like going last just to see what number do I need to. Show, what, how many yeah, points yeah, do I need yeah, to score? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, I, you'd like to see. I feel like it's uh benefits to both. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, because you can you can go first and discourage your competition. Yeah. I saw RJ did that in, in round one. RJ did it in the first year close Olympics. Everybody's like, "Oh, these leads are tough. These leads are tough." Boom! He just knocked out two verbal agreements. Yeah. The same with Monique. The same with Monique. Monique. And that was, was, what do y'all think about that last caller? Was that, I mean, he seemed pretty tough to, you know, work with. What what was y'all talking about? Red seller. seller. That's a red seller. Yeah. Yeah, Red seller. Seamus was pivoting. He was, he held the line. He became a a little red seller back with him a little bit, but then he softened up a little bit. He navigated pretty efficiently to get him on board to say yes to verbally. And also, too. Yeah. Here's the deal. I want to make sure that everybody understands that you can get a copy. Okay. You can get a copy of not just this one. Okay. Not just this one, but all of the previous closest Olympics. You can get that, right? You can get that in a bundle. You can also get a closest Olympic course. Okay. So make sure that you go to closersolympics.com right now, closersolympics.com right now. So you can take advantage of this amazing opportunity because right now, I literally got Elijah to commit to 297 on this deal. 297. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you're not like me, right? If, if this is me, I'm definitely picking up that 297. Easy, easy, right? But if you're not like me, you can at least pick up the ticket for $97 to go ahead and join in at the Closers Olympics finale, okay? You do not want to miss that. But I can tell you right now, if anybody is looking to educate themselves or you're looking to educate your team, we definitely have utilized the Closes Olympics to help educate our team on how to close more deals. So don't miss that bundle. Right. Um, It's just it's just um, unbeatable at that price. Yes, and the sir. last thing I want to add in is if you guys want to actually hop in and join in on the we have, we have three qualifiers, we're still going to be taking applicants for. If you guys want to join in, text apply or text closer to this number right here, 480-462-7133. And then we can start to get you applied, go through the application process to potentially be in the Olympics. Throwing that out yeah. there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for mentioning that. And you guys remember, so we like every month for the next at least for the next three months, you have these qualifiers. We already got those people set. If you want to qualify, like I said, text that number, like we we locked in. Text that number so you are able to be in round five and six before the official close Olympics kicked off. So there's still time. If you're like, man, I'm a closer. I can outbeat Scotty. I can do better Seamus, right? If, if you think that's you, <laughs> don't talk about it. Click it in. Lock it. Apply for it. We'll, we'll be reaching out to you. But let's, bring, let's bring our guys up, though. Let's, let's bring Scotty. Let's bring Seamus up. Let's, just, let's, let's have a little conversation real quick. Let's have a little conversation. So let's start with you, Scotty, real quick. All right. You came in, you had the closest beard popping, pop, pop you know, you was working your thing. How did you feel? What did you notice in that first round? What do you notice? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I talked to a couple savvy investors, so that's not really what I was expecting. You know, you always kind of hope to talk to the uneducated, you know, uh, you know, little old lady that hasn't opened a computer in like 10 years and, you know, try to, you know, that doesn't know the value of their house. I mean, you, you hate to say it, but that's what we're all looking for, right? So, uh, it was definitely a little bit of a, a shock uh, talking to savvy investors, but I mean, this is what we do every day. So, you know, you got to gotta improvise and just uh, make it happen. So I'm excited about the leads I got. Uh, definitely going to be following up with them and ready to call some more. Bring on the free leads. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that you try to raise some capital on this too as well. <laughs> Money part, that's a closer closing. 
during the closer show. I love it. I love Absolutely. it. Closing the private money, man. Seamus, man. I, Seamus, man. What are your thoughts, man? What are your thoughts? It, it, it was a tough one, to be honest. I was trying to go for the kill. I wanted that contract signed. You know, that's what I was trying to shoot for, you know, to be like, boom, one shot you down. Uh, definitely the, the first one, it, it, it was in Georgia. And I try to cut that one short as fast as possible. Because first of all, he wanted 350 and 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 eight comps was like, 220. Chances are he didn't get permits for what he rehabbed or whatever like that. So I just got off that. Uh, it, it was just a tough one, man. But even at the 80 K, I think, you know, I think the numbers are still there. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, it's fun. It's a sport to me. Absolutely, man. Well, let's get to it. Uh, let's get this wheel up. Let's yep. figure out who's going to go first. Uh, and listen, this is a battle, Elijah. Battle Royale. This is a battle. I'm ready to see who's going to take this thing. Listen, I am impressed by both of these fellas. So let's go ahead and hit the spin. Got to spin it. Oh, 50-50, 50-50. Oh, it's looking oh, like oh, Sheamus. He's, he's, he's already warm. Back. He's already warm. He's warmed up. He's ready, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo. Oh, shit. Man, we got 15 minutes. minutes. We got 15 minutes. You know? 15 minutes. Might, be his Might be his advantage. Yeah. Set the tone, set the tone. All right, what leads? What leads do we call, Liam? So here's what we can do here, right? I'll share my screen just like this so you guys can see. If you see a lead that you like, I'm going to take it down, and I'm going to send it to you in the private chat, okay? All right. I'm so mean, take I'm, a look here. I can't, really, I can't really see that. Man, I don't – give me anything, bro. I don't, I don't give you a know shit. What? I'll, 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 oh. I'll take a look here, all right? So this one, Austin, but it's in pristine condition. I'm not loving it. I want to find one that needs some work. How about this one? It's in Bellflower, Missouri. So a little bit of a small town. Ah, it's too small of a town, actually. So let's find one that's in a bit. What about Holy that Kentucky shit. one? Shit. Holy shit. Sacramento, California. They're selling and renting and said they want to sell without showings. They're downsizing. They want to sell in a month. It's not listed. Their asking price is lower than shown comps. Bathrooms need work. It needs paint inside, landscaping, let's flooring, go. the kitchen What's cabinets. The oh, my God. This is it right here. What's the number? Oh, you're gonna send you're gonna put it in. Okay. Yeah. What's, the, what's your address? address? I'll send this on over to you right now. Okay. I'm gonna put it inside of that private chat, okay? All right. Let's go. And it's coming on over right now. There you go. All right. Uh, Name is Anastasia. Damn, how you even say that name? Non Ayasa. <laughs> it starts with A. A. Uh, all right, let's go scroll down. A N A N A. Phone number 916. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't say the name. Don't say the name. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what's the address hold on let me pull it up oh yeah we didn't get that address over to comper 36 all right all right Wait, is this the right property? Hold on. This looks like a shit box. Shit right. box in Sacramento. <laughs> Facts. Two million dollars. Right. I know, right? <laughs> You're gonna learn today. All right. All right, let's go. I'm dialing. I'm excited to see this one. Triple tap. It's crunch time, baby. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Devin Wayne's in the comments saying something that's never been said before. Affordable and California in the same <laughs> sentence. That's oxymoron. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Yeah, some of these people don't. Please leave your message. Your hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Seamus. When you uh, get a chance, could you uh, please give me a call back? 470-330-4204. Uh, I would like to talk to you about cliffhanger. Okay. Anything else you got? What, what, what okay. you, quickly, why don't you try to double, try to call back real quickly? I, I call twice. I'll call again. Yeah, because your time has to start. Start. Yeah. All right. A lot of times they'll answer on the second time. I'll I'll try there. to hit him with the cliffhanger. Like, yeah, that, was nice. that was nice. Pick up. Pick up. Hmm. Hello, can I speak to Anastasia? Sure. Hey, how you doing? This is Seamus with Magneto Homes. How you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thanks for asking. You're probably the first one to ask me today. So I appreciate that. The The reason I was calling, it looks like you submitted a property online uh, on Belden Street in Sacramento that you were looking to sell. Are you still looking to sell that property? Yeah. Okay, perfect. You have a few minutes to talk? Uh, Five minutes, 10 minutes to okay. max. Okay. okay. All right. Let, let's start. Uh, start out by telling me what's the reason you're looking to sell? Uh, we are planning to downsize. Downsize, okay. Yeah. Uh, are you staying in the same area? Uh, no, we'll be moving south. You moving south? Where in the south? Uh, south, uh, South Sacramento. Oh, South Sacramento. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so okay. Uh, how many bedrooms and bathrooms? Three bed, uh, two bath. Three bed, two bath. Looks like the square footage is around eleven hundred square feet. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about the condition of the property when it comes to the bathrooms and the kitchen? Bathroom, both uh, bathroom and kitchen need some renovation. Okay. What kind? What kind of renovation? Like uh, we were thinking of putting a walk-in shower in the tub, in the bathroom which has a tub. Okay. And uh, changing cabinets. And on the other bathroom, uh, it's already a walk-in, but just uh, just uh, changing of cabinets and stuff like that. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Is the property yeah. vacant or occupied? No, I'm occupying. Yeah, That's occupied. Mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah occupied. How, how long have you owned it? Since uh, January 2009. 2009. Okay. 2009. Okay. What about the it, does the property? Have, does it have central air? Yeah. Do you know how old the HVAC is? Mm, it's been there since we bought it. Gotcha. Okay. So I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. Uh, we do purchase properties as is in, you know, whatever condition it's in. You don't have to do nothing. You don't even have to clean the toilets, flush the toilets, nothing. We take it as is. But we do have several options to help individuals sell their home. So when we do present an offer, uh, we give multiple options. Every property doesn't get approved uh, to get an offer on it. So that's why I kind of ask you these questions to see if we're uh, a perfect fit. Uh, with that being said, uh, what were you looking to get for the property? Uh, around 285. Around 285? Yeah. Okay. See, right now, my wife and I are still talking about just renovating it because we're almost paying it off. Gotcha. Okay, so it's yeah, almost paid we're off. Almost done with the, with the with the mortgage, so we are still sitting on paying it off. You okay. Know, and just keeping it for our daughter, or it makes or sense. Sell it right as it is. You know, that's that's where we are right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have you ever done renovations before on a property? Uh, we just did the flooring. We took out the carpet and put uh, hardwood floor. Okay, so you didn't you you never renovated and, a property or anything painting, like that, painting. and you painting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you never renovated a property before. No. Okay. All right. Uh, question: um, if, if we were able to pay cash and quick close fourteen days, 
uh, you don't have to do anything. Uh, what's the best you think you could do on this property for cash? And we cover the closing cost. We cover uh, insurance, any type of fees that pop up. What's the, the take home amount you want to walk away with? 260. 260. Yeah, okay. If you, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how did you, how did you come up with that number? I've just been uh, looking at the red fin and uh, the red fin valuation. Eh? Okay. See, the, yeah, it is. The, the, it was at 340. Okay. And last week it was at 316. See, the thing about Redfin and uh, and like Zillow and, and websites yeah. like that is, you know, they'll take a property that's fully renovated and a property that's not renovated and they're kind of just equal them out. So, you know, it's not really apples to apples. What we usually do is we run a CMA and that's a compatible uh, market analysis. And that basically is just going to give us data on what the properties are selling for uh, in that area. Uh, could you do me a favor? I submitted the file back to get a number because, like I said, they do not approve uh, every offer. And uh, they've been turning down more than they've been approving lately. But I want to kind of try to help you out. Uh, as far as time frame, or how fast were you looking to get out of that property? Uh, a month or two months. Around two months, okay. Around two months, yeah. Two months. What kind of work do you do? I Right now, I used to uh, work in the oil field. Oil? Out in, uh, out in Texas. Got you. What are... But uh, during the COVID and the shutdowns, okay. I left in August 2021. Okay. Is that a good right, industry to get in? Right now, sorry. Is that a good industry to get in? It's a very good industry to get in, yeah. Okay. It's a very good high paying, but you you're away from home a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's you definitely you know, I used to be in the music industry and we used to be on tour six months and that was the worst thing is being on tour for those six months and not, you know, not seeing the kids. And I know when it comes to the oil fields. Uh, you guys go out on these ships and you're out there for months at a time, correct? Yeah, one month off, one month on, two weeks off. Oh yeah, that that must that must be definitely tough on the family. How many kids do you have? Uh, one, one, one. Boy. Young. Uh, twenty-one. No, she's adult. Uh, she's empty nesters. That's why you try, That's yeah. why you want to get rid of it and skate off, right? Yeah. <laughs> we I got three kids and they're and they're empty. Um, we're almost empty nesters. We have one 19 year old. Uh, he's the last one. Okay. But me and my wife, we're ready to travel the world. Uh, you know, it's always good. It's yeah. always good to travel. So, you know, we raise the yeah. kids. Yeah. Uh, all right. Can you do me a favor? Can you hold on for one minute? I submitted the file to our underwriting department and I just want to go and check and see if they have a number and I can and I can okay. come back and give you that. OK, hold on one second. Thank you. See, and see, he's even talking to the finance department in his mind. See, that's how you know. That's how you know he's closing. That's how he tells. He's talking to the finance department. So, what y'all think about that though? It was a couple of them at you know three sixty and three eighty, but I mean, it's market. It, you know, Doctor Penny, how you doing? I'm back. Do you have a pen and a paper? Sure. All right. I just want to give you some information. Let me know when you when you're ready. Yo, are you ready? Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. I just want to give you uh, my information just in case we get disconnected. My name is Seamus, S H A M U S. The last name is G O S S. And the name of our company is Magneto home solutions okay our toll-free number is 866-868-3523 uh can you read it can you read it back to me to make sure you got it correct uh one more time 866-868-3523 and i'll text you all this information as well Three, five, two, three. Correct. Yeah, I'll text you all this information as well. And our website is uh, www.magnetohomes.com.
what's the best email for you? Uh, the text, text is, uh, is okay. Oh, the email, I mean, to actually send the agreement over to you with the offer. Okay. Okay. My, uh, first name period, my last name at oh. yahoo.com. At yahoo.com. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, so I was able to get two numbers for you. If you can, can you write this down? It's VW-173-2. What that is, is a virtual withdrawal number. All that means is when we present an offer, those funds get transferred into an account and can only be used on that particular property. And it's only for 24 hours. You could say, no, the offer doesn't work for me, kick rocks. And we, we just part ways. Uh, but there's like 10 of us here and we're submitting offers all day. So that's why we have to allocate those funds. So on a cash offer, uh, and now, now keep in mind that this hey, is a, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Gus, yes. Give, give me uh, that, that, that uh, last number you just gave. One more time. Uh, VW173-1434. VW. Yeah, like Victor Wynn. 173. Dash 1434. 1434. Yes. Okay. VW 173-1434. Yes, exactly, exactly. So I have two options for you. On the cash offer, what I got approved for was 168,373. And I'll kind of explain to you. Uh, that's a cash right. offer. Excuse right. me. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, that's a, you. all right. That's a cash offer. That's cash that goes in your pocket. We cover closing costs, everything. Like I said, you do not even have to flush the toilets and you don't have to do any work to it. Like you literally give us the keys and you walk away. Is that something you think you could work with? If we could get this done in 14 days? Uh, no, no. Okay. What number? Uh, so the second option is what's called our concierge service. So what this basically means is we're part of a huge buy-in network. It's around three and a half million buyers on our in our network. And we're kind of the ones that's in charge of the marketing. So the leads actually come to us. And then we have the obligation to share that inventory with our, our counterparts. Uh, so basically, it, it, it basically, we're going to partner with a third party to get you the funds that uh, we were able to get the number. So the number that they approved for that one was 201, $201,173,000. Is that something we could get done today? What, what, what does that involve? So it's the same thing. So what, what basically happens is once we send the agreement over to you and we start that process, we're going to go to all of our partners. And in most cases, some of our partners can pay more for properties because they either live in that area or they're going to put a Section 8 tenant in there. So they're able to pay more. Our offers, usually a, when we present a cash offer, it's we're coming in and taking it as is, 14-day close. Now, on the concierge service, it's going to take us around 30 to 45 days to close on it. And I know that you said you would need about a month or two, so that might be perfect for you. Uh, so is, is this something that you, you're, you're interested in? Uh, no. No? Uh, what, what, uh, what's, what's the reason you're, you're not interested in that? Uh, you know, Gus, I think right now, I'll just, we'll just stick to our original plan, just renovate it. Gotcha. And uh, pay it off. Are you are you are you in a position to uh, to take on that that type of job with the renovations? Yeah, but uh, it'll I think it'll take me like whole of this year to to do that renovate and. Uh, and you, and, and you, uh, you, you, you you might know. you you might want to be careful uh, with making those renovations to that property because you know the market is in a downturn and California yeah, yeah, yeah. is is one of the worst places and and yeah, just yeah. from it's data going fast. It's it, going, going down fast. super fast yeah so you talk yeah. about six months from now 12 months from now that property right. may be worth half the money so right. Right. so with so that I, I think uh i think i'll just uh i'll just uh renovate it take time on it renovate it slowly and pay it off and just hold on to it 
All right, so yeah. let me let me ask you a question. If I was to meet you at a McDonald's with a bag of cash, because that's what we're doing, we're paying cash, what is the best number that you would feel comfortable with walking away today? Yeah, 260 is my last uh, last number. 260, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but, but I understand, I understand uh, what you're explaining. You know, it has to be, it has to be, uh, you know, walking ready. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How much do you think you're gonna spend on those repairs? Yeah. Oh, sorry. How much do you think you're going to spend on those repairs? Uh, 250. Including the the yard front and back should be like 60. 60. Yeah. So if you think about it, if 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 our two hundred thousand dollar offers free you would work for you, you don't have to spend that sixty thousand because at the end you're going that sixty thousand is going to just add on top of that. No, I'll be able to sell. I mean, when the cycle when the cycle comes back up, I should be able to sell much, much yeah. higher. How long do you think? How how long do you think before that cycle turns? No, seven, eight years. And you you you're willing to hold on to it for seven, eight years? Oh yeah, I won't be. I mean, I won't be paying no more than. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got your information. Uh, let me run this back to uh to the back office there. Actually. Yes. Wow, man. It's going up and down and I call. It's going up and down. It was tight. It was tight. It was tight, man. Listen, I'm looking forward to seeing if Scotty is going to be able to pull this thing off. Listen, we just heard Seamus. Um, I, listen, he fought for it. But at the end of the day, man, it's about getting the close, right? We had 15 minutes, right? This is the final round, right? We're looking at the best of the best go head to head, right? So listen, while the judges are scoring, while the judges are scoring, go ahead and let me know what are your thoughts. What are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts? So, so um, listen. I want to also remind you, real, real quick. If you want to be a part of the next closers Olympics, make sure that you text closer, closer, okay, to four eight zero four six two seven one three three, okay, and also, also. If you want to take part of this bundle, you just heard the value. You're listening to the value right now, okay? You're listening to the value right now. Make sure that you go ahead and take advantage of that bundle. Just go to closesolympics.com, right, and pick up this bundle. It's only $297, literally half off, okay? So you want to go ahead and take advantage of that. And if not, worst case, go ahead and just get your tickets, okay? Go ahead and get your tickets. It, 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 you know, the price is unbeatable at this point. But let's go ahead and get my guy Scotty back up because I don't want to keep you guys much longer. We got 15 minutes to close this deal out. We just heard Seamus, masterful call, right? Uh, wasn't able to close that deal, right? But we never know. We never know what's taking place on the other end of that deal. He may be able to close it outside of the 15 minutes. But for right now, he wasn't able to uh, get that deal closed. Um so let's go ahead and uh, get these final numbers in and get my guy Scotty up. Scotty, how you feeling? Ready to make some calls, man. <laughs> let's do it, man. How, do you feel like you're going to be able to get to take this thing home? Uh, yes. It's, uh, you know, 15 minutes is a short window, so it just comes down to the lead. But, you know, I'll make the most of it. So let's go. Yeah. All right. Can we get that clock up? Let's go ahead and get my guy rolling. Beautiful. I'm going to share my screen here. I think I found the perfect lead already for Mr. Scotty. This one is going to be in Wheaton, Illinois. And this one's right by Chicago. We're looking at this one. They're selling for financial reasons, moving closer to family. It's vacant. They want to sell ASAP. It's not listed. It's been owned in the family for 50 plus years. Bathrooms, kitchen cabinets, kitchen appliances, all that stuff needs work. Three beds, two bath. Yeah, I'm done. Let's go. All right. Sending that in the private chat now. Boom. Is. Okay. I'm going to turn down my volume. You guys can still hear me. Yeah. Yes. You good. Okay. Thank you. 
hell of a lead right there. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the comments said, I want that lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that double dial worked too. Yeah, it's been working. That it did, yeah. That's, the, that's been a play for years. You have reached a geo application consulting. We are currently assisting another client or are away from the desk. Please leave a message what? and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. Uh, sound like the wrong number, but try it again. I mean, I'm going to type the number into the chat to make sure I have the right number. Oh, man, Bam said when he drafted. The dress kind of looks funky, too. I can't find yeah. it on. Uh, Liam, can you post the address, too? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, that's the only address. That they, that's all they put in right there. That's it. That's all they filled out. All right, we're going to hop to a new one now. Give me another lead? Yes, sir. Get one pulled up no, it's now. Not on that one either. Just the street name. Yeah, see, I think the more, I think the more, and this is, and those closers who close at this time, you know, six, seven o'clock, you know, you, the later it gets, your energy gets a little low. You got to get another swig of water. You got to get your motivation in place. You got to remind yourself and see your vision board. I think this was it really separates a lot of the other good closers too. You know, you know what Scotty need? Hmm. He need you know, that latte. latte. He need that Munif latte. <laughs> he need the latte, man. He need the latte. He's gonna be all right. You know. I'm looking here. I'm searching for one. I'm searching for one that's. I, I want to hear Scotty talk to a seller. I'm uh, the ones that I'm looking at right now. Here we go. Jackson, Mississippi. Death in the family. It's an inherited property. Vacant. They want to sell ASAP. Bathrooms need work. Paint inside. Flooring. Kitchen cabinets. Kitchen appliances. The paint outside. Air conditioning. They even self-selected and said it's in poor condition. I don't want to hear no multi-family on this one. I want to hear a seller. Yep. yep. Yeah. You're a regular person. Nothing to be extra savvy with a bachelor, three bachelor degrees. <laughs> Go. We ain't on the webinar right now. We want to hear some action. Action. I'm ready. Oh, my okay. Shout the Bilal. Right. Bilal been cutting up in the comments all day. <laughs> Shout the Bilal. Shout out to everybody for staying over here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this final match. You guys are, yeah, you guys are coming in for the finish. Shout out to the IG I've been live for like almost 20 minutes now, man. Uh, hi, Dorothy. I hate when that happens too. I'm gonna double dial. Yes, sir. Is that my grandbaby right there? How she answered. Right. I hate when that happens to me too. Oh, oh. You're in Mississippi. She's probably cooking right now. What you making over there? What I got you doing? Right. Hello, this is Dorothy. Right now, I can't reach the phone, but you can say hello too. I'm triple dialing. It's a landline Ooh, though. Let's go, Scotty. Let's go. See, closers don't mind pressing the limit. Press the envelope. Um, we can give it a second. I can try again. I think I caught the voicemail like while it was still right. running. Mm -hmm. Reason One of those landlines with like an actual voice recorded, like uh, answering machine. Yeah, that's it. You know, you got the, if you get a hold of you know, you got the right one. Uh huh. In the words of the famous. Okay. 
Triple All right. I found another one here. It is in Dallas, Texas. They're selling for financial reasons. They're downsizing. It's vacant. They want to sell ASAP. And there's some work that needs to be done. They've owned it for 30 to 50 years. Let's make it happen. There's currently tornadoes in Dallas. So um, any fire damage properties sent to your boy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. See. Um. Okay. Right, so I think, like I said, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people get caught up looking at all the comps and doing all the numbers before. And I think it's a good example of just make the phone call and then get to the numbers. Yeah, I like to get my flow going, you know. Yeah. You can be comping 90 properties and not talk to nobody. So talk to somebody first. So that's a good reminder here. It's it, it's it's seller entered. Need a West Coast lead. Yeah, I probably need a West Coast lead. Please leave your message. I see you get the flow, get the dough. You already know, Jenny Jen. Shout out to Gene, helping out all the way from Italy here. All right. Making it happen, making it happen. Please leave your message. <laughs> I, you, I see you, K2. We're all on edge. He's like, what's going to happen? Exactly. Now listen, everybody. Find the FaceTime technique. Oh, snap. You about the FaceTime. You know? Oh, you going to the FaceTime? Let's go, Scotty. Scotty's ruthless with. It. I love it. This is the first FaceTime on the Closers Olympics. Yes, this will be the first FaceTime close on the Closers Olympics. Hey guys, I'm here closing you guys live in front of everybody. <laughs> Jeez. Nope. Man, dude, these people. What are Four they times the charm. Man, it's getting expensive up here. Dude, I got I got well, I got this West Coast lead here from Stockton. Now, this one, it is tenant occupied, but they want to sell without showings. They've owned the property. There's no mortgage. Do you want this one or do you want to find one that isn't tenant occupied? That what is it? it? I, I this didn't catch it. It's in Stockton, California. They want yeah. to sell without showings. You, sure. you want to do this one? Sure. You want bring it on. Bring it on. It doesn't matter. Just give me the, just put it on my table. Give me the ball. Let me shoot. I like it, Scotty. Scotty, <laughs> let me shoot, man. Just let me shoot. Scotty B. Uh, let's go, Don't Scotty. Forget it. Big closer, big billionaire boy. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's get the dress over to um our comper. My dude on IG, Elijah got my money. Oh yeah, <laughs> get the money on IG. Come on. Come on. That's what these landlines. Let's try. Let's try it again. Let's, let's give them another. Let's give them another double. Double up. Give it a second. Try again. Yep. Yeah. The lesson yeah. everybody can learn real quick is this how you get into a flow of calls when you dial in like even like early during the day, a typical day. Keep dialing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, don't don't start looking at all the comps all day. You ain't got time for that. Keep dialing. It's a contact sport. Like I said, you want to talk to people, so you're gonna keep dialing. And then as you should I try again? I do the last do one. Do the last one. Do the, do the triple triple up as Liam finds okay. another one for you. Yep. 
Shout out to Liam doing triple duty today. All right. <laughs> Let's go. You know, and, and I think, look, we're going into our fourth hour. You know, we're past fourth hours, and it feels like 30 minutes. Watching close and close is the most entertaining thing, especially when you can learn, earn, and churn opportunity. Come on. Hey, we, like, hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Being a judge is pretty fun. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just because. All right. This one, I mean, this guy doesn't pick up. I don't know what else to say. This one is in Mesa, Arizona. It's owner occupied. There's no mortgage on it. Single family, four bed, two bath. Oh, boy. Ship it. Sending it over right now, baby. I'm surprised this one didn't get picked up, man. That's crazy. Yep. Hey, uh, we got the dispo queen. Might be able to sell that for you out here, all right? Jenny could get it moved, all right? Oh. Oh, I'm already calling that lead out here. Not joking. Not joking. Uh, <laughs> Elijah's yeah, he's like, where'd he go? He's not on camera. He's driving. Like, oh, hold on. Hey, that was be off. Don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> no, he's going to get this. I'll fill you bags. Hi, the person you've reached is using a screening service from Google and will get a transcript of this call. Go ahead and say why you're calling. Cash offer for your home. Oh, we straight to it. Just so it's clear, go ahead and say more about why you're calling. This is Scott with Cash Offer Options. You were recently on our website about your property in Mesa. RJ, you know you didn't hear that. You know you didn't <laughs> hear that, RJ. You know Come you didn't on. hear that. Come on, RJ. You know. You know you didn't hear that. Come on, man. I want somebody to pick up their phone. Fuck. Pick up the phone. See, and the thing about it, like you said, like you can't, you don't get the luck of the draw. Like I said, the whole, the whole idea is to keep calling, keep dialing, because this is going to happen when you're not hundreds of people are watching and you're going to be in your room. In your office oh, by right. yourself. Can't make really call. screen it down. Hmm. Should we answer? Should we not? I know, like, God, you, yes or no? <laughs> Are you going to answer it or not? Like, golly. They're praying about it, no, thinking about it. On. Golly, that's crazy, right? Sheesh. <laughs> My margaritas are waiting. <laughs> How long should I wait here, guys? Give it another minute. I've never, never experienced this before. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the, yeah, why, why not hang up and then try call back? Okay. Yeah, he might got stuck. He might got stuck. Matrix got him. Hi. Hey. 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 Let him call Jenny. Let him just call Jenny. <laughs> Hello. This is role play for the last one. Fuck. I want to get one lined up here. Yeah, we're going to get one. We ain't, you're going to get one. I'm still feeling good about it. 
or else you have to call the same. So you have to call the same. Sell a stream is held. <laughs> yeah. um, give it 10 more seconds, guys. Sure, sure. I think my guy Seamus is thinking right now. He probably. Seamus is on the phone with him trying to close it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm hanging up. Is that cool? cool. Yeah, it's fine. This nice is just weird. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for the next one. I'm looking for something on the West Coast, guys. Everything right now is uh, East Coast, Louisiana. Hey, you can call his name is Lee. This. Hey. I mean, we could do that. Yeah, I don't know. You know. What's everybody in chat think? Huh? Do you guys think we should run that? You guys think we should have a uh, we should have Mr. Scott call the exact same lead? Let, let's, I'm let's, cool with that. Let's try one more lead. Let's try one more lead, and if we have no other lead, you know, because. He okay. does have a little bit of an advantage knowing kind of his uh yeah. his spots, you know. Yeah, we're getting one more. Yeah. That's the last, you know, worst case scenario. Huh? Yo, who is the person going through buying all these Cali leads? Rio Vista's gone. Thousand Oaks is gone. And I know Thousand Oaks, that would have been Scotty could have just walked there. Tell Jin to unlock the, the, the lead apparatus. <laughs> yeah, pump up your spend, bro. <laughs> so so looking at different, you know, I mean, you know what? We could probably um, there's like other way we could do another lead here for him. I mean, we got I got some I got I got a PPC lead that came in and in locally in down. Take take the L, take the L for the family. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's see if you find another one. Yeah, hang on here. All right, so, so let me see. As you look for it, I'm gonna look for a possible lead for you too. One of my one of my PPCs out here. Get you right, get you right. This will make the closest Olympics, the closest Olympics. You know, right now, you know, my guy Scotty, he want to get on the phone so bad, but you know, he even forced to wait to show his talent, man. So right now, he's just thinking like, I gotta get somebody on that phone. You know what I mean? <laughs> Gotta get somebody. So look, somebody just said it. The suspense. The suspense is on right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. You just gotta talk to you just gotta talk to somebody. She should see. So this is like a one and done, right? If I get somebody on the phone, I just gotta give it my all like I can't hang up. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, pretty much. Word. Yeah. All right. This one here looks like it might be it. Uh oh. You got La Honda, California. Moving close to family. It's vacant. They want to sell ASAP. There's no mortgage. It is in pristine condition, though. So that's going to be the caveat. But they've owned it for 50 plus years, they say. Is that Gene? What's going on, guys? Hey, there's also an Oregon one. There's there's uh, there's a couple in Oregon that are that are still not uh, sold out by anyone. Just wanted to jump in and let you know, because Oregon Oregon is also on uh, West Coast. Hey, hey, uh, Liam, real Yo. quick before you paste it, is that by any chance? Is that Mark Chodos? Yeah, you already got him. Yeah, we got him today and talked to him. So I just don't want it to be unfair. Ah, uh, okay, oh, all right. Shout out to Scotty B, man. Look at that. That's a Scotty Integrity. Oh, yo, yo, guys. We just got one that's submitted right now in Houston, Texas. Boom. They want to sell without showings. It's tenant occupied. They want to sell in a month. They own the property. No mortgage on it. Let's rock with this one. This guy is fresh. He just filled it out. He fresh out the stove. Fresh, he fresh oh. out the pot. Into He's on the, the website pot. still fresh or what? We're going to see. All right. All right. And that one's coming through right there. Bam. Let's go. Okay. Got it. Man, this is crazy, guys. We've been live for four hours, 22 minutes, and 45 seconds. We have over 100 people still watching. Lock you guys in. are you guys are the people that are going to level up your business. Eight, six, five, one, eight, six. Don't do that. Please leave your message for <laughs> seven, eight, six, five, seven. My bad. Uh, I called twice. It's going straight to voicemail. Um, 
All right, so let's get another. Oh, 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 he, somebody just texted me. Oh, no, that's not him. Uh, wife is, when are you going to be home for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're closing. Uh, I'm closing dinner. Um, let's see. Please leave your message for 7858 one. Um, I do see some additional phone numbers. Should I try those? No, nah, no, nah, this is this is the right phone number. He's just not picking up. The those seven, are gonna skip those number, numbers. Right? Yeah, those are here, the here. one that seller entered is gonna be the most Please accurate. Your message for seven, eight, six. <sighs> yeah, I, I have a lead that just called in um, from one of my call my cold callers brought it in, so it's not a PPC lead. But they just they just submitted like eight minutes ago. This is a uh, this 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 seems kind of familiar to me, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the so we have this one in Eagle Point, Oregon. They're downsizing. They're open to discussing creative financing. It's owner occupied. They own the property. The kitchen cabinets need some repairs. Let's rock with this one. Send it. I got I got Plan B. Oh, okay. Don't don't worry about that one. Don't worry about that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Not that one, not that one. I, I prematurely gave you that one. That... Yeah, so go and drop the right one in there, Liam. I, I put I prematurely, I call that. There we go. Thomas, is that the one? Yeah, that's the right one. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, rock with Thomas. It's going to be the one, watch. Come on, come on. Come on. Well. Hi, Thomas. Good evening. This is Scott. How are you, sir? Good, man. How are you? Good. You were on our website recently about this property in Eagle Point. Yeah. Okay. This is a beautiful property, man. Wow. I'm taking a look at it. You just bought it a couple years ago? Yeah, I was back uh, three years ago in May. 10 acres? Is there a house on it? Oh, yeah, there is a house, too. Are you living there? There in the winter, I mean in the sun, in the spring and summer, and fall, and have another place in the uh, in the uh, winter. Scott. Okay. Nice. What has you looking at selling? I'm just I'm flipping through the pictures here. This is a beautiful place. My wife would go crazy for this place. <laughs> see what's available. You know, I think we want to, I want to downsize a little bit. Yeah, I'd see it's a uh, 2,500 square feet. So you want you are you going to try to find like another vacation place in, in the same area or, or what are you looking for? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what we'll see what what you guys come up with, and I can start to plot and plan. You know. Okay. But but just one thing, Scott. There are two. There you know. There's a five. There's there are two separate tax lots. Uh, five acres and five acres. So. Got it. That's an FYI. That's an FYI. So. Understood. And are you there right now, or is it vacant? No, no, I just came back from there. It's not, it, there's no one there, but yeah. Gotcha. Two weeks ago. Who, who takes care of the property while you're, while you're away? I got a neighbor who takes care of it. Gotcha. Okay. I'm there most of the summer. It's, <laughs> there's snow on the ground now, man. Right. You know, I'm getting conflicting information. Zillow says that it's 2,500 square feet, but the tax record is saying it's 5,500 square feet. The pictures makes it makes me believe it's it's bigger. It's like 5,500, right? Yeah, there's, you know, the whole bottom floor where the garage is, it's, it's, it's built up off the, off the ground because you're so close. You know, I've got 800 feet of river frontage there. Right. So there's 2,500 feet feet of living space and downstairs is another 2500 plus so um it's not finished uh so that's the way it's listed do you do uh, any fishing on the river yeah I, I learned to fly fish that's why i bought it that's i, I had a feeling i mean that is that it's a freaking yeah, you know that that rogue river is the, is the longest wild river in the country uh in turn it's a salmon river too so you can um, you can catch salmon. Oh yeah. Do you have you caught any? I mean, is oh yeah. 
Is, is that is that dinner time or catch and release or what? Uh, you know, whatever you can eat, I can eat them. Yeah, sure. They're not going to come, uh, uh, you know, lay down the law for you know taking the fish. I know they they do that some places. No, it's a wild river. I mean, there's you can catch wild salmon. There's a limit, but uh, right. Yeah. Well, this is a magnificent property. Uh, you know, I, I am interested. I mean, it certainly does not fit the bill for the typical property we're looking for, as I'm sure you can imagine. I'm looking for most of the time, like a fix and flip opportunity that we can get in there for, you know, pennies on the dollar and fix it up and sell it and make a, make a nice chunk of change and then kind of rinse and repeat that process. But uh, I have a feeling this would be a really good uh, short-term rental. Have you ever considered doing something like that, or or do you do you agree yeah, with me there? I, I, I have. Uh, that, that if I don't do anything with it, that that probably would come up as a, an Airbnb. So yeah, I'm, I did. I'm actually on Airbnb right now. I'm looking to see. Yeah, you actually have one. You have it. Oh wow, there is a lot of Airbnbs nearby. Do you know if? Um, do you know if uh, Eagle Point has any restrictions or is this, uh, I'm assuming there's no HOA or community that this is a part no. of that would handcuff no. you to. No, 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 no. One of the things that I am noticing um, is that it was on the market for, oh my goodness, almost two years uh, before you bought it. It was on the market from August, 2018 to May of 2020. Um, so it was it was being marketed for a long time. So uh, oh, do I see that you just put it up on the market too? It's listed right now. Is that what I see? No, I don't, no, I don't have it listed. No. You I, did. I, I threw it up here as owner to see what we got. Oh, okay. Owner. You put it up yeah, for sale by owner. Yeah, I see that it was. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't have it listed with anybody, Scott. Yeah, I'm safe there. You uh, you put it up for sale by owner for 1.5. Those what I'm seeing, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you? That's, oh, for the, that's for the five acres, and I got another the other five acres I've listed. I think for eight hundred k. And you bought the the entire thing, both parcels for the one point one. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. So you're trying to cash out <laughs> one point five well, and eight hundred two point three. Why? My neighbor, my neighbor down the river, three weeks ago, uh, has. Uh, eight acres, 300 feet of water frontage. I've got 800, and he just cashed out for 2.2 million. How long was it on the market? I'm I'm looking for that one. Is that directly next door to you? No, nah, it's down the river, about a quarter. Oh yeah. Long. It was. It was probably, I don't know, four or five months. It wasn't. I thought it'd be longer. They started off at 2.8 and they sold it for 2.2. Oh, okay. So, Let's see, trying to see if I can find it. I see another active listing for 2.8 down by the freeway on Dry Crest. That one is a 4,000 square foot on a ton of acreage, it looks like. Um, yeah, 123 acres. Wow, okay, so that's not really comparable. Uh, yeah. And then, then upriver this summer, uh, you know, they were selling dirt on the river for an acre for... I think they listed it and sold it for about 295k for one acre on the river. Right. So, you know, let's see what's out there. That's why I threw it out there. You know, it's a lot of people that want to come out of Seattle and Portland and San Francisco and LA. Right. Yeah, that would probably be your best bet. I think your buyer is going to be somebody that sees the potential on the short-term rental, or they. Uh, you know, or just they want to live there. What makes you want to sell? If you don't mind me asking, like, what's your motivation? You just bought it, you know, had it for a couple of years. What makes you want to sell already? I just want to down, downsize. Think about moving to the ocean. So. Got it. Uh, do you, uh, you got a family that, you know, you, you vacation with or any, you got a family that's kind of pressuring you to sell or is it just you? No, no, just me. I've got a girlfriend. Yeah, that's it. Does she not like it out there? She <laughs> loves it. We both love it. <laughs> Why are you picking it, man? I got it for sale. Are you not interested or you are, Scott? I, I, I am. I'm just trying to see, you know, your motivation, you what's know. Your mo what's your motivation? I, to I make money. To, to make money. Yeah. I mean, if, I, if my neighbor can cash out for 
move on. Okay. You know? Question for you then, Thomas. Uh, this mortgage that I see on title, um, is that a short term or is that fixed for a long period of time? It's a private mortgage. And uh, so um, it's short term. Okay. So is, is uh, you, you would have to refinance out of it at some point in time because is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Is there at least a couple years on it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. the reason why I ask is because I would be, I have three years on it, you so. have th three additional years and I see a low interest rate, 3.3%, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Is your, is your monthly payment, um, uh, do you, do you mind sharing that just because I have an idea as to bucks. how much 38, I'm sure it could rent for quite a bit more than that on Airbnb, right? What um what is the balance on that on that mortgage? Uh, seven seven forty five. Okay, seven forty five. So um, just by my calculation, if you're trying to sell for two point three minus seven forty five, you uh, minus seven forty five. So ideally, you're trying to put a million and a half in the pocket to move to the beach, right? My question is, if I were able to keep this thing as a short-term rental and, and make more money than 3,800 bucks a month, would you be open to the idea of base, uh, maybe being the bank on your equity, you know, that 1.5, so that we could put a, a second position deed of trust on title. I can give you a down payment of some, of some sort, enough to get you to the beach. I, I, I need some money if I'm gonna leave there to get out of there, Scott. So what what is that? Would I be willing to hold paper? Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. But um, what is no, the absolute I, minimum that you need? A uh, million dollars. Million dollars. So you only want to hold five hundred thousand. Right. And keep the other five acres. And keep the other five acres. Okay. So so now we're talking about a a, a lower price point though, because that million and a half was two point three. That was taking both parcels into consideration, right? So is this is the 745 loan only on one of the parcels or is it tied to both? It's on the whole thing. Okay. So if I'm going to take over this existing loan and we expect the deed to be transferred to me, then I, I have to we have to look at both parcels. So what? Just for sake of for sake of running numbers here, right? What is the minimum that I could talk you into? purchase price wise for both so that we can now work backwards and figure out how much you're willing to hold paper on. I don't know. You know, let me think on that. Um, I still want to be somewhere in that two between 2 million and two, two somewhere. Okay. Yeah, two, one. Well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take the lowest number I heard. I'd be a fool not to. So if you, if we go with 2 million, right. And, and by the way, you put up the, Oh, that's right. You, the 1.5 is just for one of the parcels. So if you right. if you take the two million minus the seven forty five, we're looking at one point two five five. Right. Are you uh, are you still saying a million is the the absolute most you or minimum you need down, or can you work with me there? Well, you know you you know real estate. Go to the beach, <laughs> you know, or go anywhere today. And you, you, it's uh, it's uh, it's not. <laughs> You know better than I, Scott. It's not cheap to go to move anywhere. You right. Go to the beach. Go to the beach, and I'm going to need a million dollars. I want to put a million dollars down. Okay. So, Got it. Do you do you have your eye on a property? Listen, I, you know, let me sleep on it. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, there's we can talk about a lot of things. Uh, you tell me what you're thinking. Throw some numbers together, uh, and you, if you're comfortable with it. We keep we keep chunking away at it, and if not, we'll shake hands and move on. Here's what I'm comfortable with: the absolute minimum down as possible. You holding the most amount as possible, uh, you know, in the second position, uh, you know, deed of trust, and then giving me a payment that allows me to cash flow. If I can make seventy five hundred bucks a month in net cash flow from Airbnb, and I'm just pulling that number out of thin air, but if I can, yeah, I if, if I can make seventy five hundred bucks a month net cash flow. Minus your thirty-eight hundred, that leaves a remaining thirty-seven hundred that we can play with if I want to break even. So let's say I want to. And you want both properties. 
Well, I have to take both properties because your more your mortgage is your mortgage is okay. So yes, I want both properties. So okay, cool. going back to my example, and again, I could be way off with the 7,500, but let's just say it's 7,500 on Airbnb minus your 3,800 that leaves 3,700. And I, I know you don't expect me to do this deal for making nothing. So let's say if I want to mint, if I want to earn a minimum of a thousand dollars a month, then I have, you know, $2,700 a month to play with. So if I pull up a mortgage calculator and you're saying, you know, uh, you know, on that, on that million, 1.25 of equity, right? 2 million minus the 750. Um, if you would, you know, say, Hey, Scott, I would take 250 down and I'll hold note on a million, just playing with numbers again. A I hold the paper for. That's the beauty of this deal is that it's up to you and up to me. There's no third party underwriter that says no, you know, as long as you're happy and I'm happy, it's a deal, right? So that, you know, we could talk about the terms, as we get closer to putting pen to paper, but I would like you to hold as long as possible. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't expect you to do 30 years, but you know, give me as long as possible. Uh, hey, do me a favor then, you know, email me what you've got on your mind or text me or however you do it. When I'm looking at the numbers, we'll start at 2 million and let's go from there. How's that? Are you okay with holding a million back? I don't know yet, you know. Possibly? Maybe. Okay. That That's good enough for me. So you want me to you want me to run up some numbers and send them over? I need your email address. Sure. TJG45 at AO. Yeah. Will you do me a favor? I, mean, I, I, I can talk, but I can't. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be traveling, and and tomorrow's I'm leaving early. Okay. So Monday's a better day. I'm available all day Monday. I'll put you in my calendar for Monday. But can you do me a favor and save my name and number so that we can, you know, you know, uh, Am pick. I looking at is it three one zero? Yes. Eight five. Whoa, that was strong. That was strong. You got. I mean, hey, I'm gonna tell you something. This Scott is good at. He's good at maximizing on the lead. Yes, he's that might be the most yeah, difficult possible lead you could really get. I mean, that's yeah. The guy's really unique properties. Talking about two different lots. Wants to split yeah. them up. This, this wants more money than it's worth. This I'm thinking okay. of. He's one of my acquisition managers. I'm not mad at him. <laughs> at all. <laughs> maximizing opportunity. Yeah. But, Here's the thing, though, Keith, and I want to get this this from your experts. Here's the deal. A lot of those were creative offers. So that means a lot of times you're going to need private money, right? So from, from, from an acquisition standpoint, how are you getting access to this private money to make these deals happen? Just for the people. I mean, there's multiple different ways, though. You know, hey, hey, Hold up. We got to do our scoring. Let's get our scoring in. So yeah. say, Go ahead, Byron. Talk to the people. Judges, let's get our scoring in. You got Jenny's on our head. Oh, she's <laughs> let me check. Got it. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So here's the deal. I want I want to ask you that same question. You in the audience right now. Listen, where are you getting your private money from? How are you putting that deal together? Obviously, this was a masterful deal. Okay. What are you doing to put that deal together? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know as the judges do their scoring. Um, what are you doing to make that happen? Because that was an amazing um, um, deal engineering strategy right there, um, honestly. So it was beautiful. So I guess we got we got our scores coming up, right? And we're going to Liam first. Uh, so Liam is done. So let's go ahead and get these scores. Liam, what are you thinking? This was... I mean, I feel like I just walked up a journey to Mordor watching these two guys go to battle on this. That was just, that was killer. So to break down my scores, what I had for Seamus on this one is I think that his first call was better. I think the one that he had uh, before in this finals round was a better call. And I know it was like we spent about an hour trying to get Scotty on the phone. So I'm a little fuzzy on exactly what all the details were here. But for rapport on that one, I out of five, I gave I gave a two for that. And the reason was it was a similar vein 
of checklisting, just going down this list of questions and not really conversational. It was, it was a lot more of him talking at the seller rather than uh, having it back and forth. Um, so I gave him a two on that. Now for negotiations, I gave him a three because he pushed pretty hard into that. He, he went for the price um, and got that guy who was another one of these red sellers to start giving up some good information. And I thought that was pretty good. For the creative option, um, I gave him a two because he, he came in and touched on it, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a super, super co comprehensive, you know, explanatory type of thing or the guy understood it. And so I gave him a two out of five on that one. For handling objections, for that, I also gave a two. Um, and I know, I know when I was writing that, I had, I had two specific ones that, uh, that I had in my mind. And I, they're just slipping my mind right now. But there are two specific ones that um, were missed. And uh, that's, that's why I gave that. In fact, I remember I moved that one down from a three to a two. And then for identifying pain, on that one, I gave a one out of five. Just because I did not... Um, I didn't really understand why that guy was selling. And it was, it was a lot of, um, a lot more of talking at the seller than getting information from the seller and kind of, you know, putting your, putting your boot on their throat on why they want to sell. So that's what I got. I got 10 points for Seamus. And now for Scotty on rapport, I gave four points out of five. Um, talking about the fishing, talking about the house, you know, the, the, the only thing I think he could have done better was, dive a bit more into credibility. You know, I, I see there, there is there being two types of rapport. There's relatable rapport and credible rapport. And relatable rapport to me is the cheaper kind. You want to be more credible. And so sitting there talking a whole bunch about relatable rapport doesn't always get it done. Um, I would like to see some more storytelling. You know, it's talking about similar situations or similar bizarre situations or talking about, you know, this weird, unique deal that you might have done that, that is like, hey, I've done something like this before in this weird type of property. I'm not new to this. This isn't a first time Absolutely. thing. That's what I would like to see. For negotiations, um, I gave that a five out of five because... I mean, we all saw that the back and forth on that. Everything there was just, you know, what's the minimum we could do? I mean, he that's the exact example of saying saying words that are tough to say and saying it the right way was just fantastic. You know, he's saying, what's the minimum I can you know, you you'll let me give you. And he said it in a way that the guy was not turned off by it at all. So I thought that was fantastic um, for the creative option. I mean, that was the only way to go on this. And so he, he really put it down hard there and was going back and forth talking numbers. It doesn't get much better than that. That's a five um, handling objections. Uh, I gave him a three, you know, he's pushing back on price. That was the majority of the objections, price objections. Um, but, you know, I don't think he were and then actually segueing into the next one, which is identifying pain. I gave that a one out of five just because it was only just brought up in passing and then just kind of shied away from it. It felt just kind of like an afterthought of like, oh, shoot, I want to get some points on that. And then, yeah, that's where I thought he could have got more points in handling objections as well. So verbal agreement, zero, signed contract, zero, not always oh, zero. So Scotty, wow. I got 18 on that one. It is what it is. It is what it is. Man, let's go ahead and get my guy, Elijah, up here so we can get those points. Man, it's getting tight. It's getting tight. Man, we watch a lot of these guys do some amazing things. Yeah. Um, One and thing to note, they said that they're saying in the background that on the screen, the score they were showing was not the correct score. I'm not quite sure in what they were showing, but yes. that, that wasn't the right I, ones. I saw that. I was, I was kind of looking at your numbers and looking at the screen like, wait a minute. <laughs> we're a little off, but I was just going to wait for the production team to get it together. And uh, it's all good. So if you if you don't mind real quick, Liam, can you tell us your numbers for both contestants real quick? For Seamus, I had 10. For Scotty, I had 18. Wow. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. So you heard it. Seamus, 10. Scotty, 18. Right. Elijah, what are your thoughts? Man. What did say? Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, I, I thought it was quality call, quality final yeah. round. I'm glad we did it. It was a close call the last one. So I think this one kind of helped, uh, you know, kind of distinguish a little bit more. Um, I, and just getting into it, I thought Seamus did, I mean, like I said, he had, I feel like Seamus has a better seller per se, or at least, at least an easier property to come and get values out of. I think, uh, Scotty had a harder selling, harder property to work from. Um, so, but yeah, we could definitely, uh, let me go ahead and get into my point scoring for them. So um, on the point side for, uh, like I said, I end up on, on, on Seamus side, I, I scored hit. Yeah, this is correct. I scored Seamus 12. 
um, like I said, the main the main reason uh, just so I'm gonna speed it up for us. The main reasons um, for that, like I said, there's more of a chance he could have got more creative with the seller when it came down. I think he could have pressed uh, the pain more, identify the pain. If you don't get your number, you wait for 12 years. Why are you think of selling it anyways? Well, he started tackling the pain for have you rehabbed the property before? And then he he left off he left off on that walking people poking the pain painting the picture you gonna ask about what are you gonna do once you get all this cash what's the plan I feel yeah. like he left a couple good pieces that the seller was least open to hearing them for a while I felt um, he had a good call left a little bit on the table um, so that's why I gave Seamus a twelve um, Scotty uh, I think Scotty like I mean he did it he did a daggone thing and like I said it was a, a lot harder. Um, it's a lot harder for him to um, a seller as far as the property. A little bit more savvier. I think he built really good rapport. I gave him a four on rapport. Um, like I said, he talked about the, his wife, talk about the fishing, catching salmon, doing dinner. That's the vibes I'm on too. I like to really connect with the seller because this is a people relationship relationship business. And people do business with people they like. Make yourself likable and connect with them really strong. Negotiation, game of four. He's getting clear on um, how much he wants. Um, less the land. If you take away the land, I gotta take away the price. Uh, what's the best price I can talk you into? I'm adding that. I'm gonna use that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm closing. All right. That's what I love about closing you know, because you. I take it and you just add your closers gumbo. All right. And it, I want it the lowest down with the most amount I can cash flow. So he's telling it like it is. He's telling it in a very good subtle way where he has to respect it, which I really liked. Uh, so I give him a four on that. The creative options. Uh, you know, the structure of the notes, walk them through the numbers. Men lie, women lie, numbers dope. Scotty had the numbers like Rain Man ready to go over there. So <laughs> I like that. Um, Same. the objections, um, how he wanted both properties. I gave him a two. I feel like he could have um, handled objections a little stronger. I feel like he could um came back and pressed back in certain areas. And then identifying the pain. Um, I, I like how you started off. Are you going to find another beautiful vacation home to replace this one? Uh, who's taking care of the property when you're not there? Uh, oh, that last property I sold is on the market for two years before you bought this. So he he, he did poke the pain. Would like to see a little bit more of, hey, what are you going to do with the money once you get the money? Um, what happens if it, this doesn't work out? If the values go down and, and and you get sick, what would happen to you? You still go to both properties. I like poking the pain. Paint a perfect picture. Poke the pain. I had Scotty edging them out 16 to 12. That's how I got it. Well, you know, it is what it is. Listen, we're looking at the numbers. These are the facts you just heard from the experts and got expert commentary on that. Keith, it's up to you, man. Seems like it's going to be up to you. What's, what's, the, what's the decision on this, man? I think you're muted, Keith. Yeah, man. I, mean, I want them to pull my, you know, let me see. They got my score pulled up. Well, I got it right here. Let's do it. All right. So um, for Seamus, uh, first, uh, what I have for him, as far as the rapport, I did give him a two. I feel like he could have did a little bit better on the rapport. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't think he maximized on it. Uh, the same with the negotiations. I feel like he didn't negotiate as hard as he could. Um, I just feel like he could have pressed a little bit more. Um, as far as the creative option, I don't feel like he was as creative as uh, Scotty was. And uh, that's the reason why I ended up giving him a two on that. Uh, also, the same with uh, handling objections. I just feel like you know, the overall call that he had, I just don't think he pressed enough um, to be able to even score more than that or be able to, you know, um, you know, get a higher score. Uh, the same with identifying the pain. You know what I mean? I just think overall, you know, Seamus had like a mediocre call. You know, I know that he was trying to do everything he can, but I think that he could have maximized on everything more um, for him to be able to get more points, you know, in my opinion. So, so yeah, now as far as Scotty. I feel like Scotty Rapport was on point. He was very relatable with the seller um, in multiple different ways. You know, he talked about Salmon. You know, they talked about a few other things. He uh, asked him, you know, the, he got the guy to tell him that he was moving. He wanted to move towards the beach. So they got a chance to really, you know, get to know each other a little bit. Negotiations was crazy. I mean, we all seen that, though. You know, he was, you know, he went from, you know, 2.2 .2 down to, to 2 million. But that wasn't even, even the best of the negotiations. I think it was more of the the creative part, you know, and that's the reason why uh, when negotiations, I gave, him a, I gave him a four. The same with creative option. I mean, I feel like that he maximized on every single thing he could have did on that call for him to try to get a deal done, you know, in my opinion. 
Uh, also handling objections, I feel like him and the guy was having a boxing match. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the, the guy was, you know, he, he went from the 2.2 all the way to the Airbnb, all the way to the calculator, trying to figure it out, all the way to the down payment. Uh, you know, it was just it was just nonstop negotiations back and forth, nonstop objections. And I feel like he just did a good job of that, you know, overall. And uh, what we got next? Identifying the pain. Um, give me one second. Let me pull it back up. Identifying the pain. I gave him a three on that. You know what I mean? I don't think that uh, that Scotty really pulled too much pain out of him. But at the same time, I don't think the seller had a lot of pain in him. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. So I didn't want to just give him a four or a five. Uh, he, he did the best that he could with that. You know what I mean? I don't think it was a lot of pain to pull out. So I couldn't give him a four or five on that one. Uh, verbal agreement. Um, I gave him a two on that. You know what I mean? I feel like that they didn't really come to a conclusion. I feel like it's one of those calls that he may have to call him, maybe a, a get another call in with him. And uh, maybe they come down to something. But I gave him a two because I don't feel like they came down to a conclusion. So, uh, yeah, that was my numbers on that. So I had uh, Scotty edging out Seamus. And uh, the main reason was I feel like Scotty was more maximizing on the call that he had. I wasn't the biggest fan of the numbers, but I feel like he did everything that he absolutely could. So that was my opinion. Listen, y'all just heard it. Y'all just heard it. So, I mean, looks like we got a winner. It looks like we have a um, official winner okay so um here's the deal listen scotty at 54 points beating out sheamus by 32 scott how do you feel about these these points man i'm uh i'm pumped thank you guys um uh, i'm tired man i've been tired. looking at the freaking screen for five hours now so um <laughs> I'm ready to get get some dinner and go home to my family. But for real though, I I thought I did everything I could. That was a very tough lead. Uh, I think I agree with you, Diddy. He was asking way too much. Um, I definitely could have pressed him a little uh, more on what you know what he was going to do if he didn't get you know his number. Um, that's a good point. But ultimately, I, I did the best I could with that lead. You know. Uh, but a really cool property nonetheless. So I, I probably will still give him a call on Monday and see if we can figure something out because that, that is a really dope property. But otherwise, guys, thank you so much for having me. I really, really had a lot of fun. All the contestants absolutely killed it. Uh, I was definitely nervous coming in. Thank you to my boy, uh, Liam, for believing in me and getting me on to the first uh, closer show and RJ, of course, uh, where I faced him and should have won, but I know I don't know. We'll, we we'll talk about that one later. Uh, but I just appreciate everybody putting me on this uh, this stage and giving me the opportunity to showcase uh, my uh, you know my ability on the phones. I always tell people that uh, hit me up you know about you know wanting to get into real estate that I'm not very good at really anything in my life other than talking to people on the phone. Uh, that's what I feel like I was born to do talk to people on the phone. I've done it my entire career. I'm thankful that I found real estate with a high ticket item where I could uh, kind of pivot that ability, talking to motivated sellers and uh, making some good money, which I definitely have. Uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing everybody in July for the uh, Closers Olympic. Wow, man. Well, congratulations, man, for the round one qualifier winner. Listen. <laughs> He's getting ready to move forward, you guys, and he's going to be at the Open Run 2023 Closers Olympics coming up very, very soon. Very, very soon. Listen, shout out to my guy Seamus for fighting a good fight. How do you feel about these numbers? What's your thoughts? You're muted. We got it. We can't, we can't hear you, Seamus. I want to hear all that good sauce, man. What's your thoughts? I, said, on it, man? I appreciate it, Scotty. Congratulations. He did his thing. You know, 15 minutes is not enough time for you to pull out everything. So, you know, I was just trying, once again, I was just trying to go for the kill with the numbers and everything. I usually take longer to, and usually do a second call to then come back and make the offer, but I kind of sped everything up. But I, I thank everybody for letting me participate in it. You know, Closer Olympics for the community is definitely something that we need it. And uh, and I'm just 
I'm, I'm just happy to be here, but I will be back next year. Oh, spicy. <laughs> real quick. Was it anything you feel like, um, Seamus, real quick before we uh, uh, get to the bundle? Was it anything you felt like you could have done a little better? Yeah, a couple of things. A couple of things. I could have definitely worked on a report a little more with him. I tried to throw in there. You didn't hear the end of the phone call, but we started talking about the Lakers. I asked him, was he a Laker fan? He's like, no, I'm a Sacramento Kings fan. Uh, on the report, the creative, the novation was the thing. That's what I pitched. It was mm -hmm. the, that's the concierge service. That's basically just like a novation. He kind of sound interested. I will give him a call back. The yeah. numbers were everywhere on the property. They was 300 to 360, you know, and when I seen a number of the maximum, I just went for that. I just, I just shot for that, you know. Love uh, it. But yeah, it was, uh, man, thank I, you. I had a great time, man. I could have, I mean, you could always do a couple of things better, you know, we, we get better day in and day Absolutely. out. Man, it was a pleasure to watch you guys, man, do that. That was amazing. I just want to remind everybody, listen, you need to be clicking on Closers Olympics right now .com. Go to closersolympics.com right now is flashing on the screen. Here's what we got for you. This is important. I want everybody to, to understand this. Listen, you want to pick up all of these, these, pro, these prior events. Listen, you need to have access to these things. You're going to get that with the bundle, okay? So if you haven't already, this thing is only $297. You get the course, okay? I'm just, I'm just breaking this stuff down for you. You get the course. You get the all of the previous events, okay? Right. So you want to do that because even if you're new, you're trying to sell houses, you're trying to sell cars, sales are sales. And these guys have laid it completely all out on the line. They've given you the game. So make sure you pull up the website and grab the dang home bundle, man. Grab the bundle. Also, all of my people who want the early bird tickets, you can also grab the early bird tickets as well. They're only 97 bucks. Go ahead and do that. Um, because we want to see you in the building. We want to see you in the building whenever we kick this thing off, right? The next time you're going to see us is going to be March the 30th, okay? So listen, all of the people looking to join in, make sure you text closers to that special number. If we could put that number up, that'd be great. Um, if we could put that number up if you want to join in. Yes, thank you. And also, shout out to the production team. Shout out to the production team. <laughs> Listen, they have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, making this happen for us, um, you know, giving us all of this information. Listen, it is a lot that goes on behind the scenes to this thing to make it happen. OK, this is not an easy thing to put on. I just want everybody to know. So definitely, definitely a uh, big shout out to the production team and all of the people who make this happen consistently. So shout out to y'all. <laughs> shout out to y'all for that. But here's the deal. Make sure you pick up your bundle. Make sure you get your early bird tickets, okay? And we're going to see you on the next go-round. Liam, Keith, Let's go, baby. Elijah. Hey, listen. Woo. If this, listen, if this wasn't a reason to purchase your 2023 Closers Olympics ticket, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, just off of what Scotty did alone, what you saw Seamus do, what you saw Colleen, what you saw James do, I mean, you you got a little sample of what's it like to be and learn from the some of the top closers in the country, and that's let alone other million dollar producers over there. So make sure you guys go and get your bundle, like get your ticket, get the mini course. You got me, Alex, uh, Keith, give you exact game how we close literally millions of dollars, and most importantly, you get to watch fifty plus hours of the top closers closing game. Just what you saw today, you get to watch. 50 hours worth. So make sure you go and get that. Appreciate everybody right. locking in. And Absolutely. you know what? I think we should also everybody put a round of applause together for Mr. Byron, the investor, man. Yeah, this guy come on, y'all. On such late notice. This guy, we hit him up like yesterday. Like, bro, can you like do this five hour thing? And he's like, what the? Okay, dude, I'm in. Like, no questions asked. Dude showed up on our, on our, on our trial run call yesterday. He didn't know what was happening. And here he is today. And he crushed it. I, I mean, seriously. Y'all. Thank you. Great job, man. He did a great job, boss. He, he missed his partner in crime, Pat. Man, it was fun, though, man. I love, love, love doing this thing, man. When Keith hit me up and asked me to be a part of it, man, you already know it was no doubt because I love learning this stuff. This is dope. I love watching it. So, man, shout out to y'all for putting this on and consistently, 
you know, giving the closers, man, with these amazing talents, a real, real stage to show that talent, man. Um, you know, it's not normal to be able to gain access to calls like what Scotty was just showing off, man, and Colleen and and my guy Seamus, man. It's just it's absolutely amazing. Um, so shout out to y'all, man, for putting this on consistently and making it happen, man. Y'all are the goats for real. Moving with absolute no stingy energy with the closers Olympics, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Well, once again, thank you, Byron. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, the production team. Thank you, David. You know, for making the company. Oh, he had smart company. Let's give Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. David, man. David. We we did uh, we didn't get to shout David out enough, man. Everybody, I you know, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him this flowers. man needs his props. This guy, David, is not only the best number runner in the game, but he moves more deals than anybody else in the nation. Uh. And beyond that, he does probably more transaction coordination. And that's why you guys, if you ever feel like you're handling too many deals or you just don't want to do it the paperwork, you don't want to talk with the title companies anymore, you don't want to do all that bullshit that everybody hates doing, you just want to be focusing on closing, go to EZ, that's just E-Z, R-E-I, closings.com. Get signed up with his team because they're crushing it, man. Wow. I in with my guy. Yeah, that sounds like a good proposition. <laughs> yes, yeah, indeed. Shout out to Lee, to Lee, too, man. Shout out to yeah. y'all, man. Yeah, you, Gene. Big, Big shout out to you, Gene. So appreciate that. So, and, and most importantly, shout out to you guys tuning in, locking in. You guys, it's out for hours. Appreciate everybody locking in. Like I said, this is what we do it for. We, we're very serious about putting on the community. And think about this. The world don't even know this is here yet. Y'all are already up on game. So close more deals. Let's crush it. Each one teach one. Each one reach one. Got to wait today. Be a blessing to someone, y'all. See you guys March 30th, y'all. Let's go. Salute. Let's go.